Hey guys, welcome back to the Proko Artists Help Ukraine stream. We are doing day two, so everybody's already got their painting started. Um, and we're going to do another six hour session, finish it off. We're working from a live model. I'm show a live model. She's dressed up as a U Ukrainian girl. Um, and you guys could go to proko.com slash Ukraine and see the schedule for the rest of the week. Uh, there's a lot of people streaming this week really really good stuff um, and lots of rewards people a lot of artists donated paintings and mentorship sessions and digital products and if you guys purchase that all the money goes to uh, humanitarian efforts in Ukraine um, so we got Natalia on the wheel Hi. that's her star we got Natalia Fabia Leon Okun, Hi. painting big, trying to prove something. Uh, this is my start over here. And of course, Joseph Todorovic. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, two have sold. Yeah, you, you guys, if you want these originals, you can go to, again, progo.com slash Ukraine. Everything's on there. And all the money goes to Ukraine. What's that? Has yours been sold yet? No, it has not. Ooh. What the heck, guys? I got to step it up. <laughs> All right, and the host for today and yesterday was Ethan Becker. Yay. Yay. Whoa. Whoa. All right. What's up? And we're Go back, on. right? Yeah, and you guys can ask questions in the chat either on YouTube or on the lesson page on Proker.com. And we have the stream go or the chat going, so. Yeah, so what are we going to be doing today, Stan? Like, what's we're same blocking in. We do every day. Same thing. We're going to be, it was kind of block. It's <laughs> yeah. kind of be blocking in yesterday, and then today we're going to be kind of tightening finishing it up, it finishing yeah, it up. I'm going to yeah. try to get all the details in. Okay, cool. I'm pretty sure that's it. All right. Yeah. And for the most part, for the stream, very free flow, kind of asking questions. Y'all can ask questions, and we'll be able to read and uh, ask those questions through me. And it's just kind of a chill, relaxed state. So... We're gonna just kind of f let everybody kind of get into the groove here, and uh, let's see if we can start asking some questions and maybe bother some people right off the bat. All right, let's see. Let's see what we got going. Good morning, good sir. Hey, good morning. So, uh, taking a break is a big part of painting, right? Like sleeping on it. Yeah. Do you? Uh, did you sleep? And kind of like think about this process in your in your dreams. Have you ever done that before? Painting in your dreams? Uh, probably at some point, but not last night. I was just watching TV and not thinking about it at all. <laughs> that's a that's a good strategy too. Just yeah, a little refresher. Completely away from it. Yeah. Yeah. Get completely away from it. Yeah. So you have painted in your dreams before? I I don't 
don't know. Oh. I'm not. I can't say that I have or haven't. Okay. And my memory is terrible. Okay. I'm, there might be something going on there. You you may have, but you just don't remember. I may have. Okay. I'm gonna ask Stan if he's painted in his dreams. Stan, have you ever painted in your dreams before? <laughs> my memory is horrible. Really? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't remember most of my dreams. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Are they like like real life dreams or just in like sleeping dreams? You have real life dreams. I right? have goals and ambitions. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember those. Okay, you remember yeah, those. I remember those. That's no, good. The the um the, the nighttime dreams I don't remember yeah. much. Okay, but I've we, I've painted in my dreams before. I paint yeah. I painted a lot in my dreams. You know, get frustrated doing all the same mistakes and stuff like, like that. Digital painting. Uh, yeah, digital painting and drawing and. Uh, yeah, I just so get. So in your dream, are you looking at a monitor, or your whole view is a is like a screen? I'm looking like at a monitor, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, control Zing and all yeah, that you, stuff. You're on yeah. the keyboard. And... Yeah, wow. it's not fun. All right, all right. Well, good luck today. Thank you. Keep on trucking. Do you uh do you paint maybe in your dreams or like when you're a step away from it? Are you thinking about the painting at all, or are you just completely getting away from it? Is stepping away a big part of the process for you? It, it's very important to step away because uh, the more you see it, um, the less you see the mistakes. The more you, the more your brain kind of get gets used to these shapes, and uh, of course, it's very important to totally turn the painting away and not see it, and then see it with fresh eyes, even if it's only overnight. I think I think first thing uh, Joseph said today. Did you guys have that experience where you look at the painting and see all the mistakes? And and it's very important to do that. Uh, as much as we love painting, it's very important to kind of focus on other things, focus on different paintings, focus on life, turn the painting away, and then see it kind of fresh eye, fresh. Uh, kind of have a fresh look at it, and um, you will see a lot of things that you need to work on. So yeah, I think everyone is trying to do that kind of, um, we all did a lot yesterday in one day and just today is all gonna be about details, nuances, taking it to the next level, taking it as far as we possibly can. So um, what I've seen people do a lot is they'll work on multiple paintings at once, so you can leave that one alone, come back as a refresher, hop on another one back and forth. Do you do that? I think most artists do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, because uh, when you work on large sizes, you have to do that. Plus, one painting helps another. It, for my personal work, I love mixing up commission work where it's tighter, more detail-oriented, more conservative with uh, personal work where I could be a lot more uh, creative, I can take more risks, I can mess around, I can play with it. And that energy goes back to my um, uh, commission work. And then the uh, kind of the clarity and the de detailization of uh, commercial work mm. travels into my personal work. So I think it's a good balance. I think it's a great balance to establish that relationship where you work on something detailed and refined, but at the same time you work at, at something totally jazzy, totally fun, where you just let go of everything and just have, uh, have fun with this. I think the most I've learned, ironically, the most I learned in portrait painting was actually in background painting and background design uh -huh. and vice versa. Like mm -hmm. everything is kind of related, right? So just because you're painting a portrait doesn't mean it, you're not going to still use the same type of composition in a landscape and uh, plein air painting. Is that is that true for you? Do you do plein air painting, uh, outside yeah, painting? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a good point. I mean, just think about literature. If you are writing about a character and all you have in a story is just that character and no interaction with the environment, right. the story is not interesting, right? It, there's nothing, there's not a lot to talk about or it's very challenging to make it exciting. It's when our subject matter interacts with um, environment and 
and is affected by environment in different ways. That's when it becomes interesting. And that's what background does, and that's how color works, is you clash character, colors, relationship, and, and you create this variety, and you create this intricate story. And that's, um, that's how you want to think about color. Yeah. So that's why when you paint just the face on gray or white background, it's, um, you know, it's not real true painting. You need environment. You need to create a story. For the reflecting light, the bounce light and all the other factors. Well, what is painting? Painting is mimicking life, right? Why do we love painting? Uh, because painting is one of those things that mimics life mimics experiencing life mimics looking at life and life is infinitely complex and that's why we love it it it's always surprising it's always different it's always unique so creating complexity environment that's why it's called fine art you know there's a difference between illustration graphic arts and fine art fine art is looking or it's best when it's different every time you, you look at it yeah uh, you know, illustration is not different every day. You know, book illustration, it's the same because it, it illustrates a story, it illustrates a point. Fine art is different. When you look at Mona, when you look at the great art, every time, every age you see it, it's going to be a little bit, you look at it, it's going to be a little bit different, mm -hmm. right? It's almost like it's living with you because it's, it's all about fine nuances. It's all about complexity it's all about um mimicking life in its complexity and and when you create that variety that's when you uh i think achieve something that feels natural to everyone yeah because everyone is expert in painting because everyone is expert in living you know what i mean we painting all have, is a reflection of life you think right right, right. we all have one thing we have is experience living yeah. right so anybody Everyone is an expert in painting, right? Yeah. Or what painting should do. Right. So um, I think if you think along those lines, I, that will improve your painting and make it more artistic. I like it. Thank you so much. We're going to let you get back to it. Sure. Are you, just to ask, like, what's your plan for today? Are you going to tighten everything up? Are you going to leave certain areas loose? Um, yeah, no, I usually the way you want to do is you want to lead the eyes so obviously phase detail number one uh, her right hand detail number two left hand detail number three so i'm going to hit those notes and then i'm going to see how much background needs to either support it or jazz it up so i'm going to kind of add more information and details and see how much i can get away with like living le leaving uh background as it is or or loose or abstract but mm, yeah I, I think that difference between sophistication in details and the focal point and then um uh, maybe abstraction in the background i think that's what makes it interesting to look at so yeah I'll, I'll try to do that i agree eyes first then hands right right okay right awesome all right good luck all right i'm gonna scoot back over here let's see what we got going on this screen uh that's beautiful did you like sneak in last night all right oh okay so we got the chat up today and we also have just the straight up questions Ethan, you should paint a pretty picture. Yeah, I might. <laughs> it might not be pretty, but at some point, I might actually hop on my iPad and show everybody here how it's done, you know, <laughs> digitally. Uh, paint a couple uh, stick figures, perhaps. All right. From what I've noticed, this is from Alexandra. From what I've noticed, they establish first darks, then lights, and then midtones, then color over the top let's ask somebody about that let's, let's go over here and see if I can trip over these cables and strangle myself so d did you hear that comment by any chance oh, no, sorry. okay let me reread this um, so from what I've noticed 
they have established first the darks, then the lights, then the midtones, and then the color over the top. Does that make any sense to you, or is it all? Um, yeah, for the most part, darks. You can do darks, midtones, then lights, but it depends. Sometimes you just want to develop a light, light and dark graphic, mm -hmm. you know, shapes design. Um, I always start with darks. Plus, you usually want to because you want to paint typically thin to thick. So, and darks are right. should be thinner. That, that does that depend on the medium? Like yes, watercolor, watercolor, watercolor. watercolor would kind of usually be uh, backwards, right? The opposite. Mm. So, I'm yeah. not a watercolor painter. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yes, because um, you want your darks to recede. Usually, they're shadow, and they don't want them to be opaque because anything thick or opaque will bounce light back. Yeah, and we saw Leon start uh, yesterday. He started with charcoal, which you know I thought that was like a sin. But uh, <laughs> have you ever done that before? I have. I have. I don't really do it that often but it's yeah it's one way of starting okay um it's a pretty traditional way of charcoal i've seen people start with um, oil sticks they're just like little oil painting sticks this is condensed oil and then you can use medium to kind of um make them runny but i just usually start with paint <laughs> yeah so what i was asking everybody is does taking a break affect you big time do you enjoy like taking breaks to kind of have a refresher on this do you paint in your sleep per you se? should take breaks i'm not good at that sometimes you're in the flow and you're just sitting for so long but a break is so important to like rest your eyes and stay, stand back and get away from the painting so you can because you start if you look at it too long you start n not being able to see it anymore. Yeah. You know, that's why we got to do all our methods with like looking at a mirror, taking a photo, shrinking mm -hmm. it down, looking in a black glass or whatever. Which I have here that I never use, but- um, A black, you have a black glass? Yeah, it's supposed to have I've never, value. Somebody gave it to me, where is it? I've never heard of the I black glass. <laughs> you know, that's, oh, here's something else. Um, I'll find it in a minute. Um, oh, and sometimes I do paint in my dreams. Oh, yeah. And it's really annoying because like it's usually working out a problem and I'm frustrated and I wake up like super frustrated and I'm like what that's such a waste of sleep. <laughs> but do you feel like that it does actually make you better because uh, you're problem solving in your I sleep? Think so yeah, probably I hope so. Yeah. Oh yeah, look, see black glass. Oh wow. I don't know if it's. Like, Is it know. really really dark? Yeah, it's super dark. So you're supposed to be able to see values. Oh okay. <laughs> Is it kind of similar to squinting, basically, or blurring your vision? Do you I mean, blur your I vision? This, yes, I'm always squinting. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you blind, or you, do you just yes, do that I'm on purpose? Blind. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do it on purpose. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to mention, actually, was, you know, in Photoshop, I have my hotkeys set to flip canvas horizontally, and I'm constantly doing that. Oh. Every, just constantly, constantly doing that. Um, and you were talking about Wait, using like reverse a, mirror image, or just flip? I just flip the whole thing. Oh, just, cool. yeah. Um, I wish we could do that. Yeah, so as a traditional painter, obviously looking in a mirror, you can do that. But um, do you just, because I didn't see, you? I, none of, I don't think anyone here has been looking in a mirror this whole time. So you just know what looks good or how do you do that? Stand back, standing back helps too. Yeah. Um, or I was kind of lazy, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, sitting back down today after painting all day yesterday, like Joseph and I were talking about, like you notice all the things that you kind of want to fix after having a little break from with your with your eyes. So. Yeah. All right. Well, if anybody needs help with the mirror, I can uh, hold up a mirror. All right. Thank you. Ha ha have you noticed a bunch of stuff in your painting now that you've come back to it that you want to fix up? Oh, of course. There is so many. <laughs> don't know where to start from. You don't know where to start? Uh, Do you have any ideas for me? Uh, well, Leon told me eyes and then hands. Um, I don't know, how do you feel about that? Is Are those your focal points? Yes, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, the hand, it's the, it's the hardest part. Yeah, the hands are pretty difficult. Do you, uh, do you, have you ever painted in your sleep and gotten frustrated that way? Never. Oh, okay. <laughs> You just, yeah. <laughs> you just knock out and you're you're gone. You're refreshed. Uh, no, I can't say that. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. I, I I guess it's. Yeah. I have uh, usually the dreams. Yeah, something that um, that you struggle with. But praise God, it's not painting for now in my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna let you get back to it, and we'll come back. Good luck. Yeah, we want to see you painting. Oh, is this on? 
Oh, am I gonna? Yeah, I might. I might do a little sketch or something like that. Maybe. I might give that a try. All right. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. <laughs> you, look at that. <laughs> she said, "What is that? <laughs> it's a knife." That's a really big knife. Not bigger than mine, but that's close. Wow, that's nice. Where did you, did y'all go out and buy this knife just now? Oh, you had the knife in your van. I like that. All right. Well, thank you. I like your sweater. That's a, that's a nice sweater. Is that, is that an alpaca or a llama? I think it's a llama. Is it made out of a llama? I hope not. Okay. Well, just the hair, right? That's what. That's oh, what. I, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. It would be just okay. the hair and the yeah, point. No, no skin involved. <laughs> no llama skin. Right. Do okay. You, do, do you think you'd wear a llama skin uh, sweater? Yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Oh, I'll take this microphone yeah. back. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Let me read some of these uh, comments. What do we got? I like the. Uh, Paul says I I like the yellow and. Natalia F's painting, very warm and nice. So good with the model, absolutely. This is nice seeing the chat today. Yeah. <laughs> Did I miss the rest of the shave? Yeah, sadly. Oh, yeah. Can we... Yeah, can we get a shot of the, the freshly shaven? Hey, go ahead. Here, we got, there we go. Now we got, that's nice. Yeah. Maybe I'll paint him. <laughs> Grab some brushes and just do a few dabs here and there, you know. Do you want to paint on me? Or? Oh sure, yeah. Maybe I can make a painting <laughs> on the on the back of your on the back Somebody of your head. Buy that painting. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. What is your advice for the artists who didn't start young? When is too late? Yeah, we kind of answered that yesterday. But do you have an opinion about that? Starting too young versus too late, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're interested in doing it, then it's never too late. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to make, make imagery, you just make imagery. It's never too late. Um, starting young, young is good if you really like it, but maybe some people have, you know, careers or, you know, good jobs for a long time, and then they, you know, just want to do something different. Yeah. <sighs> Got to do it. Yeah. Pick up that paint. Especially if you have a passion for it, right? That's the main main key thing there. Yeah, or if you just or, or not, if you just want to try it, there's nothing wrong with that too. Then it might develop into a passion. Yeah. Or not, I don't know. Absolutely. Is there somewhere we can learn the Russian academic method, person, other than the oh Repin Academy? I don't know these academies. Do you know Leon, these academies? Leon went to the Repin Academy. Oh, okay. Did, did you understand the question? I don't, I don't understand Can the question. question yeah, sure. Is there somewhere we can learn the Russian academic method and a person other than the Repin Academy? Yeah. <laughs> um, I will tell you. Yeah. Uh, so, sorry. Well, um, so there is a summer program where you can go and just go for a summer at uh, Repin Academy. But also you can learn from uh, graduates of Repin Academy and I'm one of them and I'm teaching um, right now at Los Angeles Academy of Figurative Arts, LAFA. And um, it's a full-time program that gives you a bachelor's degree and it focuses heavily on uh, figurative drawing and painting. Uh, it has two uh, fine art and um, illustration majors. So that's uh, so that's uh, maybe probably the best way, the accredited way. If you're interested in uh, online presence. I mean, I, I would strongly recommend Proka. I think uh, it's really, I mean, I'm looking at his videos and I'm very impressed at how thor thorough and detailed they are. So seeing what the Academy goes through, I think it's a, it's a good substitute if you can't travel. Um, 
also a lot of ma master copies. I would I would really recommend a lot, doing a lot of master copies um, because all Repin Academy is based on classical training of French and Italian Academy. A lot of it is on uh, based on composition and structure. Um, it's a kind of general question. So if you, if the person that asked this question could be a little bit more specific, what are you interested in drawing or painting or composition, the whole environment? Um, I would, I can give you a more detailed answer, but of course, Repin Academy is 300, almost, no, it's 270 years old school with five faculties and and hundreds of students and teachers so obviously nothing can replace the experience uh, outside of Repin Academy um, but you can learn bits and pieces from different places yeah I, I do have a question about um, so some students think that in order to maybe impress clients get clients or even keep clients um, within entertainment industry or even fine arts, sometimes it's like they think, oh, I have to get an education at this certain place. Nobody's going to take me seriously otherwise. Do you feel that's true? Because I've seen this. It's very different in America versus, you know, France or wherever you go. There's completely different schools of thought and taking artists seriously, whether or not they have educations. And I thought America was, you know, the way that it was around the world, which is typically the art speaks for itself. But... I mean, how do you feel about that? I think that's a very good point, and it's very interesting how it plays out. Um, ultimately, it all comes down to what an artist can do. You can go to the best school in the world and do nothing. You can uh, miss out on opportunity of going to uh, accredited place but have an incredible successful career uh, absolutely school does help you it gives you so much more confidence in what you're doing what you're saying in meeting uh, a lot of artists and seeing how artists works work because a big part of this is just being around successful artists and looking at their schedule looking at their attitude looking at their way of life because uh, besides just painting besides just pushing paint around on the canvas mm -hmm. a lot of it is well how do you make a living how do you get um, commission work how do you talk to people how do you talk about your work yeah. you know it's it's a whole spectrum of things yeah. so um everybody's story is different and i don't think there's one way but please understand that i've seen successful artists that don't even have a bachelor's degree in art have you seen clients maybe turn people down or not respect no. them because of the lack of education well, maybe maybe there's maybe, maybe there's uh, not maybe more schools you know for example yeah. if you want to teach at a college you have to have a bachelor's and master's oh, probably okay. Okay. so it's just like if you want to teach in a big university like they it. will ask for your degree uh, I have my degree I I don't I only show it when I go to interviews for new work that's the only place that's the only people that are interested it's uh, human resources people yeah. no but no no clients nobody else cares where you came from mm -hmm. it all it's all in your work. If yeah. you create interesting content, you're interesting. If you don't, it doesn't matter where you went, what, what, where you, what you look like, exactly, who you nothing are, whatever. matters. Yeah, yeah, it's all in the work. So please, uh, everybody, please look at different examples. Look at people that have education and what they do. Look at people that don't have any education, and and what they do and they could be very successful and um, of course it's better to try to get a um, classical education but it, it's not a decisive uh, parameter it it's what you do with your skills it's how you organize your life 
it's how well you can communicate with people and make relationships and make friends and uh and put yourself in an environment where things are happening because if you're kind of sitting um where there's not a lot of things happening like in a in a small town and no and it feels like nobody cares about art and it feels like you're the only one who's doing art and and like you are just in this environment where you feel like this is the only thing you want to do but you're the only one like that get out of that environment move, move to a place where there's a community where you meet successful artists that have a lifestyle you want that have a schedule you want just meet those people uh and mimic those people be like them you're almost setting yourself up for failure if you think that you're going to maybe succeed just staying in one place uh or not setting yourself up for failure but it's just so much easier to feel down about it. and these days you know there's all kinds of places that you can go online to hang out with people in the same group as you eventually it's probably best to move somewhere where you can uh, physically you know be in a group in person right right it, it helps it helps i mean if i don't think it I, don't, I think it's very difficult to create that to feel that energy through internet yeah and i understand that everyone has different um skill set but but it really helps to kind of visually see like you know it's inspiring to be in this room and seeing that everyone is successful and professional and and in their own right doing incredible work yeah. and that's that's a great environment to be in and that you know that that's something that's going to fill our um paintings with energy and joy and um hopefully help us make the best out of this artwork yeah. it's important you know th there's a reason why artists always conjugated in groups and 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 all the movements arrived from multiple artists thinking in a similar way oh oh really that's interesting yeah, yeah like they're the like moving parallel or growing with each other at right, the same time right and bouncing ideas off each other and you know that's just how civilization work you know europe for example there's lots of small communities that constantly bounce ideas from each other and they have uh excelled uh much further than geographical places that are tucked away you know in the corner of the world for example yeah. you know there's a lot less exchange of ideas happening yeah uh, i'm gonna let you get back to it in one second but i'm gonna ask you a technical or maybe a technical question here it seems on your ipad it seems like you've taken the picture of the model's hand and you've blurred it is that is are you did you mean to blur that yeah yeah okay. so i can show this i mean this is kind of uh, just simple technique so Again, we, we've talked yesterday about details and we've talked how details move no matter how well the model sits. So I am working on her face while the model is uh, sitting and then on breaks, I try to work on this hand. And when I start, I like to blur the image so that I see just the essence of color notes not details and I'm not overwhelmed with information I could see a more solid simplified generalized block of colors and the more you paint the more you realize that you're really painting color patterns you're not painting hands or faces you're designing and shaping color patterns and this simplified version helps you see those patterns more clearly so that's a little hint for you guys um, to try and and of course i also recommend working with ipads it's just it's such a convenient uh, <laughs> uh i mean i have no uh, connection with uh, apple but but i like i like the <laughs> ipads are just so great <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway <laughs> um yeah i can't you know it's, it's it's just a convenient tool but yeah blur blur the image will help you see uh simplified patterns 
which is great for beginning. And then and then you can unblur it and look at details. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. So that's a really good point of blurring. I do that as well in, in painting and trying to block out the details. Also, something that I tend to do is in Photoshop, or there's a lot of uh, different programs that do, what do you call it, posterizing, where you can group a bunch of different uh, blocks of colors and really, really simplify it out. In Photoshop, there's another thing called um, dust and scratches. There's a bunch of different, you know, names and styles that you do but basically all these different things group all the details or cut out all the details and just group these colors into big masses of uh, colors and values and stuff like that all right let's uh let's ask let's ask another question for poco should i ask him okay oh yeah all right so right here so right here you got a little paint can is this this is for yeah, this is my games all it's this mineral spray yeah. This is like a uh, like a spittoon situation. So, I mean, when I'm working on a large painting, yeah. like my brushes get very dirty because I fill them with a lot of paint. Um, yeah, and that's so, what brushes do, right? You put paint on the brushes. Yeah, that's what we do. Okay. And where's which camera am I in? Uh, so right now we're on the paint can. Oh. So oh, I, I, let me spit. Oh, this one. <laughs> well, I'm gonna, you go ahead and answer this question, then I'm gonna get more specific. But okay. let's let's go ahead and see how you do here. If I, if I'm painting small, I just use this thing and I put some gams on here, and that's good. But if I'm cleaning really dirty brushes and a lot of them, yeah, it makes this thing is just so small. It makes the gamsol super dirty very quickly. So I have this filled with gamsol. It's a lot more volume. What are you volume. saying, gamsol? Gamsol. What's a oh Gamsol? That's the brand. Oh, Gamsol's a brand. Yeah, of mineral spirits. Oh, a mineral spirit. Okay. Like like it's like terp, but not as it bad. It, it breaks down stuff. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah, you could either thin out the paint or you can clean your brush with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so my specific question uh, from from one of our nice viewers here is how do you dispose of your water? Like, can you just throw it in the sink because it's super harmful, or is it harmful? Also, uh, That's a good question. Oh. do y'all use paper pellets is that paper. well we're painting in oil so we're not using any water oh. but yeah the, so gamsol yeah. or the, the, w natalia what's the one that you mentioned um oh, yes oil? yeah that's green one. yeah that, that's a new one that i've been hearing she about. uses what greenford oil green for oil, green for oil. Yeah, yeah it's I by senelia yeah so I've been hearing, I haven't tried that yet, but I've been hearing that it's just less toxic. And, okay. and so with this, like I've heard that the best way is to let it just evaporate. You don't pour it down the drain into the sewage system. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Let um, it evaporate. But not okay. in your room where like, you know, it's, you're just breathing it. So if you have like a balcony or pour it on some cement where yeah. it could just evaporate. Uh, but okay. like, I don't know if there's like. Balcony. I'll use my balcony. Yeah, your balcony or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Put it on the front porch. Into a large jar and then it into yes. Can you so that? okay. So yeah. So when you first when you finish your painting session, you're gonna have a pretty dirty mixture, and the paint and the spirit is they're all mixed together. But if you just pour it in a separate container mm. and let it sit for a few days, and you can close it so that it doesn't go into your room. Mm the pigment will just the paint will go down and stay at the bottom and then you can uh pour the clean gamsol that is at the top into your container that you can reuse again oh. and then you can just like scoop out that chunky stuff and throw it in the trash and the chunky stuff is bad well that's the paint that's your oil paint oh so you just reuse it is this all reused no, I paint i reuse the paint yeah. <laughs> i reuse the gamsol that Oh, okay. Goes to the top. All right, just making sure because you could reuse it, right? Is it just brown, or is it what is it? It's just yeah, a gray. I don't know. I don't. It's like gray, gray. kind of. I don't yeah. reuse. I don't know. Have you guys ever reused the gunky stuff at the bottom of it? <laughs> well, uh, isn't that what Gamblin does? They just uh, oh, geez, put together know. all the paints that didn't sell. Right, but it hasn't been sitting in the bottom of Gamsol for, no. <laughs> for a few weeks. No, I mean, some people use it for grounding canvas. Yeah, it seems like it would work. I don't know if but there's any chemical sense. reaction that happens and paint sits in Gamsol for a while, but... Okay, so you I don't... I have not experimented. Okay. I don't want to say... You don't eat it, then, is what you're saying. Uh, no. Would it be Would it be next impossible to paint with that? Would that be an interesting video or stream to paint with the, the nasty? You can 
do it. It's pigment. Okay. Yeah. You want to do that? Yeah, maybe. Paint with the nasty. <laughs> My paint with the nasty. That's that's a great title for a video. <laughs> Painting with the nasty with Ethan Becker. <laughs> <laughs> maybe so. All right. We should well, do that. That was a that was an interesting question. Yeah. Um, uh, JN Priest, OMG, Ethan's arms. Huh. What? Did people not know you have tattoos? Or? I guess. I, th Painting I th with the nasty CP. I'll, it's it's yeah. already catching on. A lot of people didn't know I had arms, so <laughs> there we go. What are some of your hobbies outside of work? We, we almost talked about this yesterday, but this is like, we're going to, just for a quick second... We're going to ask some people about their hobbies outside of art that just doesn't influence their art. Maybe some weird and nasty stuff. But do you do any, do you do any like cartwheels or anything like that? For fun, just cartwheels. Yeah, anything outside of art. Do you play video games? Um, no, I, I don't play video games. I, I probably will soon. My, my son is almost five and he's almost the age where I'm going to introduce him to some video games. Okay, like Mortal Kombat or... Yeah, exactly. Okay. Just well, like the nasty stuff. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna in a, in a second here. We're gonna move into some more technical um, Do you want me to painting advice. The question no, yeah, we <laughs> yeah. If you want to answer the question, we're gonna move into more technical stuff. But uh, we're just gonna let them paint for a little bit so they can actually move into the technical things. You know, I, I don't want to jump around and start bombarding people with questions as they're starting to tighten up their paintings. Uh, I'm just gonna let them get into the groove, and then I'll interrupt them afterwards. So, do you do anything outside of uh, painting? Do you play any instruments or any, uh, you know, skateboarding? No. no instruments, no skateboarding anymore. Oh, you used to skateboard? A little bit, yeah. Nice. Yeah. You ever have an injury? Uh, not a, not a significant injury, but, but, you know, sprained wrists, bumped elbows, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Anything else that you do outside of work, fashion, perhaps? Yeah, fashion always. No, actually, I was looking. You you have a nice aesthetic. You've got like the green top, a little bit of hint of the green on the bottom. You uh, probably bought those shoes weathered, didn't you? Uh, those came dirty. No, no, these came brand new. I just I put sure. I put work in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> Jumping nice. fences, you know, escaping through narrow channels. <laughs> yeah, they're they're used. Oh yeah, I like that. No, but yeah. Um, uh, mostly nowadays, I, I spend most of my time with my two baby girls. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Nice. That's my favorite hobby. Well, that's beautiful. That's amazing. All right, and that does take a lot of energy. It sure does. All right, we're moving on. Let's see. Just a quick question. I'll let you get back to painting. Do you, uh, do, you do anything, any other hobbies outside of painting? Yeah, I play soccer. <laughs> you play soccer? Yeah, that's my Okay. Um, I have a game tonight. You have a game tonight? Right he after this. Here. Yeah. Well, but not not, y not here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. just. Um, wow. Yeah. It's, so I know in in basketball you'd probably dominate. Does the <laughs> does it still translate into soccer? Does the uh, the radiation kind of help in that regard? The radiation. Yeah, it pushes uh, people away a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I get. Um, I you know just like. Because there's a lot of uh, Latino players, mm -hmm. just being tall and kind of uh, quiet, just uh, uh, makes the other people uh, just be careful of you. <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, they're very careful of you. Um, are uh, do they pick on you? No. Okay. <laughs> cool. They don't. Soccer. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of cardio, right? Are you already exhausted from standing all day? Uh, no, no, I'm not. I mean, no, I, I'm not exhausted from standing. All right, we'll let you get back to it. All right. Yeah, I played a little soccer in my time, you know. It's a little bit too much walking for me, though. I like to sit down. And, uh... Oh, thank you. All right, let's ask you, have you ever done anything like martial arts or anything like that? Uh, no, but I do yoga. Yoga? Okay, that's a cool pastime. Does does that actually help at all with, with painting? Oh my god, yes. So helpful. Oh, really? Yeah. So. Um, because it's, well, you were, it's endurance, strength, like concentration, all things that you need for, for painting just to, um, you know, the reason they started yoga however many thousands of years ago was just to 
maintain your body for for life just to do normal daily tasks you know what I mean it wasn't like a workout thing so um, yeah it keeps your wrists strong your back keeps you more flexible Um, yeah so I'm obsessed with yoga (laughs) just more active in general um yeah but just it's your limbs are just more mobile you know yeah. you're you're telling about uh yesterday about yoga and painting class together is yes. that right yeah i started doing some like yoga and painting um workshops where we start doing a class of yoga and then we get into painting and also to kind of help artists know a couple of moves they can do just you know wrist stretches shoulder stretches back bends so because you're painting for so long so many hours your back gets messed up and your wrists from doing the repetitive motion and like I always have shoulder issues so yeah yeah so I that is kind of like a strange scenario that I'm imagining like how do you end up painting in like a downward dog scenario or like between your legs or whatever do you (laughs) where's the canvas yoga class first the paint the the canvases are all off to the side then when we're done we bring the uh, easels and canvases back well, that's very different than what I was imagining, yes. but that's that still be nice. a good idea, though. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Mm-hmm. That was very misleading. Okay. Do you do anything other than <laughs> other than uh, painting on your off time? Do you do, like, any sports or, you know, anything like that? Well, mm, even when dancing, I right? dance, dancing, oh, mm-hmm. dancing is great. Mm, I like to play table tennis. Uh, I started when I was um, around 10 and um, I was never in like a tennis league or like a, um, but uh, I enjoy it very much uh, doing, it's not popular here but it's quite popular in Ukraine and uh, in Poland, uh, Natalia says. And Americans mm-hmm. call this ping pong, is that ping right? Ping pong. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It's a little bit, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, ping pong. <laughs> So it's um, called table tennis, and whenever you play, are you like way off of the uh, off the back of the table, and you're just like uh-huh. swinging? Is it like yeah, so there is defensive tennis? and um, aggressive, right, oh. uh, way of playing, and uh, it's interesting. Yeah. Are you yeah. aggressive? Um, uh, well, uh, to um, in order to uh, do distinctively uh, one or the other, needs to have different type of um, mm. a pedal pedal you know oh really yeah so there is defensive pedal that um, uh, it stops the it doesn't give the spin of the of oh, it's the got like a, gri- a different type of grip on y- it correct oh, correct okay. it just um, mm, stops the ball mm. uh, and you can't return it and, and speed it up um, and yeah Wow, and mm-hmm. you you've been doing this for a bit you sound like you know what you're talking about oh I wish I wish um, I wish it's possible to do so many things in life, and and I do I do enjoy it very much. Mm, yeah, I miss yeah. it. I miss it when yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had to? Uh, I don't even know if this is legal or not, but have you had to do like a quick like elbow to hit the ball or like a hand if you jump with your hand? Is that legal or can you not touch the ball? <laughs> I believe you can't, but if you play with friends, of course you can. Yeah, the back, the back, back yeah, of the hand. Yes, I can do that. I can do that. You've done the. Uh, only when I serve. Like, I can serve like that. He serves with style. All right. Well, thank you. We'll let you get back to it. Yeah. All right. All right. Here's the beautiful model. So how's it looking? How do you feel whenever you look at these? You're like, I don't like it. They need to do better. Do you feel that way? (laughs) Definitely not. This is the most experience I've had watching people paint in real life. So this is amazing to me it's a great opportunity to be able to see so many great artists all in one place Mm. and it's fantastic to see them do the same subject because they all approach it very very differently and I feel like I'm just absorbing so much information as I'm watching and checking out everything yeah I uh, I think a few models that I've met are actually artists themselves do you learn by I, I think I've already asked this question but from being up there but now being back here do you learn anything from watching them that maybe other artists might not? Um, being able to see the process, I think you can kind of glean what they are doing. Mm. Whereas um, if I were to actually watch them, I know that I would get a whole 
much more information than if yeah. I'm behind the canvas. Yeah. But still, you learn a lot. Yeah, for sure. All right. And how you feeling? You feeling good? I'm feeling good. I took a magnesium tablet last night, and that just relaxed everything. So I'm fresh today. Hell yeah. I uh, I'll need to do that as well. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. This is beautiful. I keep getting in every camera. Why are you getting in every camera? <laughs> Cameras are all around me in this area. So um. I have a very specific question for you. Why do you keep getting in the camera's way? I don't know. They're hovering in this zone. There's four <laughs> cameras right here. And I'll try to get away from one, and then I'll just get into the other one. Yeah. But, All right. There's a question up there that I want to yes. ask. How you, to stop forgetting. Like, oh, uh, Christian, oh, he's not there. Can you scroll down? There's a question that you wanted to ask, yeah, though, from the chat. The I was like, oh, that's a cool question. Oh, I can't. Just scroll down. and Oh. Ah. That's all right. We can... Well, okay, I could rephrase it. He's saying, how to stop forgetting what you learned. Yesterday, my gesture drawings were awesome. And then today, I started drawing and felt like I started from level zero again. So, mm. yeah, I don't think that this person, I don't know who asked this, but I don't think you're forgetting anything. It's that the mental state you're in affects your session dramatically. Like if you, if you're tired or you're thinking about something else or whatever it is, you, you, it's not like your knowledge is just going to take care of itself and like, you're going to have a good drawing session. Mm. You have to like being able to sit down and get your mind in the right place is a skill in itself. Mm. Being able to just like focus, know your body. To, get, to be able to get your mind to where it's supposed to be. Is it focused? Because sometimes I feel like if I listen to music and I just chill and groove with the music Pardon. and get into, it, 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 maybe not the most necessarily productive, but a very positive place. Is that, do you do that as well? Listening? I mean, everyone's different, but I mean, music, yeah, music helps a lot of people get into the zone. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. To me, walking around, get my, my blood flowing will yeah. help my, my brain get a little more active. A little caffeine, a little bit of music, and I'm in the right place. Nice. Okay, and yesterday you were talking about you listened to whale sounds to do that. <laughs> the, the whale sounds, yeah, that helps. <laughs> Whatever, you know. <laughs> it's, All right. They're not whale sounds, but I'm sure whale sounds would be great too. Like, really. Don't don't hate on <laughs> whale sounds. They're great. All right, let's see if we can ask some questions from the, uh, yeah, kudos to the model. Paul says kudos to the model. Amazing. Learn by exposure, yeah. It's very true. Uh, which one was that? You pointed out another one? These paintings are beautiful and makes me miss being in art school. Oh, yeah, these paintings are beautiful and makes me miss being in art school from uh, from old Pepper over there in the chat. Yeah, that's. Uh, I never went to art school and it makes me miss art school as well. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Proko is everyone else too. I bet it's nerve wracking being live. I don't think it's very. They're saying you're nervous, but I don't think you're nervous. No. I mean, I think maybe if I stand around you, you might get a little bit I nervous. I get nervous when you're around me because I know you're about to like make fun of me or something. I'm not making fun of you. I think <laughs> it's just like staring into your eyes. That's what it is. Yeah. And maybe sometimes I just get like really quiet or something. What? Does that make you nervous? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. All right. Let's see. Let's see what else we got. Do you guys ever deal with wanting to do... Um, too many things like painting charcoal animating and diverse set of uh, artistic endeavors from sv in the chat yeah that kind of there's a bunch of different things you can do right for me animation versus painting i i really do enjoy painting at the end of the day like what we were talking about yesterday it was like if you if you have maybe not necessarily a mastery but if you have just enough skill to create something create a painting or an animation now you have gained the ability to speak or to walk. What are you going to say with those words now? and Or where are you going to run to, essentially? And so for me, I've built up those skills to now say, like, what am I going to say with my art? Is it more beneficial for me to paint or to animate or whatever? And that's because I have very specific messages um, that I want to say. But everybody's different. Right, so do do you uh, stand? Do you enjoy 
do you find it difficult trying to balance all your other stuff like <laughs> like work and also yeah. um painting because you enjoy painting you love painting right mm -hmm. but there's so many other things that you can be doing i guess it's more work related right because you're running a business mm -hmm. but um uh did you ever want you know like find it hard you want to do charcoal you want to do painting all these different art yeah. there's just too much art it's, it's a constant fr constant frustration yeah there's too many things that i want to do and then just not enough time to do it yeah yeah and so you, you prioritize, just have, you prioritize just gotta, sacrifice yeah. sacrifice say mm -hmm. no to a lot of stuff yeah yeah that's the way it is it's still not enough though you're, you're, you're gonna say no to most things and then the things you say yes there's still too much mm. <laughs> yeah it, all right, I'm going to switch mics here. Oh, oh my lord. <laughs> yes. All right. We'll see how long I can hold this <laughs> this mic yeah, up. That's pretty heavy, huh? I don't think it's on there. Let's see. They don't uh, know what's let's happening. See what we got. There it is. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the tape, you know, it's a nice little it kind of reminds us that of the danger. Christian insists and he gave up so much yesterday. It's, we're, we're just helping Christian be happy. Yeah. yeah. He, he had a big life change yesterday. Yeah, he had a big life change. This is uh, uh, the monk's uh, mic, and now he, he's passed it on to me. This is a <laughs> really big, heavy knife. I like it. Now I can really, like, go in. Really intense. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's enough messing around. Get back to painting all right, here. All right, all right. Here, you Thank you. Right. Is this one so off? Much, yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Man. Oh, wait, can you quickly go over the total raise real quick and, and, and what that means to you? Oh, it looks like we've raised $21,368. That's amazing. That's and a, that's a how lot. many paintings are sold right now? We got two? Right? Uh, I think it's two. I haven't checked in, but probably two. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a lot of artists, though, that donated stuff. It's not just the ones here that like right. yeah there's so many people participating it's right. really awesome and we got plenty more coming up in the next few days right oh yeah yeah, yeah. we got we got this is like it's a slow day it's a, yeah we have two today this is the to... chill day we're, we're about yeah. to ramp up andrew joseph keith streamed earlier in the morning today he did a sculpting stream and then today's the rest of the day is just this and then wednesday thursday friday we got like five streams per day a Friday, Daniel. <laughs> Stephen's really on on that. Yeah. You, are you excited about that? As yeah. Well? I'm gonna be on CHC's channel tomorrow. Nice. Yeah. Cool. What do y'all got planned for that? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's just trying to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. yo, what's going on? That's awesome. Yeah. All right. But it'll be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Knife Mike, I hope you signed your waivers. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys ever feel like? Uh, feel attracted to a subject in your painting drawing does it feel weird and how do you deal with that feeling do you ever feel attracted to the subject in your painting or drawing oh that's a really interesting are, they're talking about the model per perhaps right um carlson yeah i felt that for sure whenever i was like first starting out and i didn't really understand you know the the dynamics between a, an artist and the model i was just a wee little little kid in there um, have you ever have you ever felt that way about uh, you know your relationship between the model because you spend a lot of time with them? Yeah, um, personally, I never draw from life, oh, but okay. I mean, there's definitely times where you start drawing something and you find yourself like a, assigning like a whole like a personality oh, kind yeah. of thing, uh, or otherwise like pulling out characteristics, mm -hmm. and you end up coaxing things out of that that you like most in some pieces. And so I think you can stumble your way into that kind of thing. But if you're drawing from a model, remember, they're doing a job. Don't be weird about it. Yeah, but maybe there's something there, though. Maybe you don't put that on the model themselves, but you can allow that to uh, influence your painting, kind of like what mm -hmm. you're saying. And like you're creating a story, perhaps, and that might influence the, the type of painting that you do. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, like you said, don't be weird about it. Don't Like if, if it influences your painting in a positive way. Mm -hmm. You feel that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh, okay. like fi find things that that you like in a person. Um, say you're you're drawing someone and you really like their profile. Go ahead and really drill into rendering that thing and pull out the things that you think are the the best features they've got going mm -hmm. for you um, to make a good composition. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that you're in love. Remember that. 
All right. It does, got a nice nose. does not mean that you're in love. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to ask somebody else that question really quick. Have you ever, well, <laughs> this is, have you ever, yeah, I know you're married. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move on. <laughs> whenever you were younger, perhaps? Whenever you were younger? No. I, I really think his answer is uh, a profound one, and I think that uh, I, I've been fortunate enough to early on uh, be guided to this idea of reverence for the model mm -hmm. and having a, 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 a tremendous amount of respect for what they're doing yeah. for us. And so I take that approach, and um, you know, but I but I think that you know when you're making art, you know, your 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 mind is, you know, your imagination is free to kind of like. Uh, uh, you know, be creative, and uh, and that can mean like you know finding things about the model that you think are really beautiful and showcasing that for everyone else. You're kind of interpreting that. So beauty is a huge part of it, and for sure I can appreciate that beauty. Yeah. And I'm gonna leave it right there. You're gonna leave it right there. That's a good place to leave it. Respect comes first, though, uh, in any relationship. I think Actually, that's very similar. Stan recently posed for somebody. Stan, you recently posed for somebody. Yeah, Morgan Weisling. Did you? Feel, oh yeah. Did you? Did he, did he feel attraction to me? Yeah. Did I probably. Did Morgan feel attracted? He to tried you to dress me up as a girl. Well, okay. <laughs> but you would, you would make a very beautiful. <laughs> yeah, he, he was showing me all the dresses he has, and. Did you do that? Uh, no, I was, it was. I was trying to convince him to put me in a dress, but he. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. cool. So. Uh, is it was how is it the other way around as a model do you fall in love with the painter because there's a romantic part of that you uh, can find beauty in anything you could be attracted to a rock and it's okay You're like wow that that's like there's something happening in those shapes and those colors and that's cool it's not like a oh man I want to go make out with that rock it's just like that's it's a nice looking rock <laughs> Can you say that in that camera, please? <laughs> Which part of it? That's a nice looking rock. <laughs> the entire thing. <laughs> the whole thing? Oh, yeah. yeah you, people are going to clip that out. Yeah. Make right. that into a thing. Yeah. And we're going to leave that That's there. That's fine. Thank, thank you. Bring in those views. Stan. <laughs> That's a nice looking rock. Stan That's likes nice rocks, rock. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thanks for that question. That's, uh, yeah. Oh, goodness. That was interesting. Can can Becker also paint himself? I've never actually painted on myself before, but at some point, maybe today, um, that would be an interesting stream, right? If we had a model and we actually painted on the the model, do you think? Of, what no. do you think about that? No, you don't like that. Paint on the model? Yeah. Oh, like that's, body painting? That's weird, man. So loving a rock to you is normal, and painting on a loving a rock is not what I said. <laughs> there's, there's actually someone in, in the chat who's asking um, about uh, whether you guys feel that it's important. Watch well, actually, I guess I can say this on yeah. the microphone. Let's see. Um, they're, they're asking right now um, if you guys feel it's important for a person to capture the likeness of the model, or if you guys think that it's an example of skill to know when to divert from that. Hmm. Huh? So if you're asking me, honestly, it's not my priority. Uh, but my priority priority is accurate shapes, values, edges, things of that nature. But ult ultimately, I mean that that will get you a likeness. But the the main goal is to make a good painting, to to me, and in doing so, that means uh, trying to capture the way the light is falling across the model. And if you do that accurately, I think that you will get a likeness. But it's not the priority. It's not the goal. And because it's too much pressure, and it's nice to be able to kind of let that go. Yeah. So that's that's my take on that. And this takes years of mileage to, or should you do this from the beginning versus now as a professional? What do you mean, do what? Uh, making that decision, uh, doing what you're talking about as a student versus now. I I think it's real. That's a tough thing because some students are really obsessed with the likeness, and then they sacrifice other good qualities that need to happen uh, to go for that likeness and they never really learn those uh, those tools well enough so you can be obsessive about it and you can get a great likeness or get things that are kind of in the right place and still have a bad painting or yeah. or the converse is true you can have a terrible likeness in a really beautiful painting 
I think you want to marry them both and have a good balance, but I don't think you, you want to obsess about it because it's such a fleeting idea. From one picture to another of a person, like they can really look different in a lot of different ways. So like, you know, just one swipe of the brush, your likeness could just vanish. Yeah. Uh, so, I, it, you know, when that happens, it's terrifying if you uh, lose that, but that's why I, I don't put too much value on it when I'm painting personally because I know it's going to come and go. Yeah. So I just like steer into that. And I, I work in entertainment and animation and the one thing that really helped me when I finally realized it was essentially we all pretty much look the same. We all have the, roughly the same mask and almost the same structure and then the nuances slowly yeah yeah pretty much you yeah you're starting to change a little bit here and there but if you get like two maybe vastly different dudes and then you slap a beard on them they look the same almost i look just so, like this guy yeah so <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you agree with that in um, painting I, I agree with that 100 percent. like in painting like you can paint you can almost block it out in a just like the standard blocking uh, just like a standard human That's and right. then you move into the nuances it's important to have a conceptualization of the human head as a basic and i i you know i, t I try to because that's that's like the sculptural element that needs to be established pretty early on mm -hmm. and then you can modify that sculptural head to more closely suit the subject and that's where nuance comes in and you know uh uh, that's where you start to push for a likeness. So, yeah. yeah. Would that be an interesting study to um, have a maybe a female model first, and then you do that part of the painting, and then you finish it, and then you bring in a male model, and then you, on the same painting, you then paint the male model over the top of that. Is that possible? And oh, how vastly different would that actually be in your if you could? You know, think of that scenario. I think if it's really wet and wet and malleable, you could do that. That'd be a really cool experiment. Yeah. Uh, I've seen uh, John Coleman, who's an am amazing uh, Western artist, do that in sculpture, oh. like on stage, like sculpt like a, a child, and then build it up into a young lady, and then build it up into like a, a you know like an older male, yeah. right on the right on the same thing. And so I, I think that is a, a good exercise and can be done in paint too, uh, if it's nice and malleable for sure. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, I could see value in that. Yeah, uh, that's definitely helped me in animation and kind of learning that you don't have, as artists, especially as new artists, we get, we just overcomplicate things way too much. Mm. And the moment that I realized that, it just like immediately was like, oh, th we're all pretty much the same. We can. I can make it a man, a woman, a child, whatever, just by very it's like small little you know changes. Proportional yeah, the changes. proportional changes, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. All right, we'll let you get back to it. Very. Okay, looking. Thing. So I, I'm curious if anybody's like out there is like, dude, when's he gonna fix that thing? And if you see that thing, tell me what it is so that I can fix it because like I'm like losing objectivity. And uh, sometimes it takes, like my wife was like, oh, you know, the eye, something, something about the eye, it's like floating away, it's too far. And she was totally right. So I don't know if you have any ideas, don't hesitate to help me out here. Yeah, what's your name for the chat so they can tell you in uh, the chat? Joseph Todorovich. All right, just tell Joseph what he's doing wrong and we'll keep the camera on this painting for a second. All right. <coughs> Let's let this. I think this is one of my favorite comments. Some people's heads are long. Is that? Profound. Oh, that's just the, uh, that's the statement. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No question Some mark. people's heads are long. That's fair. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty fair. <laughs> Some people's heads are long. Uh, yeah. Were they, I wonder if they're, are they talking about us? <laughs> hmm, okay. They're talking about Weehawk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm reading some of these questions. Y'all can, uh, Slap a comment in the comment in the in the chat if you want to. Let's see what you got. Oh, that's a good one. Which one? The one uh, in the doctor. How important is it for you guys to mix your range of colors prior to painting? Oh, okay. Hmm. All right. We're gonna ask this question about colors. Let me see who's who's available here. All right. I'll sp yeah. Yeah. I'll go down here.
right. Here, I'm going to ask you a question, okay? Mm -hmm. How important is it for you guys to mix your full range of colors prior to painting? What significance do you give sticking to your palette? Um, Watch out, this is a knife, but it's just it's actually just a mic. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Yeah. Um, for me, it is actually very important because I use because I can get very lazy to in in mixing color. Um, so I do want like to pre mix a, a bunch of colors and different values in a value range. And then I'm constantly still mixing as I go. But I think it's important um, to take some time to mix and like stare at your model or whatever you're painting to get to know, you know, what's the relationships. Um, yeah, and then you also can get great color harmonies. Like if, you, if you're just mixing, um, I mean, I still mix as I go, but if you just if you mix as you go without having anything pre-mixed, it can your values can get really screwed up. Mm. Not always, but it can. So it's just for me, it's palette like palette organization. Yeah. Uh, and what I see a lot of students doing as well, kind of what we were talking about yesterday, is they're just all over, all over the place with their colors. The shadows might be different from uh, the overall, I guess, like the dominant uh, color, and it's just. They're, they may not be painting uh, everything in harmony. Does that have to do with palette? Because like we were talking about, if, you, if we see your painting right now, I'm not sure if it's on the screen, but the, the dominant uh, paint or the color in this right is probably the blue and that's gonna affect the, the shadows and whatnot. Yeah, there could be like a dominant color harmony, which what does help when you're pre-mixing, you can always constantly add that one color into your mixtures, or it's obviously just a harmony of using only a limited palette, you know? Yeah. Um, so if you use too many colors, um, they cancel each other out. What's the most limited palette that you've ever painted with? Uh, it's actually something I teach with a lot now, um, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and white. Oh, and you wow, just that's focus very on, limited. You focus on like warms and cools. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, no black in there? No. You just use burnt sienna and blue to make your darkest dark. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. All right, cool. That's a really cool answer. Thank you. All right. Let's go back over here. It feels very different seeing Ethan so chill and calm. Well, I'm actually very furious right now. I'm just keeping it in check, so. They asked if uh, anyone here has tried digital painting. Has anybody here, any of our professional painters here, have any of you tried digital painting? Okay. All right, we'll start with you and kind of work back this way. So was it for fun? Was it for a client? Uh, what was the scenario? I actually took a, a class um, to like learn how to paint in uh, Photoshop. Did I tell you? Oh, I forgot to tell you. Like I, I, sh I like to shoot guns. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, you asked, so I was yeah. Cause you asked about hobbies, but I haven't got to shoot because like ammunition is pretty expensive. Ammunition is very expensive. Yeah, that's a hobby. I, it's a hobby. Okay. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, it'd just be collecting, right? Because you don't really do much else with a gun, I suppose. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. That's that's interesting. It's fun. That's, a, that's very. It makes but you feel powerful. It does. Yeah. Yeah. It. Yeah. He is powerful though. Yeah. Yeah, he is. It's it's on top of the power. Power on power. Power on power. So, so yeah, you're taking a class on. Yes. Photoshop or digital painting in uh, general. Like um, I I guess it was like uh yeah, uh digital painting in general yeah, mm. uh and it's really fun. Um, but I don't do a lot of it. I haven't done it professionally, and I want to do more, but, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and it'll, it transfers, right? Or what does and does not transfer? Do you look at digital artists as a bunch of punks now? Do you hate digital artists? No. no. Is it easier to paint digitally? That's a huge thing, all right? That's a huge topic. That yeah. People say, oh, if you paint digitally, yada, 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 bam, bam, bam. That's what they all say. I, I think it's just a tool, and uh, I think it's like a great tool. You know, it's the convenience factor is amazing. Actually, I like to like take a picture of my painting sometimes if I'm gonna make a major change or like want to try to include something or put figure in the background or whatever. Take a picture and just like paint 
you know, paint these ideas out and see if it works. So like a sketchbook for your painting. It's like amazing. It's like the best way to compose and try different ideas. Mm -hmm. And they're all reversible, different layers. You know, even if we want to make a minor adjustment, sometimes I'm like, damn, like, what if I made that adjustment? Sometimes it's not always like the best move because it can just disrupt the whole painting. I'll just like try that minor adjustment in like Photoshop or Procreate. And yeah, if you're like really scared. What, what's that? If you're really scared. If I'm really scared, yeah. I fear it, yeah. Well, no. I'm. Well, yeah, no, it's it's terrifying to lose something special in a painting, but you can't be, you can't paint from that place. You know, you gotta. Because you see the confidence in the strokes, right? You gotta, yeah, you can tell if it's like, well, yeah, you can't fear the paint. You gotta beat the paint. I want everybody to have a quote by the end of this. You can't fear the paint. I can't love that. Can't fear the paint. Yeah. Can't fear the paint. And Stan's are, already yeah, Stan's, have my quote. Stan I can't already, change it. <laughs> Stan's quote is, "I love rocks." <laughs> that is not my quote. You said I love rocks. I have a question for him. I have rock. one more question for him. If you can wait your turn, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> does does mix does mixing paint? So you're mixing paint right here, yeah. right? And that's what traditionally you do. But in like Procreate or whatever or Photoshop, you don't mix paint, as we all know. How has that transferred? Vice versa, you know. Uh, do you do you think that way when you're painting in Photoshop? You, you just know, straight up pick the color you I want. I should be clear. Like I haven't really done a lot of like painting in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Like I've done maybe like a couple, like actual full on like representational paintings in Photoshop. I mostly like draw and illustrate in Photoshop. Okay. So, uh, but the ones I've done, I, I just select the color, which I hear is cheating. You select the color off the image you're working on. That's, that's like, that seems like cheating because it was so easy. Like, it was like really easy and it just looked really good. He has a bias already. I, he's, he's called it cheating. No, no, no. Well, I thought it was amazing, but I mean, it would, I think it would be harder to go into the color picker and just like get the right color and just, I think it would take a lot longer. Right, but I'm just selecting right off there and painting. It's like it's just, man, it's just like so easy. You know what? It is cheating. It is cheating until you know. Oh, if I wanted to, I could go and pick this color based off of my little eyeballs. Right. But I'm choose like I know I can do that already. Right, right. I, as a student, you know, I knew like oh, just so much time to go in and do this. I know that I can yeah. eyeball it. Once you get that eyeball inside your eyeball, and what? you got the painter ball. If you can. If you can describe color in terms of value, hue, and chroma, you can go into the color picker and start testing those strokes and nail it. Then you know you can, you can do it, right? It's yeah. easy. It, that's, that just takes a shitload of time it or does. a lot of time. Yeah. But, um, uh, but yeah, but like, you know, I love it. It's fun. And uh, I, should, I, I want to do more. Yeah. It is nice going back and forth yeah. uh, to try to experience that. All right, I'm going to ask somebody else that question. Thank you. There's actually one more question that I think is actually a really interesting one, mm -hmm. uh, particularly for you. Um, they're saying, uh, I wonder if the artist in painting right now has changed the style uh, from how they usually paint, from how they, uh, I don't know, this was how they used to paint, because you used to work predominantly as an uh, illustrator. No. What was, what was, I've never, you know, I've never been an illustrator. You we're, doing, we're, we're, um, we're going over some questions painting? from the chat yeah. real quick. Before, uh, and then you moved towards painting, I believe. Yeah, I mean, I, in college, I mean, that was like 20 years ago. I was, okay. I, I just wanted to learn how to draw. Yeah. I just wanted to, like, my, I used to do graffiti, right? That was what, one of my first things, right? And just make up characters, but they were always kind of flat and designy. Uh, and then when I went to college, I wanted to learn how to draw correct, correctly. And I started, like, seeing these drawings on the walls, and, and uh, I read... Graffiti is really confident-driven, right? Like, you have to yeah. be, you have to... Do you know? Style. Do you know the, the 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 stroke or the line that you're about to do, or do you just like say I'm gonna start here and I don't know where I'm gonna end up? Sometimes no, you gotta know, right? Gotta know. Yeah, you gotta know. I mean, you gotta know, and you gotta have that memory into that let you know that arc for that letter or whatever the case yeah. may be. If you're doing a nice clean outline or it's whatever. A memory thing. Yeah, but I was always into like the characters and the backgrounds and like the fill in, like the extras, right? And so that meant like representation. Yeah. And I started to figure out, like, I don't really know how to draw that well in terms of three dimensions. And so in that way, I've changed my style a little bit. But I just think it's like I've just grown or just, I don't know, just evolved or whatever. That's amazing. If you can, yeah, keep on reading questions from the chat. I like that, especially if I'm on a 
a specific artist you all have a question for that artist while I'm while we're talking you know <laughs> sling it up in the chat and uh, I can keep on asking them I they, they said they, you, you got mad respect yeah, they mad respect. What, what, did you, what did you write before? What's that? What did you write? I used to write loves. L O V E S. Okay. You used to write loves. Can we find any of your tags anywhere? No, I, no, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't done that in a long time. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's really nice seeing you painting on like a established wall to now like a piece of a wall. So, that's nice. All right, we're gonna move on now. Have you ever watched Bob Ross? I do, I do watch Bob Ross still. He does some pretty cool stuff where, like, oh, sorry. Is he's he, not that good. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's got some cool, he's got some cool tricks up his sleeve. He's just, man, man, man. he's always talking, you know. Have you ever seen, like, he like every once in a while, like, he's got that real long fingernail on his pinky? Have you ever seen that? <laughs> Is that not for, what was that for? I don't know, but it's straight, me and my wife were cracking up when it's we saw 80s, that. It's the 80s, right? Yeah, I guess. I know. But I take him as not a, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who knows? It takes all kinds. We're going to come back to you later to do a, like a Bob Ross section and see what you do. Uh, we're going to do one more round and then. Yeah, I might try that technique. If yeah. I try that one particular thing, I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll come back for the Bob Ross technique and see if you can kind of do like a, the tone and the. Yeah. Like the, the little the tree. Yeah, do a little tree or something. All right. A little you know, rock. A lot of beautiful rocks. You still on the rock thing, huh? You just giving me a hard time. <laughs> Somebody said something about a. You you think rocks are beautiful? I know you do. Oh you yeah. Ever gone Actually, hiking, you're up on top of the mountain and you look at the other giant rocks. The mountains are rocks, and you're yeah. like, oh man, those are beautiful. That's true. If you don't think rocks are beautiful, you're weird. I was actually the weird kid that was, you know, all my kid or my friends and I are playing video games and they're running around, you know, actively, you know, killing each other and stuff. And I'm just looking at all the beautiful things, like all the beautiful waterfalls and the What's rocks. What's the weirdest thing you think is beautiful? What's the weirdest thing that I think is beautiful? Yeah. Uh, prob. Well, it's not weird to me because yeah. I think it's beautiful, it's but a lot of people, like I guess, just like bigger boned people. I like that, you know, big ankles, <laughs> big ankles, and, well, not, no, you know, just, like, bigger bone people. I like, I like, uh. I like volume, especially in painting, too. So, it's not really weird, but no. some people, some, it's, I mean, it's not weird to artists, but other people will be like, why are you painting, like, these big bone people? I'm like, I like, I like, <laughs> dude, a lot of people, a lot of people say that. But, I guess... But as artists, right, we, we see shapes and everything very differently. Yeah. Yeah. I like I like it. Oh, you think I'm weird now? No. No, I don't. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Go back to your rocks, you freak. Okay. Let's see what's going on over here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, how important is it to use reference for a beginner? Uh, let's ask this. How important is it to use reference as a beginner artist? Personally, I think it's reference. the most important thing. What do you mean? Re photo reference? Re photo reference or any reference as opposed to some student sitting down and just saying, I'm going to paint whatever is in my little baby brain and just do whatever I think is fun or cool. Imagination. Yeah, yeah I, no, imagination. I, I, I think it's, uh, it depends how old the artist you know if they're between two and eight always no from reference no reference uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> no reference obviously and then naturally like the artist gets worse and then they have to use reference mm -hmm. so they're best between two and eight yeah that's the best art two, two and eight is yeah. the most free yeah yeah, most imaginative, more artistic too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, but Picasso there's... said that it took him like a couple of years to learn how to draw like Raphael, and it takes him a lifetime to learn how to draw like a kid. So, his earlier works were really structured and very perfect, tight. almost right. Yeah. Tight, yeah. Yeah. And then he moved into. Well, he got bored with it, and then he started looking for. You know this idea how to draw how to see the world as if you're a kid as if you're seeing it first time 
But uh, okay, but if you are trying to hit that stage of maybe before you move into full on Picasso mode. Um, well, it's too late probably because you know, like most artists. <laughs> Like, yeah, but yeah. like in the beginning, when you're trying to learn the technical stuff, having reference in the beginning as a student is, for me, I, I mean, I personally believe it's the most important thing. Well, well what do you think? I think it's the mo most important thing is to answer the question, why? Mm. Why are you doing something? Are you studying anatomy are you studying light are you studying likeness are you studying uh, shapes what are you doing why why do you do this and if you can answer that question very specifically then everything you're doing would be much more uh, much higher quality yeah. you know if you're just drawing if you're just sketching if you're just noodling yes it's good better than nothing but if you have also if you can answer a question why then then your your art will be more specific yeah that's that's a good point because most when you ask most students you know what do you want to do or this this or that they they just say well i just want to make art they're not really thinking that deeply about it right. is it is it really i mean at that point as a student should they really be asking those questions or should they be more engaged and just excited to to paint i mean it takes um all kinds you know like you want to be drew you, you you can't be always too serious you know sometimes you just have to try things and just take a bunch of paint and slap it and squish it because mm -hmm. it's fun yeah um but if you are deliberate and specific and you are I'm not student mode. Remember yeah. how we talk about different modes, yeah. artist and student mode. Then you want to say like, okay, well today I'm going to try to study this. And you mm -hmm. stay, say, stay specific and then you choose your reference, you choose your materials, you choose the time that will best benefit whatever you're studying. Yeah. Um, also, I see right here that you have put your study up, which you've done um, a few days ago, right? You put your study up next to the painting that you're working on right now. Is there any reason why ideas. you have that up? Yeah. Ideas. It's not finished. It's not polished. But there are different color ideas. And I'm looking for... Uh, I'm, I'm looking at real life, looking at this painting, look at my painting, and I'm trying to... Again, as we said, I'm not painting a face. Well... I am, but I'm also designing shapes and patterns. Yeah. So this has lots of ideas of shapes and patterns, and I match it. I look at her, and I look at my painting, and I try to choose the best ideas. Mm -hmm. We can talk about color if you like at some point. Yeah, let's talk about color. Um, do you want to go on the other round? Yeah, sure. I'll do one more round, and we'll okay. talk about we'll talk about some color there. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right. Like Stan's colors. Stan's colors, yeah. Stan has good colors. Yeah. That's it. That's what they said in the chat. Oh, I'm so sorry, Stan. Hold on. Trying to what? Again. What is my tag system coming out? Somebody in chat says, "To be honest, I learned to draw because I was <laughs> good at writing." Yeah. Right, that's you. a really okay. good point. Okay. No, I, I wanted to show. Here you go. Oh, oh, Storytelling okay. and purpose <laughs> and <you> why <laughs> reasoning is really good place to start if you're wanting to move into design or drawing. Oh yeah, let's talk about your colors. Yeah, so I mean, the, I started the day by trying to get my grays in to the face. I don't know, can I, can I see that? Like I put a lot of grayish like purples and greens throughout the eye and then in areas around the core shadow um, I tend to do it like more in the forehead and the, around the jaw because around the cheeks you kind of want to get more purpley reddish tones and if you start putting green in here it, I mean, it, it could work it could work you, you know I, I see a lot of artists making it work really well but I typically will look for grays around the eyes oh grays around the eyes yeah what? there's a lot of blood flowing through those areas and there's you'll find purples and greens in there oh and it's like thinner is the skin thinner there is that why <laughs> Yeah, blood, blood. blood, blood mean like more like greenish blood. Yeah. Okay, um, and it's the 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 shadow, right? Is it's very dependent on the the shadow, is that right? The shadow. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, it'll affect more. Of, yeah, you're talking about the right. the environment. If I blur my vision, yeah, the, the the grays and greens of the shadow are kind of coming in through those. Yeah, so the environment will affect the shadow side of the face more than it'll affect the half tones. Okay. This is going to be more of like, I mean, th you know, it reflects the environment too, but the actual color of the skin in this area will affect the color you're seeing more than the environment in the lights and half tones because oh, yeah, yeah you'll, you're just going to find more grays in this area than say in in the nose like you're just going to get more reds in here in the ear more reds um, but jaw forehead and then once i kind of got those colors working then i started putting in detail around the eye yeah that, that's really the hard part is getting those big color transitions to work um, oh, right. to yeah. look right like it's skin yeah like from the eye to the cheek because the cheek's going to be very saturated right mm -hmm. and uh, a completely different warmer color than the moving into the eye which is very desaturated and gray yeah yeah how do you transition do you use like a certain type of brush to start to blend or do you gradually no. change it? I'll look for plain changes mm. to find transitions of color um, that's a really just, good point I yeah. see a lot of students uh, like what I just said, they'll try to blend them. So yeah. they'll try to uh, use maybe an airbrush or something like that if we're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, digital painting. Or in this case, they might just start to blend so they can kind of hide that plane change. Yeah. But you're saying you want to focus on the plane change, find the specific color that it's making, and make that decision. Yeah, it, it depends on your style. Um, but for oil painting, like direct oil painting like this, like wet and wet, you typically want to get bold very confident strokes where you you choose a color you decide on it and you put it down you don't like Decisions. you don't like massage them all together and then because then everything becomes wishy-washy yeah. you know look at sergeant look at saroya like look at the strokes they're just they're there it is a stroke and it indicates an exact shape a value a color and an edge like that one single stroke and they don't they don't overwork any brush strokes. Like if they mess up a stroke and it's like, that's not right, they'll just redo the stroke. Okay. Yeah. So now my question is, what if, because what we were talking about yesterday is, it doesn't matter what you see in person sometimes. It doesn't matter what real life is sometimes. It only matter, matters on what you're designing from, from that model or from real life. Because real life can be really tricky sometimes. And it's your job to then design out real life. So what if you're looking at the face and you don't see a plane change, but you know that you need you as a designer, you need to create that plane change to to, you know, manipulate the viewer. Have you ever seen been in that situation? Yeah. Yeah, I'll force a plane change in there. You like force a plane change. Kind of. Yeah, I mean I did that here in, in the arm. Like when I look up there on her shoulder. I'm seeing, like, I don't see this much volume in this cylinder of the arm, mm -hmm. right? Are they seeing what's happening right now? Yeah. Or no, they're not. Yeah. Well, like, you switch oh, wait, no. that, yeah, that's not like. They all look the same. Yeah, so, like, yeah. right in here, this, just this gradation and, like, the darks, that cylinder that I rendered, and even in the red, you can see this dark here, lighter here. Like, that's all made up. I just wanted to show a cylinder. Up there, I'm just seeing, like, the same value through. And wait, I, I you forced. made that up? Well, yeah. Do you see this, that dark up there? Okay. Do you think you can r turn the camera around and let's take a look at the live model of, uh, of the arm? Yeah. yeah. Zoom in onto her shoulder. That's cool. Like, th I don't see that. You can see here. Okay. So it's a little bit, f it might be more flatter yeah. from your perspective. So look at this gradation in the light and in the red. Like, I'm just looking at big shapes and trying to force a plane change. And then I'll come back in later and I'll do these details. Like, Obviously, I didn't even do any of the pattern yet. I'm just looking at the forms, trying to figure them out. Okay. Um, you forced the plane change. Yeah, the plane change from here to here. And like you're really describing the the arm uh, and the shadow. That's kind of like that is the arm. Yeah. Like you're, you like a cylinder, like you're saying. Yeah, and the same applies for yeah whatever. I mean, I don't typically do something that drastic on the face okay. because like then I'll have to just be working from imagination the whole time mm -hmm. like I could do that much easier with an arm in the face if I completely change like 
a whole you know side of the face and put in a shadow when it's actually not yeah it, that's kind of that's a big change and i'd rather work from the model and observe the colors that are there and just try to be as true as i can okay and simplify Simpl i'm actually doing more simplifying than changing i asked him yesterday does he or do you force shadows like maybe the shadow isn't that dark the lighting isn't that drastic but you as an artist you're like you know what i'm going to just punch up this uh yeah. shadow that's that's where a composition comes in okay. it's like if you want to make something darker in order to add more contrast in an area where you want to bring the viewer's eye you do that and as then you do the opposite in another area like around here you less contrast okay you you have you have experience you're a painter you've been painting for a, for a hot minute what if a student were to want to do that? Would you say go ahead, go ahead, have at it, yeah, sure. design and paint where it's not where it doesn't exist? Which what kind of like like Just a like, brand brand new student first day on, on the well, painting or that's a good question. Probably not. I'm Probably. not gonna be like it's your first day painting. Let's let's start start looking for those plane changes to force in there and like no, just like let's start learning how to see what is actually there and just do it the way you're seeing it. So but, a, a lot then of then you start thinking about composition. First yeah. you train your eye. Okay. Then you start storytelling, and composing. Okay. So training your eye. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about drawing versus painting because I feel like you do one, you do the other, and you can go back and forth, and they will really influence each other, and help you build that confidence and uh, knowledge over one. So if you're drawing, most people might think in a very flat, you know, one dimension type of thing pencil to paper this is the way I was okay. but as soon as I started painting then I started to realize oh these forms wrap that's when I started to really start to you know chisel things out and say oh the this face you know is literally going this way and I have to describe that in a plane change so yeah. then when I go back to drawing I'm going to make those decisions in my drawing to then start to turn the form that way okay. uh, I mean we just it? had probably different drawing yeah. training because when, when I was learning to draw, we were thinking of form. Oh, okay. The, the drawing training I got was basically a step towards painting. It, w it so was basically like painting with a pencil, essentially? Pretty much, yeah. We'd oh. use the side of the pencil a lot to, to turn form. It, uh, it's basically learning light without color of, getting in the way. Okay, I'm thinking of just line. Only yeah, line. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's basically step one in figure drawing is you get, you, you know, you, you figure out the lay in get the placement right. Then you start thinking about structure. So already three dimensional form with line, like plane changes, perspective, like top plane of the shoulder, side plane of the shoulder. You can indicate that with the angles you're putting in. And then pretty quickly into the drawing, you start adding tone on top of it and rendering. Yeah. But, but. Okay. So yeah, Let's, you, that's you great. draw linearly and it, it's a beautiful drawing. Yeah. You don't need, you don't need form to make a good drawing mm -hmm. but you can learn form with drawing I mean, most people do learn form with drawing I would sneak into uh, art uh, drawing sessions in art center uh -huh. and there was this one guy that would draw only in like straight lines he would and it was just beautiful yeah and he would not shade or anything necessarily just straight lines and uh, that kind of helped me realize you can turn form that way too. You know, you don't need mm -hmm. to go in and start smearing everything everywhere. Get that form down in just straight lines. Which is very yeah. interesting. Did he have an occasional curve in there? Or was uh, it just it was, straight line? It was straight it was like straight lines and a perception of a curve, you know, but essentially it was all straight lines. He was yeah. just tricking us into thinking that it was a curve, you yeah. know. Because that's contrast too. You can have like 95% straight lines and then occasionally put a curve around like an area that is really curvy. Mm -hmm. And that'll just, the contrast between the two makes it look amazing. Yeah. Same with edges. You can have a really big variety of edges where most things are a little bit softer and then a few things are like super sharp. And your eye is just going to go right to those sharp yeah. edges. It was mostly like instead of doing a circle, he would make a hexagon or octagon or whatever you mm -hmm. would call it, you know? Yeah. Whatever the shapes names are. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. this you're very, very good at art. I'm gonna let you get back to it. Thanks. I'm liking this. Thank you. I'm really liking it. But I'm not liking yours better than anybody else's or anybody else's better than yours, okay? <laughs> like, we're all good here. Yeah. Okay. We're all, you're good, you're good. Thanks, thanks. This one's here, you can 
do you have a favorite traditional painter? This question's for me. I have a favorite traditional painter. I was kind of talking about it yesterday. Um, uh, Simon Stellenhog, I believe he is digital, but I believe he also did traditional. Um, and you know what? He has a very interesting way of doing it too. Um, Simon Stellenhog, look him up in another tab right now. You can see you can see a lot of the influences of Stellenhog. Do you have a favorite of, of his books? Yeah. So, so <laughs> like I was talking about yesterday, Stellenhog is a huge uh, influence in me, and I really try to not make it known in my own paintings. But I remember I had a booth at CTN or some kind of convention, and right across from me was one of those big booths that was selling all of the different art artist books that they couldn't be there, you know. And everybody who would stop by, they'd ask me these questions, or they'd say like, "Oh, look at my portfolio," and I would look at their portfolio, and I would point across the way, and I'd say, "Go look at Stylin Hogg's book over there." and everything that I'm talking about is in one of those paintings, composition, whatever. And I made so many sales for, for Stellenhog's book. Like the guy that was selling at the booth, he actually came up to me and he was like, I, do you like want a commission or something? Cause everybody's buying Stellenhog's books after they come up to you. But uh, anyway. It was Electric State. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite, but I do have the, uh, the Electric State one, I believe. But, um, so if you look at it, they're all, mostly all digital that he does, but you can really see the influence, especially in, man, I, I could really break this down so much. I would just stare at his paintings so much, like I'd be sitting in bed, staring at his paintings and really breaking down all the simplicity. I'm talking about like the trees is one color completely. And then the shadows of that trees is just a slightly different color. You know, and that's that's it. There's just got the two different colors. I don't want. I don't care what you call them. A value, a, a hue. I don't know the names. The names. I don't care about the names. It's just two different colors, slightly different colors, and that's all I had to know. I didn't have to know the names of all this stuff. I just had to see like the way that Stellan Hogg does um, plane changes in the vehicles. It's just one big stroke of just one color. He doesn't use like a airbrush, all these Photoshopy tools. He paints like a tra traditional painter and decides. Just like what Stan over here was talking about, artist Stan, uh, rock lover Stan, is that um, he's deciding what what those strokes are going to be, and that's just that's what they are. Anyway, enough about Stellenhog. Actually, you know, one more thing about Stellenhog is that he's also a photographer, and you can really tell in the compositions and in the way that it feels almost like he will. Um, take the compression of photography if you take a picture outside he he paints like film so it'd be you know if somebody filmed uh, something uh, for a for cinema cinematically I mean not just a not a camera photograph necessarily but a film uh, and he paints like that almost the way that he uses environment anyway I could go on forever about Stellan Hogg we have, we have one for, uh, the plug Natalia here. okay Okay, all right. Well, more on Stonhog later because I can talk forever about the composition and uh, traditional versus digital. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. What was the question? Where is it? Oh, yeah. Do you paint or teach abstract art? Um, yes, I do. Even though, yeah, I, I got my um, my education in classical art, but um, everything I do and you could see it from the beginning mm -hmm. it was very abstract very yeah <laughs> what did you think i think well for one it's what? very different from everybody but it's so beautiful because of the energy and like you were you were talking about the energy in it and the way that it falls rises and all of that is still present the energy that you had from the beginning is the still abstract, present uh, something. yeah yeah right? it's still present in uh -huh. it is it difficult to keep that energy in as you tighten things up um uh, of, uh, it's yes it's challenging but um, yeah i i perceive everything as an, an as, a, as an abstract and um, to simplify um, like 
yeah, everything starts with an abstract mm -hmm. uh, for me. And uh, yeah, you remember it, it started so abstract and so like undefined. And, uh, and this is the way I start er uh, all the time because um, and it's actually it's not how I how I was taught to do, but it's just um, how I. Um, how I uh, open up n the, the most in my art. It helps me uh, feel free, feel um, alive, feel um, yes, abstract, uh, abstracting things and uh, uh, doing abstract art. Uh, uh, it's very freeing for me, uh, even though I'm such a traditionally trained artist. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yes, it's a great question. Um, I I teach abstract art uh, a lot because uh, it's uh, very interesting for me. Uh, my whole research in synesthesia corresponds with this. And um, I love, um, I, I fell in love with all the American artists who do abstract art and I think that um, it's amazing. Mm. Uh, yeah, you mentioned Americans. Are there any, do you see different cultures painting different uh, different ways in abstract art everybody paints okay, different it's ways all different all around. because um, um, no abstract art contains uh, contains like uh, the play of shape and textures and um, uh, how they touch each other um, yeah. and um, the line you you know that line doesn't exist in reality it's a tool of defining the objects and uh, uh, or color. It's a tool, um, like shape is a tool to create your world, to create your own um, way of uh, looking at things. Yeah. To yeah, it's so interesting. I love exploring uh, abstract art. It's so so vast and it's so it it can go so deep and it yeah it's it amazes me how do you even go about beginning to teach abstract composition like oh, composition yeah first. like in like in everything um oh. yes so there is there's still structure behind it then yes yes there is of course a lot of people think there is no but it's very much uh, mm, once you start to to um, to learn about this, you see because at the beginning of my uh, um, art um, uh, art mm, art I don't know, like yeah art line I don't yeah, know how to say uh, yeah I didn't understand what is abstract art and only after I would find um, I would find all the way of thinking of old masters. In abstract art, which is which is fascinating for me, do you understand? Oh, yeah. uh, because all the old old masters they had structure behind their realistic work. There's always abstract uh, idea of how the shapes inter intertwine and how this goes here and the the um, light and shadow uh, spots and uh, forms. Uh -huh. yeah. In my in composition, though I I, could, I teach composition as well, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's pretty much always primarily based on uh, the same principle that I teach in design, which mm -hmm. is big, medium, and small. Mm -hmm. Do you you use these as well? Big, medium, and small, just the standard Correct. principle. Correct, but because the more variety you have in your artwork, the more interesting it is. Mm -hmm. uh, big, small, sharp, uh, uh, not sharp. Uh, yeah, like straight lines, and yeah. uh, wavy lines. Of course, it depends on the subject and what you are trying to um, to yeah. to do. Uh -huh. If we use your painting as an example, do you think you can kind of point some of the stuff out for us? Do we have a a shot of her painting right here? Yeah. Can we switch to this camera by any chance? Thank you. C is can you point out any of the? Uh, because it is abstract, but you're saying there's still a lot of structure that you're thinking about. You're not just throwing it together randomly you're still using your knowledge of composition of course i try uh, what do you see do you see mm. anything well th f i mean for one this this is a very big section here and uh, almost a section of rest 
and this big section and this. They're very big, confident sections. Um, and that, I, I don't do abstract, but as composition, compositionally, well, I see a balance here as well of this blue down here and the blue up here and the yellow connecting those. Um, those areas of rest, it maybe. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then the hint of that as well. So if this is the big, this could be considered a medium, and this is a small. If we're talking about the grouping of Correct. blues, Correct. Correct. yeah, Correct. and a very confident shapes in that as well. Is it, was that what you were going for? Yes, yes, oh, okay. you're right. Did you do that on purpose, or you're just like, hey, that's a good idea? No, I did it on purpose. <laughs> okay. Well. Mm, um, or do you just like know what feels right at a certain point? Yes, yeah. it feels uh, it feels right to me to do this. Yeah. Maybe somebody else will do it differently, but uh, I feel um, it 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 kind of makes yeah. me feel more balanced because you see what what is here is such a such a yeah. you know, flow of, of different things, and he, this part is actually kind of to connect these two together. They, they say, say that again, which they part? Are, they go together. Oh, okay. the, the background with this, yeah. it's different texture compared to this texture. And yeah, I try to do different textures. I paint um, differently. I, I use my fingers a lot. I uh, use a knife. So each um, object the is painted differently. That's what I was going for. Okay. For example, I painted my the face with finger. Obviously, I painted the this with my knife. I painted this with the cloth, and also the skin, and the also with my fingers, and uh, the rest with my knife. And I think only this part I painted with the brushes. Wow, that's beautiful. I see that now. Like the, the cloth is going to have its own specific texture versus the softness of the skin because of the, the tools you used, I guess, right? Yes, I try to use different tools as much as I can and different way of putting paint on the canvas and different wow. way of, yeah, like applying it, like, oh, I'm applying it in horizontal. Well, uh, I, you are a great artist yourself and you, uh, you, um, it's very important the perspective, correct? And mm -hmm. if the plane is in the perspective, I try to put the, um, put my brush strokes in the perspective. If it's horizontal, I put. If it goes, um, yeah, the yeah. sides also in the perspective. Mm, yeah, it's it's very important to do this. Yeah, that's where all the traditional yeah. and all the structure comes in from your training. Okay. Well, what you were describing was like, so I pointed out the technicalities of, oh, this is a big, over here, that's a medium right there, and that's a small, mm -hmm. and but your response to that is, but it just felt right. So you knew all the principles, you knew, you knew that design theory, I guess, of big, medium, and small, but what you're saying, which is very interesting to me, because that's also how the viewer's going to see it. They're not mm -hmm. going to say, tip, the, typically, the viewer's not going to be like, oh, well, that's a big, and that's a medium, and that's a small, and mm -hmm. that's why I feel good about this. Mm -hmm. Pe the people are going to look at it. Correct. The most common Correct. viewer is going to say, uh -huh. I don't know why, but it just feels good. And you're also painting from that point as well, because yes, you know I all these. I very much rely yeah. uh, on how I feel yeah. and uh, my intuition and uh, what... Mm, uh, how, yeah, how, um, yes, very much. It's very mm, helpful to have all the knowledge kind of on the back of my head, yeah. but I always um, get distant from it when I paint. Uh, that's a, that's yeah. the sign of a master, I feel like. Whenever you're not so into all the technicals oh. and you're <laughs> just constantly, you know, making sure everything's perfect, but you learn all those things, like you said, and then you just set it in the back of your head and then then just go on, on yes, what you it's feel. Right. It's very helpful to have this luggage. And um, wow. yeah, for people who maybe didn't have it or would like to have it, it's very helpful. Any amount of, of, the, of that luggage is helpful. Yeah. And, um, you don't, there is all, there is no perfection. There is no, um, 
like connect uh, finishing like point that you know everything and there is always um, li like learning is a life process yeah. and um, don't be discouraged if you didn't have the training um, little by little but uh, yeah learn learn from uh, from Stan videos and uh, from like Leon says Mm, from masters, from mentors, uh, which Leon is a great mentor himself. Um, <coughs> he, yeah, do what you can, but don't lose yourself. Yeah, do, don't forget why you're learning this, for the purpose of whatever you would like to do, to express yourself for your own uh, therapy, to say something meaningful and uh, convey an idea to, yeah, to people who will be looking at it, yeah. yes. So for me, growing up especially, um, and every every household's mm -hmm. different, mm -hmm. you know. Like yes, uh, for me, memories. for me growing up, I saw abstract painting, mm -hmm. and the way that I was kind of taught in my household, and mm -hmm. also the way you know the friends that I was around, and me personally, is just like abstract you don't really have to be that good you just sling paint around mm -hmm. and you just do whatever and it's all it's all about how you feel and, and but what mm -hmm. but what you seem to be saying is like for some abstract painters there's a lot and this is what we we're talking about about there Picasso. is such a deep deep uh, uh, understanding and thoughts behind it but I agree some artists do this intuitively there is difference yet yeah, between um, yeah, how oh. people do this. They can, they, some, yes. Uh, I have a couple students that, mm, um, that are amazing intuitive painters. They didn't have uh, all the background and baggage and all the training, but they intuitively do the right thing. They intuitively put the mm, right color in the right spot and arrange things intuitively. It's not everybody can do this. Wow. It's and so, a few. So like a teacher or a professional could then go in and say, oh, I see what you did there. You did a big, medium, and small. And, but the artist intuitively Correct. is just like, Correct. I just did what felt yeah, right. I, exactly. Yeah. Uh, my role with such of my students is to pinpoint what amazing job they did and um, to, to tell them what they've done good and uh, yeah, like what they've done which for them it's um, you know, big encouragement and I love to work with such students because um, um, wow. yeah, it's harder to teach this because I'm myself intuitive and of course I connect with the students who are like my um, s same, same um, understanding. And, but it, for me it's much harder to teach somebody who doesn't have this intuitively like yeah. step by step. It takes longer so interesting because it, it feels mm -hmm. like all of that means that it's what you're doing is all in harmony with it with itself and I try <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that seems to be within us so it's yes. like what came first the the chicken or the egg did, did we create these rules and then started following them Correct. or did we mm -hmm. paint what felt right felt it balanced Correct. and in harmony and then we created the the rules mm -hmm. off of that. Mm -hmm. It just feels the way of the universe to me. Yes. I mean, if I'm if I'm yes. if I'm we, being real, we, you're just gonna take my yeah. money. Not even this word. Okay. That, uh, that, that <laughs> That's the way it goes. And we learn from this, and we go back to uh, who we are, and then we learn and go back and yeah. Learn. I love it. I love it. I have so much more respect for abstract now. It's like I can see why people might not have respect for it because I grew up that way and not quite understanding Me but too. now yeah. I, I really see it I, I really mm -hmm. do see it mm -hmm. thank you that's amazing mm -hmm. thank you for the question yeah uh -huh. we'll, we'll jump back later yeah thank you all for the question and if you don't like abstract art in the chat then you then you got it you, yeah you gotta you gotta get learned No, goodness, no. Putting a knife up to somebody who's pregnant. Did I do that? I don't, re I don't remember that. Well, that was really cool. Yeah, Proko says, I just wanted to give a shout out to the pr uh, production crew. Absolutely. They have been a monumental, uh, they've been monumental in making the stream possible. Yeah, there's a lot of people behind the scenes here. 
Everybody's making this possible, even behind behind the scenes who aren't even in this room. So thanks to everybody. Yeah, uh, somebody in chat says, I like abstract paintings and normal paintings are boring sometimes. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. Man, you're up at 4 a.m. right now watching this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Let's move on to another question here. All right. Here we go. What was your latest aha moment when trying to master something? Have you ever had an aha moment? Um, yeah, I have had some aha moments. My latest aha moments trying to master something. Um, oh, it's been a long time. I, 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 need, I could use one right about now. Um, God, I'm terrible at these. At the aha ha moments? Well, I'm just yeah. taking a look at this painting right now. That's really cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember uh, a, 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 a aha moment early on in re in regards to, I guess, how the the subject relates to the environment, and how how to model the form in a little bit uh, more of a kind of a strategic and gentle way, mm -hmm. and that was it's that was always a big that's always stuck with me. And so I always try to kind of infuse that quality into the work, like like this area, like the idea that really what we're doing is we're painting light, and I mean we're painting an event, and the event is that she's sitting there and there's a light source on her, and light has very particular properties, and I remember this idea that I started to tune in to how the light was hitting everything in a in a continuous way and in a cohesive way mm. as opposed to painting like parts of the painting yeah I, I think i know what you're saying like if it's a strip yeah. of light you can see it go from point a to point b yes. like if somebody took like a, 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 a maybe a brush or a paint thing and just slung it and it just is that what you're saying or or like if like you think of the light like um like a mist coming from the direction that it's coming from hitting the model, hitting the garment, hitting the like hitting the background, hitting the flowers, hitting the hair. Yeah. The light is affecting everything in a similar way and in a, in an opposite way the shadows are connected as well. So uh, in terms of like oh, I've never thought about that. The, the shadows are kind of an opposite of that oh. pendulum. Uh, well, you know that, yeah. right? Well, I, I typically just think of like one creates the other or they sure. they are they are the one and the same but sure uh, yeah that's that's interesting so I mean but just like in general like you can tell like right in here I'm trying to get that that light to harmonize and even as it hits the background as well so I need to get a little bit lighter value there but I'm just kind of holding off and waiting for that but that's painting the light and, that's tough in plain air right because it's always moving yeah that can be tough but if you design it first the shadow shapes and you stick to them that's a good practice from what I understand people who are, are smart plain air painters t tend to design the shadow shapes early and stick to that pattern yeah so I try to do that in plain air painting yeah that's really cool oh uh, one of the one of the aha moments for me was actually not during painting it was a very simple line so I, I hate reading I can hardly read it in the first place but especially so I hate art and I hate reading I hate reading about art like, like I don't. I, I, yeah. I, I, I like reading about technical things about art, but not about, not about. Um, uh, well, I like. Well, I like reading a lot. I like reading about art, but not other stuff. Sorry, yeah. I yeah. interrupted well, you. Well, so, but, but in art, if we're talking about art, um, was it some some fancy artist, dude? I can't remember his name. I read. I opened up the book. And it was during whenever I was playing plein air painting a lot. Opened up his book and I was like, "Oh, I hate this. I don't even want to. I don't even want to look at a single word." Read one sentence, the very first sentence in the middle of the book that said, "If you're having trouble, uh, if something is not matching, you know, within like with anything, skin tone or whatever, it's typically the you need to either saturate or desaturate that thing. The next to 
you know, whatever color it is. And that had so much effect on me. So I shut the book and that's all I read from it. And that was the most effective thing because anytime I was painting something, then I was like, you know what? It isn't, everything is just a value of gray almost, unless we're talking about, well, some skin tones, but it's all pretty much gray. When I jumped into painting in the beginning, I thought, you know, you just slap down the most saturated colors, but in fact, it's very gray. Yeah, because if you just go right out of the tube, you know, then nothing is, nothing is rare, nothing is important, nothing is valuable. But if you start with kind of neutral color and then um, kind of crescendo up to the more saturated notes, sometimes that can be a nice way to kind of create that rarity, that value or at least kind of draw the eye in a particular area if you need to. It's a lot, I mean, that's where painting is really like composing because you're, you're, you're telling the grays to do this, you know, like a woodwind section, you're telling the, the saturated notes to do this, you're telling the values to do that, and you can really play with all that stuff in order to kind of uh, orchestrate the viewer's experience and what you're trying to kind of showcase to the viewer. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. You know why I think I hated reading about it is probably because I wasn't ready. Mm. You have to be ready to take in that information. And if you're painting while you're reading, like, I mean, obviously not at the same time, but in that, and that's part of your life, yeah. then you'll start to understand those as opposed to just reading a big book about it first and never painting before. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, we're looking for that reaffirmation of stuff we've heard and we practice and like reading it when it kind of, Oh yeah, I kind of, I resonate with that. I understand it. It's, it internalizes it. And then it becomes more of your kind of, uh, your, um, uh, uh, conscious instead of having to think about it and think about doing it right so some students might not just be ready for for some things if they if it doesn't resonate with them you think they should just come back to it later sometimes no, well i think well uh they might not be ready but it's still a valiant effort to to read and study and yeah. that's what makes i guess that's what makes one's journey what it is because you get introduced to stuff and then as you move on it, you kind of re circle back around to those ideas and that can be a really valuable experience, I think. So yeah. initiation of ideas is just as important as really internalizing them, I would argue. Yeah. But well, yeah. this is looking great. I love the richness of the red in there. That's really nice. Everybody's got a, almost a slightly different red. Yeah. You know, Stan's going a little bit more orange over here. You're like rich. This kind of yeah, a little bit orange. That's gonna stay or not? We'll see. We'll see how that goes. I this, like it. Yeah. Me, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Maybe I'll leave it. Yeah, very nice. All right, let's keep on going over here. Let's see what we got. Okay, well, that was good. Yeah, to anybody who likes reading, you know. All right, question for Ethan. What is Ethan's favorite uh, episode of uh, Avatar The Last Airbender? Oh my goodness. I think I have a... I think I might know who's asking this question. Um, my favorite episode of Avatar The Last Airbender is probably what we call Ember Island, I think it was, because of the, we really get to know the characters and uh, we're very personal. You know, that's why, I, I, I'm gonna go on a little tangent here. That's what I don't like about a lot of the storytelling these days. It's all over the place. You choose 50 million different characters and you're jumping all over the place and yada yada. And we're just losing that connection with our characters um, and their relationships with each other. That's the most important part. People say, oh, character versus story or whatever. Don't think about it as characters. Never think about, oh, I'm going to develop a character. Don't develop a character, all right? Shut up about that. What you need to do is develop relationships. Because then you're developing characters, but that's what people care about. That's what we all care about in life is what is my relationship with this other individual? That's all we're chasing, for the most part. Is that the episode where Aang goes to fire school? No. Oh, was Ember Island fire school? I don't know. No, fire school was the a few episodes before that, I think. Flamio Hotman. Hotman. Yeah, that's a really great episode, too. That was the dance party. No, Ember Island is very focused on characters' relationships. So what they do in that episode is basically, essentially what they're doing is setting characters around a fire. Very simple. All right, when we're talking about setting characters in a very limited space, we're not talking about the big world, whatever, all the world building, forget about all that. People care about the characters' relationships with one another. 
And if we're talking about simple settings, let's think about another massive show called The Office. Simple setting, it's all about characters' relationships with, with one another. What happens if we put these two characters in a room together, and then we split them up and put those two different characters in a, with other two characters? It's all about relationships. Don't get too complicated, baby. Don't make three characters in a room. Don't make four characters in a room. You can't, okay? But just chill out. Just chill out in the beginning. Put two characters, develop that relationship. That's character building. Um, and that's all that people care about. Yeah, uh, let's take a quick another little tangent, Breaking Bad. You don't go all over the place too much for the most part. We're, we're really mostly developing the two main, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the man and his son, or, you know, the man and his surrogate son type of situation. It, we, we can go on a tangent about this forever. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Ember Island is great because we're taking that essentially and really focusing on characters, relationships with one another, and, uh, it's a beautiful episode, so go rewatch that. And uh, it kind of gets me a little bit teary thinking about it. There's something to say about that, though. If you jump straight into that episode without knowing the characters first, it might not hit as hard. So that's something else you need to study as a storyteller, as a painter, or whatever, is the relationships that you're setting up prior. Because I tried to show somebody The Office, all right? I jumped into the middle of a season, and they just didn't get it. They don't understand the relationships with these characters. That's when I was like, oh, you're not laughing because you don't understand who the inside joke of whom these characters are to each other. So first, establish that relationship. Then you can start to expand on that. Uh, that's my favorite episode. And uh, I have so many other favorite episodes, probably Zuko alone, perhaps, is another one, because it's focusing on Zuko and his relationship with his grandfather and his relationship with the self. All right, we're not going to jump into that, because that's a little bit complex. You know, oh, a relationship with myself. Yeah, don't get too artsy about it, all right? But there's a little complexity in there. Relationship with himself, actually, is relationship with himself and with his vision of himself his father's vision of himself. So, anyway, it's not actually an episode about himself, with himself. It's an episode about himself, with his father's view of himself. Got it? <laughs> so it's an episode about his relationship with him and his father, essentially. Or, you know, what have you. Anyway, uh, storytelling is all. That's uh, it's Character development is all. Alright? I don't care how good you paint. And storytelling, relationships is everything. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> and in life, all right? You just got to look in life, too. That's all we care about. Um, Ethan, do you have any book recommendations to study from? Oh, gosh. Are we talking about art books? Book recommendations to study from? Oh, man. If we're talking about, I mean, if we're talking about storytelling studying, I can jump straight back into that same theory with Name of the Wind. Everybody knows that I've done this Name of the Wind uh, animatic. The book is phenomenal, and the book just blew up, and, you know, immediately everybody loved it, Name of the Wind. It's because it's focused on relationships, and also it takes its time with relationships, um, and it it's pretty simple. We stick with one character. There's not 50 million different characters. It's consumable. It's, like, for everybody, you know? You can chill and follow a character. Within those limitations, what are you going to say within those limitations? You're stuck in a box of one character's viewpoint. Now, how creative can you be in creating those relationships? So, as a storyteller, chill out. All right? Keep it simple in the beginning. Because it can get real complicated real quick. Uh, we're going to ask Stan a very important question in a second about rocks. Uh, let's see. Compo Flask says that I empathize with the amount of elements and concerns to juggle simultaneously. Uh, thank you, me? thank you for accounting. Yeah, they, you're you're very welcome. I think they're talking to me and the team, of course. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, Heather says I love Tales from Bossing Say, where the where Iroh's story is revealed between him and his son. Iroh seems like a, a comical Zen, peaceful. Yeah. Tales of Bossing Say is great. I don't 
care too much for for you know jumping back in the past you know but those are really cool tales from bossing say is beautiful very beautiful simple storytelling if you look at the structure of that um i've been actually watching a lot of uh this show called little house on the prairie from the 70s all right it's actually a very very good show i mean it was big in its day it was massive and there's something to that and if you look at it you're stuck on a, a little house on a prairie okay and it's about people's relationships with each other go watch it and you get sucked into it and then it's pretty fun it's very fun and if we're going to be talking about relationships what's the most relatable kind right with your family you get a mama papa everybody can say i can relate to that relate relationship all right is relatable everybody can relate to big mama big papa whether or not you've actually had a mother or father in your life you may have had those figures in your life because that's what we gravitate towards baby that's the most simple basic relationships we have is big mama big papa little bro little sister and that's all you got to know and we are you all already understand that all right don't make it complicated make it about family replace characters with family members that's all you got to do very simple Ah, oh, let's see what we got. I could go on about this forever. That's what my a lot of my classes are about. Yeah, uh, you don't. Um... Oh yeah, you can find my classes on Project City. We have all kinds of cool classes. ProjectCity.com. We got professional uh, entertainment classes, a storytelling, writing, music production, entertainment stuff, all kinds of wacky fun stuff from professionals in the entertainment industry oh we got a class coming up for toy design i'm talking about pro toy design like these people are they, they've never been out in public before they're like a like a caged wild animal and now they're finally released and we can hear professionals talk about how they design toys why does the why does this toy and the animation not look like the one that we see on the product in the in the store there's designs behind this there's purpose to all this you could be a toy designer if you wanted to all right it doesn't have to be for a barbie it doesn't have to be for a little poly pocket it could be for anything you want big hulk you could be a big man big strong man poly pocket what barbie oh poly pocket's good yeah barbie's good too all right okay stan what is your relationship with rocks <laughs> Do you even come back to rocks? It's not me. That's the. That's the. Either your crew is asking that, or somebody in the chat. I don't know. I don't have a relationship with rocks. <laughs> don't do. Don't do rocks like that. Can we move on? <laughs> no. So, what was your first rock that you saw, like I as broke a child? Up with rocks recently. So. What happened? I'm you broke up. With, you rocks. broke up with rocks. Yeah, rocks is not in my life anymore. What was her name? Roxy. Ro rocks. Oh, her name was rocks. Rocks. <laughs> It doesn't have a gender either. It just oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah, we 2022, were... Ethan. Come yeah. On. So She's Ethan. <laughs> what was your? Did you like? Did you actually? Because I don't know if you know this about me. I I love rocks and waterfalls, like boulders. I don't. Waterfalls I don't like pebbles. Are even better than rocks. What did you say? Waterfalls are better than rocks. Oh, okay. I think, but well, how's your relationship with waterfalls? More are you moved on to waterfalls now? Yeah. Hey, don't, go, don't go chasing waterfalls. Don't go chasing waterfalls? Okay. Are there any real questions? Yeah, there's, like, there's one up here right now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm going to ask everybody how they set up their palette. Um, sure. How are you taught, and do you still use that same method? Um, yeah, pretty much. It's, it's pretty simple, actually. Like... You have it on there? Yeah, we've, we've got glare. But oh, you it's can, really you can bad. Zones, though. You can't even see the colors. You can point to zones. You can't even you see want. any of the. No, okay. They're not even in the. Oh, that's nice. That's it. No, you, you still can't see them. But Ethan, they're can you, still come, not can you in go that. a little bit closer to it? Straight All of these out. colors back here are not even in the frame. There they are. So it's basically. So the light can fall. There you go. So I start with white and then I move over or go from yellow all the way through the color wheel to green and then green would go back to yellow. So it's, um, these are, you know, yellow, then ochre, then it starts warming up a little bit to my, my browns, red, uh, permanent alizarin, ultramarine, cerulean, viridian. And so because it's organized through the color wheel, I know exactly where to go to reach for a color. Um, 
I always put a lot of white. Yeah, and that's it, you know? And then I just have a bunch of puddles of Do you paint. pre-mix? I do a little bit white? sometimes. You pre-mix? A little bit, not not too much. Um, yeah, it depends. Like, if I'm actually doing a limited palette, like Zorn or something, I'll probably pre-mix even more. What's a, what do you, what's it, Zorn? Is that like- Zorn is uh, basically, Zorn. you would, you'd have white, ochre, red, and then like a black, sometimes a blue black, oh. and that's it. So you just have those four colors and two of them are black and white. So really you have ochre and red. Oh, okay. And then to cool things off, you add white and black and it'll bring it back down to gray. Um, and if I have that palette, I will pre-mix my green, which is just uh, ochre plus black and white. Yeah. And that's as, that's pretty much as green as you can get with that palette. And I'll pre-mix my purple, which is red plus black mm. plus white. Okay. And so I can get the purest of those, which are not even that bright, right? It's a very muted purple, very muted green, but I wanna pre-mix my full range there. And then I'll pre-mix shades of red and yellow and white. Okay. gradations of those so that I could just go to them real fast while I'm painting. You got like a whole flipping rainbow right here. Is this how you teach your students? Kind of. I don't have any oranges and stuff. Is this how you teach your students though? Would you say it's easier or best for them to start with a limited palette first? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I would say start with burn umber pickout. So you just have burn umber. Okay. Or I mean any kind of brown pickout. You could, I mean, you could do any, any blue pick out, whatever you want. Like, make sure it's a dark color though. Like, you could do ultramarine pick out, and, and but you gotta, you want to make sure you can get like a pretty dark value in there with just a pure pigment, um, and no white. You're just, it's like drawing. The more pigment on the canvas, the darker it is. The more pencil, <laughs> graphite you have on the canvas on the paper, the darker it is. And so, if you want to lighten something, you just take some off with a Q-tip, with your finger, whatever. Uh, paper towel, and you're just drawing with that pigment. Then you can move on to burn umber and white. And so now you're introducing temperature as well, because white will cool off the burn umber. Um, okay. So you can have cold areas, and, the, and you can have the warm areas where the burn umber is. Um, and so now you're you're learning how to mix value and temperature, but it's still extremely simple, just two two colors. Then you can move on to something like Zorn, which is four colors, yeah. or four paints, but really only two colors in there. Um, and then you start going into some more complicated things like warm, cool primary, yeah. where you have the three primaries, a warm and a cool version of each, plus white, um, and then just unlimited palette, which is okay. kind of what I have here, which is like whatever. Okay, so I have a question specifically for me. I'm going to be a little bit selfish here. Yep. I've been painting digitally for a long time. I understand shape. I understand design, all this. I can basically, I can do everything that you can do here, mm -hmm. except I don't know how to mix the paint and get, like, I know, yeah. like, oh, you know what? I know what color I want right there. I just don't know how to then learn this new medium of mixing and stuff. How long yeah. does this, not including all the other stuff, if you could guess, how long does it take to understand how to mix properly and get the color you want? It's a constant struggle. I don't know. Like, I noticed, so I don't paint very much anymore. Huh. Like, I, I go months without painting, right? And I noticed that, like, the first thing that I lose is not actually things on the canvas. Like, I could still put a pull a good stroke. I could still, you know draw the land good on my, my canvas, whatever. It's here that I, I'm just like foggy all of a sudden after not painting for a few months. No, you're doing great, man. Well, I've been practicing for the past few months. I'm like, I'm, I'm not foggy right now, oh, okay. but, because I've been preparing for this. Okay. But like, I noticed when I first got back into it like a few months ago, I was like, oh my God, like I just can't mix the right color. Like the muscle memory of just being able to just like put my hand where it's supposed to be and grab the right color, yeah. it's just gone. Um, uh, so it's have, interesting, like it, it disappears. I've almost experienced that, right? Where you're like, uh, it needs to be a little bit more saturated, desaturated. And then you could almost, you found yourself grabbing that color, just like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm already here. I'm grabbing, like, I wasn't even thinking about it. I went cooler or, you know, warmer without even thinking about it. And you're, yeah. you're back in that stride. Yeah, and it's taking me longer to get to the right color. Cause it's like a sports about... guy. Like, are you back in yeah. the stride? You're like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm finally back at it, you know? Yeah, my mind's in the game. Um, 
yeah and it's not just about uh reaching for the right color it's how much do you, do you grab of it too yeah right it's just like wait do, like a 20 percent difference and i have to now go back and read you know go mix reach for another color to undo what i just did i'm just constantly going back and forth until i narrow in on that color i need okay but yeah i mean mixing mixing is it's just one more thing did it take years to would it take years for me to get to this point it depends on where you're starting from you probably not because you've already got a lot of experience on how color is supposed to to act i was learning how to mix color before i even knew how to draw so i was like struggling with a hundred different things i didn't even know if i was mixing the right color yeah at that time you'll know when you hit it yeah okay so it yeah it really depends on where you're at if you have experience digital painting you, you had said okay. that you were practicing for a couple months. Thanks for this event? Yeah, well, once a week. Okay. What, it's what, not like a... What do I have us here right now? What's the total we're at right now? What's that? Like, I'm trying to prompt you to tell people where we're at. Where, where, <laughs> where are you pointing at? Huh? What are you pointing at? There oh, go. yeah, let's take a look. <laughs> Almost at 22,000. Yeah. Woo! Wow. If, if people wanted to donate, where would they go? Froga.com slash Ukraine. To donate. All these paintings are for sale, plus a bunch of other things, a lot of paintings and mentorship sessions. Go to, yeah, go go donate and buy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you can actually get something back from donating. Mm -hmm. Is there is, any <laughs> of these courses or anything you think that would uh, help people with that? Uh, uh, I'm all, all of them. Stuff? If they're not gonna help people, we're not gonna put them up. <laughs> yeah, all, all of these paintings will help you as well okay. that they're seeing. <laughs> Yeah, look at that. The Leon original is right there. Wait, why is there no price? What is so I wouldn't this? have to change it when they got sold. Oh, <laughs> oh, this isn't the actual page. You, you just made this scrolling video. Okay, yeah, th yeah. this isn't the actual page. <laughs> There's also probably a bunch of stuff we added in the past two days that you're not even seeing on screen right now. So yeah, go to progacom slash Ukraine. Everything's up on there, including the schedule for this week. Yeah. We, we have like, I don't know, well, is it like 15 streams going on yeah, the next there was, there was three one days? This morning that was happening at the yeah. same time as us doing this. Yeah. It was a little earlier, but. Yeah. Wait, was it a third one? Or was no, you no, talking no. about Andrew? Yeah, the one that was real early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah, but we got like 15 more coming this week, guys. Yeah. Uh, Clear your schedules. It's going to be a busy week for you. Because <laughs> I know you're going to watch all of them. Are you hosting all of them? I'll be hosting these and then. I'll be uh, just eating the food that y'all provide here. <laughs> so uh, I have a bunch of new ideas about streams just doing this, like some really entertaining, fun stuff. What would you think about, you know, one of those dudes that uh, do the, not rodeo, but like the auctioning, yeah. those dudes? Could Are you get one of those dudes in here and just... Uh, and and you do speed paintings like really, really fast. And he's just <laughs> the whole time. He's the whole time. He's like <laughs> coming in and like comment, that'd be commenting. Fun. Yeah? Do you think it'd be stressful? It would be very stressful. It would have to be really fast. Yeah, it might not be as stressful as just you making fun of me all day. Oh, well, maybe it would be me. <laughs> oh, so, oh, that would so be... you're just making fun of me faster. That'd be so funny <laughs> if we could find... <laughs> that'd be funny if we could find one that's like fast at yeah. uh, roasting everybody. Oh that, oh, that'd be perfect. Yeah. I don't care if the painting sucks. That'd, just, yeah. that'd be a fun event. That would be really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, throw up. Yeah, let's ask kind of question. Ooh. Yeah. How do you feel about this question? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll walk over here and ask you. All right. So, uh, tips on not mudding the colors into a brown mush when mixing early on. Did, did, did you ever do that? Oh yeah, I still do <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. But, um, obviously having a clean brush to mix with or clean a uh, clean palette knife clean paint um, and not mix too many colors um, at once you know so I think the more you um, paint with like limited palettes you get used to you understand what those mixtures are yeah so that's why we start with such limited palettes and then slowly build because you understand those colors and how they work together um, and then you start introducing more colors so yeah, um, but as far as while you're painting, get it not having muddy color is constantly knowing the color that's on your brush. <laughs> mm. So so often I see people like just putting, you know, they assume their brush is dirty or they and they grab a color 
um, and they forget what's on there and then they you know they put it down because they just want to be painting but to really know what color is on your brush and making sure you have a clean brush and a clean mixture um, it's like it's that simple but for whatever reason it's really hard to do. <laughs> if I had to guess, if I'm looking at it from a student's perspective, as a student, my major issue was, I was just like, eh, maybe. I could maybe do this, maybe do that. The thing that I was missing as a student was decision of like, I'm deciding, I know what I'm trying to get. I know what color I'm trying to get, as opposed to maybe I'll mix this and maybe I'll do this and like kind of fiddling around with it. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Do you see yeah, students do that? it's a mix of maybe and just being lazy. Ooh. And I mean, and I, we all do it like I know like so like I'm out of alizarin right now and I, I, it's right there and I'm just avoiding it getting it <laughs> like using anything near don't look at that <laughs> but it's so dumb but every almost every painter I talk to they have the same issue it's like just do what you're supposed to do but for whatever reason while we're in the mode you know you're like oh, it might just work and it, a lot of times things might work but it never looks as good as if you get the right color, the right value, you know, yeah. a clean mixture. So that makes sense. Uh, yeah, that, again, that was my biggest issue as a student was just not I was just, maybe being a little bit lazy because it is taxing. It's constantly right. taxing to make decisions. It's like that question of, oh, hey, where do you want to go out to eat? It's like that you have to make that decision. And that in itself is taxing for me and this is constantly, if you want to do it right, it's constantly finding problems and finding the solutions on the spot constantly. Uh, yeah. And it's- Painting is problem solving, yeah. but that's why it's so important to develop good habits. So then if you have the habit of mixing the right color, making sure your brush, brush is clean, um, then you know, then it's like, it just comes, it's just na nature, hum you know, it just na comes naturally. But painting is, is tough. Like it's constantly problem sol solving, constantly mixing, thinking. Yeah. It's when you stop like really thinking and flowing, which is sometimes nice and you can't help it. Like it's a meditative kind of just go, you lose the track of time, but you, you should always be <laughs> thinking. Um, and then you're tired after, <laughs> so. Yeah. Yep, that's, that's how it goes and you need your rest. Yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna stay on the, gonna stay on this there, painting. There was a, we left one earlier that we can check back in on. There's a the color conversation Color conversation with Leon. Oh, let's do that. Yeah. Color convo with Leon. Let's get into color here. Oh no, we just moved camera from Leon, didn't we? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, let's throw in a comment about Stan's tag. Let's see if we can get that tag back in a minute. Oh, uh-oh, where'd it go? Uh, I'll bring it back out later. Wow, what a cool shot. Like, move out of the way a little bit, Stan. Look at that shot. That's so cool. I love that. Wait, which one's the model and which one's the painting? I don't know. Oh, man. That's really cool. I love that. I love being able to jump in back, for back and forth and to see where like what you were saying before, where you decided to chisel something out and that it doesn't exist technically, and where, you know. She the... looks sad in my painting. Oh, are you, are, you, are you feeling sad tones from her? No, it's, I, I don't see it when I look at my painting, but when I look at the monitor, she yeah. looks sad. I'm gonna have to fix that. Uh, could be the way the light's hitting the, the paint, right? Yeah, yeah, cause like the strokes on here, yeah. No, yeah. she looks sad. All right. All right, Leon, do you want to do you want to talk right now or are you busy? No, no, no. I just want to lower this. Oh, okay. So what well, what else do you see from looking at a monitor versus your painting? Does that really helps? Yeah, let's see what else. Um Those flowers are getting really big. <laughs> Keep them big, man. I like I like the big like, flower. When I look at her, the flowers are kind of small around her hair. On my painting, they're just like giant. I like that. Though. You like nice. it? Should I just keep that? That's so cool. Okay, yeah. sure. It's Maybe, like a crown. It's beautiful. Let's let's do a little vote in the audience. Yeah, Maybe. let's do a vote. Do we want to keep the do we want to keep the flowers smaller and realistic, or do we want Stan to make those flowers big?
do we keep do I keep the giant flowers on her head or go more towards what it's was actually up there? Vote in the chat. Yeah, they're voting. And I will do as you say. Is a, I think Coco TV is someone in there. Coco TV. Uh, they they yeah. can put up a poll. A poll? Paul. Yeah. Oh, Paul. hey. Paul is saying, I like the addition of the yellow in Proko's paintings. It seems new. The red. Bigger is better, baby. Keep it big. <laughs> bigger Keep bigger. the flowers. Big flower. Okay. That, that's like five votes already. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> big, it's nice. big. Keep them big. Keep them stand. Bigger. Oh, shit. Bigger? Someone's getting creative. <laughs> Keep them big. Yeah, it's pretty much giant flowers. Giant. Okay. More flowers. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Appreciate more flower, it. More all right, so uh, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about color. You want to? Is there a specific question, or do you, or do you want me just to talk about color? Well, whenever you start, because um, we know you jumped into charcoal first, and then somebody was saying, you know, color is last, but it, it all kind of works together, right? Value, color. Right. So. Um, so again, I think the more we paint, the more we understand that we don't paint subject matter like faces or trees or clouds. Mm -hmm. We paint uh, shapes, right? And we learn how to design these shapes. Shadow, uh, pattern of light pattern of shadow pattern of half tone pattern of reflective light right so <clears throat> that's why usually in art schools they teach light logic first so that we talk about so we are on the same page with terminology of uh, different different things that happen in light different things that happen in shadow uh, so and if we talk about shadow we usually agree that there's three types of shadows there's form shadow reflective light cast shadow uh, in light usually we just say that there's a uh, lighter half tone and darker half tone and highlight right so we kind of have three different things happening in a light three different things happening in the shadow uh, now the key to painting is to create constant variety. So what you want to do is you want to art education or color theory. You can think of it as a tool, a mechanism of generating variety, generating not just contrast, endless variety of edges, color, uh, because we know that uh, the model is infinitely complex right and right. there's no two spots that are lit in the same value and have the same color yeah so it's it's you can observe it intuitively like you could see you can open your eyes and see like oh yeah this is a little bit lighter this is a little bit darker this is a little bit cooler this is a little bit warmer but our minds are too lazy and and can't focus enough so that's why it helps to have a system of generating variety generating complexity and the system is if we know that there's three different things happening in, in uh, light logic in, in difference between light and shadow so when you comes to color uh, you also have to w when you jump from one area to another you have to change temperature and you have to change color so for example uh i can show you this so we have warm light cool shadow right so most of of this you see that this is warm light cool shadow right if we talk about shadow we have different things happening we have form shadow reflective light cast shadow so in this case we'll have kind of well, I see warmer form shadow, cooler reflective light, warmer cast shadow. So, so when I look at the shadow pattern itself, when I look at the shape, when I look at this complicated shape, I already have ideas how to complicate, how to find difference between 
patterns of form shadow, patterns of reflective light, and patterns of cast shadow. Does it make sense? Yeah, like warm, cool, warm, cool. Yeah, so basically, exactly. So just in the shadow, uh, form shadow is warm, reflective light is cool, uh, cast shadow is warm. And then when I jump from one pattern to another, I'm also going to change the color a little bit. So here, for example, you see uh, warmer, darker purple in form shadow, lighter, cooler, greener, reflective light, and maybe softer, warmer, but not as hot as the form shadow and the cast shadow. It seems like it's all based on recognizing patterns and and understanding, like, you don't have to be everywhere at once. You can start to recognize those patterns and follow that. I would say that there's infinite complexity in life, but you can you can put together a system that will help you break it down yeah. and generalize it a little bit yeah. so that on one hand it gives you variety on the other hand it reminds you of the changes that will occur whether you see them or not right so for example like if you get tired and you just see the shadow as one color or value your kind of the, the slight logic should tell you wait a minute pay attention between difference between form shadow reflective light cast shadow and then once you remember that then you're like oh i gotta see that difference so whether i see it or not i will implement that difference does it make sense yeah just to help design out chisel out your to bring complexity and variety, to bring information. You try to saturate this form with information. Mm. If we won't move to the light, we have pretty much um, lighter, warmer half tones, and then darker, cooler half tones, right? So because warm colors come forward, cool colors recede. So we're trying to organize the volume or turn of the face uh by placing the right temperature half tones in the right spot okay. right and so we know one rule we know is that warm colors come forward cool colors recede uh, then on top of that we can apply uh this idea of planes of the head right so there's there are details there are nuances like eyes nose lips but there's also volume that's based on skeleton and based on uh, a sorrow head, which helps us understand how to structure the face, how to find structure, even regardless whether we see it or not. Well, can you explain to me then, like you're saying, cool recedes, warm, warm is coming towards us, yeah. and in some paint, painting styles, you know. In all painting styles. Well, yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm saying in some painting styles I've seen, they do the shadows in warm so in warmer tones so how do you go about do you just stick to that pattern then great question it all depends on the lighting situation so natural light indirect light source so indirect light source when we have uh overcast or for example we have a window it's always going to be cool light warm shadow always mm. direct light source like sunlight or direct uh artificial light uh well, okay, let's say all sunlight is going to be warm light, cool shadow. And in our case, our artificial lamp makes it look, makes our light warmer and shadows cooler. So it, to answer your question, it depends on your lighting situation. Well, what if the, the lighting is this way or natural and you're deciding at this point in your career that you can do the warmer shadows? And uh, so how is that going to balance? Meaning you just want to switch? Yeah, no, but maybe not switch. It's too complicated. It's too complicated. You, you can't, can't do warm shadows and a if, warmer if tone on the face. If you clearly cool light, warm shadows, you can't do the opposite. Well, you can, but it's going to be awkward. It's just, it's, you know, just change the lighting. Why would you want to do yeah. that? You know, just put a put a light that, that you desire. Okay. Right. So what I'm trying to say is that Colors are complex, but there's a system how to organize it so that you can solve it. 
right? So you can solve the volume of the forehead, you can solve the volume of the cheeks, you can solve the volume of the chin um, and create volume going from left to right. And then also composition makes important part. You know, you can think of a face as a still life, right? We have a surface of a table and we have some apples. That's how details of the face should stand out in front of the face. So obviously eyes, nose and lips have to protrude forward beyond the information that you put in the face, right? And obviously information that you put in the face should stand in front of the information that you put in the, in the um in the background so not only there is logic of how to create volume but there's also a very specific logic how to subordinate information it's all about this side this whole painting you know it's all about detail number one kind of this eye is supporting this detail number, then is detail number two three for insertion of the neck to the shoulders detail number five and as i finish i ask i put this information but i ask myself is this information distracts from detail number one two three four five okay right those are your priorities right it's it's this academic way of resolving uh composition right because we're our vision is target-based vision we're, uh, we're predators back in the day. So we, we see things in the focus. Uh, we see, we, we target-based vision. We see something in focus um, and it's usually a very small object. And then as attention radiates out, it gets less and less uh, specific, right? So that, so, if you render everything with the same degree of completion, it will look unnatural, it will look fake. Yeah. It, like photorealism looks like um, kind of, it, will, it looks fake, it looks unnatural because everything is rendered at the same degree, right? It doesn't follow the natural way of seeing things. So that's why academically speaking, we want to decide what's going to be detail number one two three four five and make sure that everything else has a lot less attention yeah right so it doesn't compete with our focal point and nice thing about this is that this is academic training but it works exactly the same in all styles abstract painting impressionism post impression any any style you take it's the same rules mm. right so you can look at Kandinsky, you can look at Malevich and you'll see the same uh, uh, rules applied to, uh, in the artwork. Yeah, it's very interesting seeing it on the monitor versus this. For what, I, what has helped me as a student to notice is the, the patterns of the tip, roughly the same color that you're using. Can I can I grab this yeah, right here? I'm not gonna touch I'm not yeah, gonna touch the painting, but yeah. the repetition of this uh -huh. color to this, to this, it's all the same one, as the same way as, you know, obviously, you know, the cheek here. If I blur my vision, these two are standing out as the same type of orange. Mm -hmm. And also within here, this uh, purple-ish, you know, desaturation mm -hmm. within there and in there and in there, which is also following this pattern of the shadow there. And some in here, so if I blur my vision, I can pick out one, two, three this cool mm -hmm. um are you, are you whenever you grab your brush and you you know put your uh put mm -hmm. paint on the brush you are you hitting those spots specifically with that color or are you just all over the place mm -hmm. well know? yeah i try to maybe group i try to group them together in patterns mm -hmm. and then ideally towards the end i would want to find the difference between this this and this pattern i would want to find difference between this this and this color so i kind of bring them to uh general kind of like uh separate to general uh separate them in general patterns and then find variety within that as well there's a lot of variety in this for me i tried to pick maybe three three of those varieties especially when i'm first starting out right you have that orange that i point out on the cheeks you have the desaturation on the the left side of the face mm -hmm. you have that the 
brighter, that uh, tan of the, you know, uh, the light. And then also you have the pink. And then you have, not to mention, the, the blues coming in here under the eyes mm -hmm. and under the nose right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. There's so many different colors in there, uh, right. as opposed to, for me, I do three to four. Right. Um, like you're saying, you're finding a lot of variety. It's, whenever I look at it in the monitor, it starts to really come together because of a compression of the camera. Right. But in person, looking at it here, it looks like a rainbow. There's so many different colors, but they're all working together in harmony. Do you do you ever like limit, you know, or do you are you painting just what you see? Because there's so many different patterns and groupings, but there's a there's a lot of different colors in there. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. I think it's a good question. I think it then it comes down to kind of aesthetics, um, and personal taste. I think if you like color, that's what you pull out. Color. If you love edges that's what you're gonna accentuate and different artists are experts at different things you know for example if you love uh, color you're not gonna go and look at early sergeants for example right because it's gonna be so conservative it's so conservative his later work when he uh, gave up on portraiture uh, commission portrait. well not gave up he's just was fed up with it and then he painted with uh, um, Monet, uh, uh, in the mountains and, and just kind of went to travel in, uh, down south to Italy you see a totally different painter you see somebody who's just like Soroya vibrant fresh uh, uh, very lively and and I think that's the kind of painter he wanted to be uh, so I think uh, to answer that I, I, I think we all have our favorites you know great masters like Velasquez, uh, Rembrandt, Goya, um, El Greco and, and I think you look at their best work and you try to understand well what's their best work all about so if, if these great masters really valued, for example, color, maybe that's what I, what I want to pursue. I mean, it could be composition, it could be something else, but, but pulling out this variety of color and uh, complexity, I think brings kind of joy and excitement yeah. to this artwork, which makes it a pleasure to look at which you know brings uh, I don't know beauty to the to this work and uh, and I think that's uh, what I try to concentrate on it is definitely very complex but 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 it's it, it definitely feels like it's full of life like you're saying the uh, it's not like I wouldn't con would, would anybody would early sergeant's work be considered monochromatic to you? No, well, not... I mean, you look at early Velasquez's work and they look just so rigid and uh, almost two-tone colors. Uh, yeah, just like very brown. It's, it's a lack of experience and they're both genius and both uh, incredible painting, painters, even when they're 18, 20, 24. But when you compare the quality of work in their beginning and versus later work, you see totally different painters. So <clears throat> we start, we, we need to start with something. And usually people start with graphic um, language, right? So light logic. And then slowly we put in color or expression or or composition, whatever, whatever each painter finds important to concentrate on. Um, yeah. and I, and I love, just color. love color. I like color, yeah, and um, I um, want to explore it. So, yeah, but I also want to find, for me personally, so for me also it's, it's important to find a language 
that will be contemporary, that will be that won't be too academic and will be fun to look at. F well, fun, okay, it's very um, simple word. Would be relevant. You know, we live in a new age with uh, short attention span, and nobody has more uh, attention than. Them. 20 seconds. I mean, this conversation yeah. is probably going to bore the hell out of people. Uh, sorry? People in the chat love it. Oh, great. Keep going. All right. um, but, but so, so we, I mean, we constantly look, look at our phones, right? And we're just conditioned to like or dislike something in like an instance, right? And for somebody to uh, study a surface for a minute, a two, an hour, two hours, or I don't know, even more. It's just so rare. So I think that's an important part of looking at artwork is just how our modern generation sees it. You know, are they bored to death with it? Just from the complexity or variety or or it feels natural it feels good yeah. it, it's interesting it's interesting i don't have an answer to that but i definitely i am aware of that that i can't i i'm trying to keep it expressive and i'm trying to have a lot of fun elements to look at uh and then slip academic kind of language and knowledge in this as much as possible as well yeah that's amazing we're gonna let you get back to it uh and we'll be watching you but yeah let's let's ask let's ask him a question really quick yeah oh yeah <laughs> why does ethan look like a kid next to leon i am a little kid next to leon you know i'm just step <laughs> I just look up to him in so many ways. Uh, yeah, who are your favorite masters? If you could pick one, who would it be? I love El Greco. El Greco is just mind blowing. I mean, I I started out with two, Dali and Caravaggio, and I still ate just absolutely blown away by Caravaggio. By the way, if you want to see Caravaggio, you have to go to Rome and you have to see it in the churches where the uh, where it was originally commissioned because when you see the stuff that he got away in the churches it's just mind-blowing how much of a genius he was but El Greco he has this uh, he was expressionist in Rena you know like an early Renaissance and and it's just he there's a few painters that predicted all styles uh, in their career. Like you could say uh, Velasquez was like the first impressionist or expressionist and definitely El Greco. When you, when you look at some, not all, there's a lot of like repeats, but I would say there's 10 paintings that El Greco did, 10 out of 100 or hundreds that just looks so modern, so sincere, so powerful that uh, it's hard to beat that with anything else. So, um, yeah, we'll have to take a look at those then. Uh, I bet you a lot of people don't don't know who those masters are. Yeah, put your favorite masters uh, painters, like old school painters, in the chat, and we'll we'll see if uh, and we will see if anybody if anybody uh, knows them. Ethan, can we see your dog? Yeah, we can bring my dog in here in a second. I think we should do an interview with your dog. Like, put him on the oh, chair. Yeah, we could do an interview with the dog. And and chair. just uh, and just see what, what he thinks about this. Yeah, we could ask him what he thinks. Oh, is he hungry? Oh, okay. All right. Well, in that case, I'm going to go feed my dog. And uh, we'll let somebody else take over here for a second. All right. Here we go. Thank you, sir. All right, I'll be back. Cool. Good yeah. luck. Yeah. See you in a bit. Cool. I guess I'm I'm the I'm the guy now. I'm I'm the dude. Hi, uh, uh, how's it going, Josh? Nice. Cool. Um, 
Uh, I guess a lot of people are asking about Ethan's dog. Yeah. Here, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Um, does anyone else, does anyone have any questions? Lauren, do you have any questions? Cool. Okay. Um, how do you feel about Winton? Do you paint in Winton at all, Leon? Uh, colors? Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, Winton paints. I, I guess the question is more about student grade um, yeah, paints. Student yeah. I, I think big deal is gesso. I would really make sure that you have a good gesso on your canvas. Yeah. I find good quality gesso is more important than like incredible uh, expensive colors yeah. there is a difference you know there's a difference between saturation of sennelier colors and georgian colors there's a difference but but for me more important is uh, good gesso and i would recommend golden yeah. brand they're just regular acrylic gesso it's just when you don't have a good gesso you put a coat and it will gray it will go dark and gray yeah. when it dries right. and you literally have to repaint the entire painting yeah. and uh, that's just too much work right. so my suggestion that if you're going to save on something buy cheap muds uh, earth tone sienna's umbers um, um, ochres blacks buy cheap muds yeah. Uh, spend your money on uh, turquoise, oranges, Indian yellow. Discover Indian ye yellow for yourself. Indian yellow is just like a whole chapter. If you guys paint, Indian yellow will kind of start Change. a new period in your life. Change your life. Yes. Um, because it's so good. It's so complex. You can put it into blues. You can put it into. It, it explodes in the light. It it complicates yellows, reds, anything. It's just it's amazing color. And oh, and if you buy Indian yellow, get it from the Win Windsor Newton. Um, yeah, it's like forty bucks for a big tube, but it's worth it. Um, but then, but then you can save again. You can save on. I think ultramarine blue. Pretty much everyone's got ultramarine good, blue. Pretty good. You can save on that. You can buy it from Georgian. You can buy it from Student Grade. Black, Sienna's, Umbers, Ochres. You can buy it from Student Grade uh, manufacturers. Uh, if you can invest your money, invest it in um, warm oranges, turquoise. Indian yellow, maybe uh, rich uh, reds. Avoid, I would recommend avoiding Naples, col okay. Naples colors. Anything like Naples this or Naples that, I would try to avoid that. Um, I actually, I have a question. Uh, so uh, I was talking to Stan and he was telling me that you guys had ran into each other at the airport. Yeah. And uh, do you want to talk about how you guys came up with the idea for the stream? Uh, I think originally we were discussing it with Natalia um, that she when she um, came back we um, talked about uh, not 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 I'm sorry not when she came but we I think we talked about before that even before that we were talking about well maybe we should do a portrait maybe we should do a show maybe we should do something and then accidentally i ran into stan at the airport yeah and i was just like well first of all i haven't seen stan in years 300 years probably yeah. uh and then i so we just like chatted and he was going somewhere and um i was like hey what if we put together this thing to help yeah. you create? it was from the start it was this idea to raise money do a portrait uh bring a bunch of people together but do it through a positive experience yeah it's it's a terrible when you i read the news 
from you know every morning and before I go to bed and the situation doesn't get better and, and it's really depressing and if you're involved especially if you have relatives and friends and um, involved in the zone it, it's it's terrible it's it's very hard to be positive about this yeah yeah but hopefully with this we can help uh, ukraine but we can also be be uplifting and positive about the whole experience and yeah. learning the process and uh and i think that that's a productive way of kind of getting over this very difficult time in our lives absolutely a lot of people are really affected by this yeah it, it's incredible when you watch the video and see how devastating war is in ukraine you know it's it's just it's insane that it's happening in our lifetime right now yeah and um and it could be too much it could be overwhelming so i think concentrating on something positive is uh, very important. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm going to move on to Natalia Fabian and see. Hey, Natalia, uh, when are you going to shave your head? <laughs> <laughs> How much money would it take? Uh, didn't we talk about this yesterday? Uh, 50 grand. Probably. Okay, $50,000? Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow, okay. All right, well, if somebody wants to see Natalia Fabia shave her head, uh, $50,000. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, if they want to put it up, that yeah, would yeah. be interesting. Okay, cool. Um, well, do you want to talk a little bit about your? Have we talked about your materials at all? Like, do you what kind of brand do you use? What kind of brushes? That sort um, of thing. Well, I work with a lot of brands, and yeah. I've only brands that I like truly love. Yeah. So right now, most of my brushes are Trakel, um, yeah. and I put out a brush line with them, and I really truly nice. love their. Trakel is awesome. Yeah, they're affordable, and they really care about making good quality brushes and what yeah. artists want you know yeah, so absolutely. they worked with me for a while back and forth to make these like um fancy uh well, i can't see because there's paint all over it but yeah. these kind of mimic the um badger and or, or like squirrel brushes they're like really yeah. soft the natural hair brushes but these are synthetic so right. i that was important to me to make it all synthetic because i'm vegan and right you know um and right now i work with sennelier who I love. Um, I think they make nice buttery paint. Yeah. Well, I, I guess a common question that a lot of our students ask is about materials. And I think a lot of the common response to that is it's not necessarily about materials, it's about the skills and, you know, how you think. Um, how, how, do you have any thoughts on that? Or Yeah. I mean... Obviously, materials help. Yeah. They help, but um, you don't need... Um, I don't know who you were talking about this with yesterday, but you don't need like the fancy brush or the special this or that. Like you need to work on your skill, but having decent quality things yeah. work. Like I do agree with Leon, like, like I always tell, I mean, my father, for example, he might be watching this, but he, he buys really cheap canvases. Yeah. And I'm like, you're wasting all the good paint because the canvas absorbs and that's so much time that you're putting in, like just covering area. So even, fine, buy a crappy canvas, but get a good quality gesso, yeah. put a couple coats on there, um, and then you're not wasting paint. So it's like, if you want, sometimes people sacrifice one thing, they buy a cheap canvas, they have nice paint, So right. but then they're wasting their paint. Absolutely. Or they have a nice canvas and they have crappy paint and like, some some not all but some student grade paints um have so much medium in them you end up using double the amount you may as well buy right. a nicer one but like what leon said actually is true like the earthy tones are you right. can kind of get away with those um student grade and then once you get into the higher quality pigments you know using the nicer brands because of course they're going to actually use more concentrated pigment um, but you don't need a lot. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, I, I've also heard this. Uh, people say this, too, where if you invest into your supplies and your education, you're going to be more likely to take yourself more seriously. Yes, and use more paint. Yeah. Too often you see people using, like, little tiny dabs right. of paint. They're, like, trying to save their paint. Like, who is it? I think Casey um, Child says, like, paint like a millionaire. Yeah. You know? Yeah, right. Um, and, I mean, if you're really worried, you can start, like, at Watts, didn't they tell people to use, like, clove oil? Oh, yeah. To keep it wet. I, don't, I get scared of that because then my painting, I've smeared a whole painting. But um, you can put, you know, you paint into, like, little Tupperware and put it in the freezer or your palette in the freezer to try to save it. Right. 
But you're going to use, if you want to paint, you're going to be wasting a lot of paint. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, just yeah, it. Yeah. <clears throat> That's yeah. just part of the investment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, part of the 10,000 hours, you're probably going to exactly. spend a lot of money. Yeah, so maybe you have your limited palette. Buy, like, bigger tubes. Um, yeah. You can just gesso piece, some pieces of, of board. Yeah. You know, you don't have to invest right. in the crazy high-quality linen. Of course, the more the better you get, and, like, when you start playing with nicer materials, some are pretty yeah. magical. Oh, absolutely. But they're yeah. not going to make you a better painter. Yeah, you have yeah. to have that yeah. skill. Nothing's going to make you a million times better. Yeah, one, well, it, it, you know, uh, it really depends on artist to artist, and I think it's important to find out what, what works for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I remember yeah. I, was, I was talking to Meadow Gist about this. Uh, she was I can't remember who she was taking a workshop with, but she was... It was one of the famous planar painters, and mm -hmm. he only used Winton paint or something to, to do all of his paintings. And he said it, that's just the thing that worked best for him. That's great. Yeah. yeah, and that's affordable. And if it works for him and he's getting nice colors, then who cares? He's probably using a lot more concentrated too. You have to know, like, are you the kind of person who wants a lot of medium and thinner, yeah. you know, and play around? Sometimes, like, I was travel. I had to go to Mexico, and I wasn't able to bring any thinner with me. I thought I could buy some there. I couldn't find any, so I was forced to not use any. But it was a blessing, because then I learned how to paint with just paint, you know. And I realized, wow, I was using way too much thinner, which actually breaks up the paint. And um, then the next subsequent layers you add on don't stick as well. So yeah. that was hu huge. Um, but yeah, some people only paint on one surface. I love experimenting with surfaces. Um, I don't think you should be like tied into one thing. I mean, it's okay if there's one thing that works and you love it, but it's good to experiment too. So. Uh, yeah. Cool. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you to your painting, and I'll I'll be back. Okay. Sure. Oh, I, I I was I was pointing in that direction, but uh, I'll, I'll come over and, and ask you the uh, question about the materials. No, 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 it's totally fine. No. I'm, I'm, well, uh, okay. Well, uh, do you want to talk about your materials at all? <laughs> um, sure. Yeah. You just need fingers to paint and nothing. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> dirt, dirt. You need a uh, you know, dirt and mud. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's true. It's that's true. true. That's yeah. true. And um, I, I need to work on that one because I. What? Gloves. You know, I can't. P I, I tried with gloves. It uh, annoys me so much. Yeah. I can't, and um, I I need to yeah, to change my. It, it. I don't know if I will be able to do this. Um, it's like uh, changing the whole lifestyle or and who you are. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But um, I. I use different um, because I paint for people on different surfaces. Uh, I usually uh, n need to have all range, uh, starting from enamels to outdoor paint to concrete paint to inside paint, in indoor paint. Which um, um, yeah, I, I agree with Natalia and with what Leon says that. Uh, mm, mm, it doesn't uh, matter as much what. Um, what tools and materials you have as much how you use it yeah and yes well it, it's really mm. cool seeing how you use texture and obviously different brushes and knife palettes and stuff and mm. you know it's cool seeing the results you get with a really wide variety of materials yes. and, uh, mm. I mean do you experiment a lot with everything with that you use yeah. no I, I don't really uh, experiment much I just go with the what I feel and, and what I have yeah. available um, yeah, I don't spend, I don't spend a lot of money on my materials. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and I mm -hmm. think that's totally reasonable as well. So mm -hmm. again, I, I think it's finding again whatever works best for you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kind of leaning into that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, um, there are so many useful tools right now, which, uh, uh, for example, in Ukraine, we don't have as much uh, access to. to Special mediums and special uh, thinners and special um, lacquers and uh, all kinds of different tools, which I so much enjoy here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah being here and having access to it and yeah. yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, are there any materials that you're really?
excited about trying out. Yes. Yes. Um, I don't work much with acrylics, but um, I always um, um, like tempted to buy different like um, uh, add, adding add, um, adding um, substances for acrylics that um, uh, make it or thinner, or thicker, or um, textured, or yeah, it's yeah. this is what I like. But yeah, when I was a student, I did my own. <laughs> Paints. Yeah, you did. You made your own paints. I made my own paints. That's paint. so cool. It That's was awesome. horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I loved to paint big paintings, right. yeah. and having like mm, very little money, yeah. mm, I would buy yeah, the, mm, the pigments and just mix it with oil and uh, and use it as much as possible. Yeah. And uh, right now I look at this and think, oh my god. What did I do? Yeah, well, that's very inspiring. You know, I think a lot of people feel like painting or doing any art in general is uh, something they can't do because they can't afford it. Mm -hmm. but, you know, pretty mm -hmm. much anyone anyone can, you know, do it. Yeah, really, yeah. Really but at to. that time, um, I I look back and I look at my painting and think, oh, I wish I used better quality. I wish I did because there were some things that I can't uh, re reproduce right now or I. I changed my style and I will never go back to that, but that was so um, interesting and um, uh, and I think it was something special that I did. Yeah. So, yeah, well unfortunately. W w would you say that the materials you use influence your style? Yes, yes. Yeah, how, yes. How, how has it influenced you, do you think? Um, everything influences. Uh, change of, a new brush influences, uh, yeah. Very much, yeah. very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I'll, I'll leave you to your painting. And, uh, I'll, I'll be back. Well, okay, I can show one more. How much would it cost for you to shave your head? For, for <laughs> <laughs> mm, wow. <laughs> for you don't get any of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. yeah. How much? How do you think? <laughs> how much it would my hair would cost if I if I sell it? I don't know how. I, I don't know how much. How much would a head of hair cost to sell? I don't know. It's a lot. And you, you lot. have the, the necessary amount. It's got to be about, what, 10 Let's inches? Not yeah, it has to be And it's, it's, <laughs> okay. it's Every, natural. Actually yeah. Really I never <laughs> dyed my hair in my life. Oh my life. gosh, yes. Yeah. I need those oh, that man. actually for extension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you, wait. Natalia, are, are you a cosplayer? Natalia, are you a clip-in or glue-in kind of person? Uh, clip-in or if I'm getting them for a long period of time, the sew-in. Okay. Oh, yeah. Cool. Fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Have your own studio. You can do this too. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna what? ask Joseph about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is oh, okay. Thank you. I'll take that. This is with you. Okay. Cool. Hello, Joseph. This is Joseph's moment. This is Joseph's moment. Are, are you ready to, to 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 start some shit? Uh, oh, oh, I'm in your shot. Possibly. Nice. Um, clear my plate here. All right. Uh, here. So, I understand that we've got some uh, some 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 people had some things to say about <laughs> my question. So, do you guys have that? Yeah, yeah. Um, people were commenting about the eye placement. Oh yeah. Um, do you, do you want to? Uh, what about it? Uh, they were saying that the right, her right eye might be a little bit too high. Who who said that? Uh, I, I don't. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> it was. Uh, I can't remember. There were some people in the chat. Can I get some names? Hmm. Are you crying? Or are you? Uh, no, I'm just trying to figure it out. Who did it? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to do you want to know where they live? Do you want to know their names? Just their handle. <laughs> okay. <so I> can, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, yeah, I, I, uh, my wife told me the same thing. She was yeah. like, last night. She's like, something's wrong with the eye. Yeah. I was like, thanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, honey. It's yeah. your fault. <laughs> yeah. But um, so, do you want to try to fix it? I don't know. No, no. Well, if you want to talk about. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because I, I, I know that you know every single artist know like. No matter the level of skill and mastery, everyone makes mistakes. You know, mm -hmm. and 
<laughs> Especially <laughs> Joseph, you know. <laughs> what are you saying? What's that? Uh, you know, did Joseph make a mistake? <laughs> no, no, it's a perfect. Oh no, thing. I no, I yeah. I make mistakes a lot. Yeah. So I'm not <laughs> above. Yeah, and yeah. So what? And no, that's not a. I don't take. I didn't take. I didn't even understand why they were laughing. No, well, Christians should be punished. No, no, God. <laughs> he's called. He's make. He's you know. He's called you out. So so. <laughs> you need to shave your eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, no, if. Uh, uh, let's if, if seriously like this is an issue so there's an issue here right and so I took a couple pictures I, I kind of looked at it you know and I'm trying to determine what's the best route to go here so you know the first instinct would be to lower the eye but well that means a lot more than just lowering the eye that means every single edge every single thing has to come down and support that move including maybe the brow including the forehead and it could really change my design everywhere in that vicinity uh you know so i've got this really kind of horizontal thing going on there and i don't mind that so and even the nose is still somewhat ambiguous in terms of where that back corner is located so you know uh i think more of the issue has to do with uh the recognition of the eye being low might have to do with something along this edge because her, it's kind of giving the impression that her head is tilted a little bit because the, the forehead is, the apex of it is out farther to the left than anything else. But on her, the, the farthest apex to the left is like the, the cheekbone here. Yeah. So I would argue that it's more about an issue over here. And this is all really initial stuff. I haven't really touched it since I put it in there. And I've, I've been meaning to modify this edge a little more correctly, a little bit more fluidly. So what I'm getting at is that I think I can better solve the problem by swinging this stuff out. And but then that's that kind of presents some other problems. So that c usually when you have to fix something that's this subtle, I just think it's kind of a a read issue. It's reading a little bit high. I don't know that it's necessarily an unacceptable issue. But if it if it if I determine that it's unacceptable, I usually make these these uh, adjustments by doing a series of things, not just one. Long story, <laughs> long story to shorten that story. Yeah. Um, so the first thing I would try to do is get the reed to work a little more effectively. And that means like, like ripping a bandaid off, get, just put something down to kind of like make the cut and, and do the job. And I, I think what it, it would benefit is if I try to put a little bit of a dark note, a little bit lower and kind of align it, or even suggest that the under plane of the eyelid is slightly lower in relationship to this one. This one's really, you know, a little bit darker little more clear and so if I were to try to like do that <clears throat> I might be able to nudge that down a little bit also maybe even down here on the lower lid drop that just a little bit so just a gentle nudging of an edge can kind of start to initiate the read in a little more favorable manner if that makes sense ah, deep breath. Uh, so yeah so you got to try to do that do you want to try to do that me no, me. Okay. <laughs> okay, I can try, man. <laughs> okay. No, no, I don't want to. Okay, stand back. You're making me nervous. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, so I'll try to do that first. The next thing would be to is to kind of al alter this edge. Um, but that opens up another can of worms with the mouth, which I have kind of uh, conveniently placed in a really brief way. So I don't know. The question is, what what's going to happen? This might be a good use of Photoshop if you really if you really worried about it, but I'm, I'm not. So I think it's okay. You just go in there and make what I what I will say when I do something like this, and what I encourage people to do is make really minor incremental adjustments. So I'm not going to like do anything too crazy when I say like make a make a you know a pretty deliberate move. I'm going to do it in such a way that is like. Uh, discreet. Let me get my ball stick here. So the value is really gentle. Just taking a. Oh, I like that already. Very, very gentle. Very, very minimal. And just trying to be incremental about any change. 
I, I talk about that a lot, just being incremental in general. And I think that actually solves it right there. Because I don't want to... I don't... Let me see. Does that work? I got, let me... Can I step aside and call my wife really quick? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, she's the boss on oh. these things. <laughs> she's the one I trust, you know, on these things. She has no problem letting me know. Something looks really weird. We all need someone like that in our lives. Okay, can anyone out there tell me if that helped? Oh, yes. Just say not enough or yeah, that's good. You don't have to put any other words in there. So, another... Yeah, don't get too, don't get too wordy with the out there. <laughs> My feelings are real. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Or just have feelings. God. Uh, Sanford Green texted me. He says all Joseph has to do is make the left eye smaller, not lower. Then the eyelid will be low enough to line up with the right eye. Smaller, not lower. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that, he's talking about this left eye or her left eye. Her, her left eye? Uh, he this, just this said this left eye. Okay, <laughs> that eye is, looks, that's her left eye, yeah. and it looks larger than that. I believe. Well, probably means the one that you're thinking of make lower. Hmm. So oh, because he said not, not lower. lower so yes, smaller, I see. So probably the left eye on the canvas. Uh huh. Uh huh. You. Sorry. Yeah. So, so it probably just means lower the top lid. Yeah. Okay. And then he says, "Awesome." Oh, thanks. That's kind. <coughs> it's not terrible. What do you think? I think it looks good. Yeah. To me, it sounds like you uh, almost have a uh, like several different things or um, paths you could take that you yes. think of before you. Absolutely, I do. It's, yeah, I have a multitude of options to make a correction. Yeah. Always, I mean, always. It's never just one thing, you know. Um, in it, it's usually a a series of a few minor things. If 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 the goal is not to disrupt what's going on, yeah. you know what I mean? I, I don't want to do any major damage control here, right? I just, I, I like the painting. Remember, like I was saying about, you know, the likeness or whatever, or, or even just the, even the accuracy is negoti negotiable, quite honestly, in a situation like this. If the painting is going well, I'm not going to overforce some type of notion of accuracy, which is fleeting to begin with. I'm just trying to paint the right clues to have an experience, the viewer to have this sensation of light, the sensation of the model, and this kind of feeling of expressive authorship, right? And so if I'm achieving that, like why would I want to disrupt that for some like strange uh, uh, dogma of it being like, oh, you know, no, it's it's got to be perfect or whatever. I think that's a myth. And I think that, um, you know, I, I've learned just uh, which battles to choose like you know what i mean yeah so um i so yeah i mean that's that's not bad so i think um at this point well, let me stop talking and use my brain right What I'm, what's happening right now is interesting. It's like the chroma is gently bumping up, which is like going to naturally get the... The, the one thing I liked about the eye is that it was really uh, compressed in value and soft-edged in low chroma, really gray. So it didn't really call for too much attention. I'm kind of trying to maintain that, but... So what I'm saying is like maybe you could do it at 
in general, the eyes are pretty minimal and suggestive, and so uh, I don't I don't want to lose that quality by trying to go for something too too literal. Uh, trying to explain it, I guess, but it's just really more of like a feeling. Does it read well or not? I've heard other artists talk about this as well, but you know, being okay with giving up certain parts of the painting, like the likeness or other parts, when mm. other things take precedent over it, mm. kind of being intentional with what you're trying to say with the uh, piece of art that you're creating. Yeah, it's totally true. Now I'm just kind of going back to this old idea, drawing idea. This would just be like charcoal where I'm just kind of reestablishing this shape and l trying to kind of drag down this, this shape without any information inside the shape, just kind of a nice gentle tone in there to kind of get it to drop. Still looks high. It's, uh, I mean, it, it's, it, it, it ain't going to go down without making it go down. So, um, you know, I can try to push things uh, quietly as much as possible but at some point if it doesn't doesn't work you know, might have to do a little bit more aggressive tactics here and ambiguity is is kind of like my friend right now I'm trying to um, just let it hold its place. Another thing I'm going to do is shift to the other eye, and this there's a, there's a little bit of a kind of a sloppy um, edge right here. I might just try to kind of take that up a bit. Ooh. Uh, oh boy. See, now you're starting to alter the, the fabric of, of what was working. That's uh, okay. Um, no. Smaller, smaller, lower. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? <laughs> But no, I think it's really important uh, to have some um, tools when you've got to make adjustments. But I, I stick and maintain that you've got to determine what is a worthwhile pursuit and what is not. Before you make any changes, do you uh, do any breathing or anything? You know, trying to try and center, center yourself. Sometimes, yeah, you know, a little prayer yeah. to the 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 muses. No, not. Well, I don't know. I'll hold my breath yeah. if I try to make a stroke that really, you know, it's really pivotal. Oh, she's not there. Okay, I should probably wait until the model gets back up there. But I, I like that. I think that's I think that's okay so far. The highlight is also another issue too. If you notice the highlight over here is lower or on the same plane as the highlight there, right? So that could be another possibility, but you see I'm trying to avoid that because I kind of like the I've kinda of like the the haplessness of that little fleck of paint. So you know, at some point, that's another option. But once you start, if I remove that, then all of a sudden, you know, some real, some real things have changed quite a bit in terms of the, you know, the quality that I that I like so far. So I'm I'm juggling whether or not uh, it's worth it. And the other thing I'm doing, which I think is really <laughs> important to, to say, is that I'm very patient about these decisions. I'm not just gonna like sacrifice this this thing right right near the finish line for something that doesn't bother me that much yeah. you know I might regret it later but um, painting from life is really tough and to me I've got some good victories going on and one defeat is not a deal breaker for me so 
we'll see. Like, I'm just going to take my time. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe, uh, again, I still have the option to kind of adjust this edge. And I think by possibly bringing it out just a little bit or even modifying it carefully might help as well to kind of just essentially straighten the head out to real horizontal and make it an acceptable read. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's a person in the chat here that said the eyes are definitely starting to look normal. Thank you. That's a new reassurance for you. I don't think there's no Todorovich for the last name, so I don't think this is your wife in the chat. Oh, yeah. But there's good positive things here. Oh, Manuel yeah. Salas. Yes, it's from there. Manuel Salivar. The opaqueness on her right eye is, like, is, is what, in my opinion? The opaqueness on her right eye is... Uh, what, do you see that on there? Uh, that, that it's like VRW. The main thing people point out is like the inner corner eye, the shadow oh. on the top like above the eye the white of the eye they are thinking it should, should be brought down. down so like decrease the size of the white of the eye right there right there right there ah oh, okay that's a good point i, I i'm trying to avoid that yeah but you, you like the the, the highlight yeah i just like the the yeah yeah i think like yeah it's funny so i there's i noticed it um there's things that seem obvious and when you execute those things they can really change the dynamic of the read what I'm what I'm trying to say is through experience I know that I'm very very like cautious about things that might seem obvious taking that step because I know how dramatic of a change it could be and then I can feel like I've lost something that I didn't want to lose so um, Patience is the key for me, and and really, I don't take a step just because, you know, I, I want to know what it's going to look like. I, I take a step because I, I have an idea, a, a good sense that it's going to be the right move. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So um, these are my, this is my philosophy about making subtle adjustments like that, yeah. and it means a lot to me. You know, like like I say, um, uh, there are some things that I'm pretty excited about that especially from paying from life um, with you know it's in a situation like this that I'm you know I got to be careful here so I'm gonna do it the way I would really do it as if n there wasn't the microphone and a camera and I would just yeah. I would wait I made a couple adjustments I'm gonna set that on the on the back burner I'm gonna let that simmer for a little bit and then I'll make a judgment later yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll sign back here cool All sounds right. good thank cool. you like thanks Joseph cool How's it going, Stan? Good. Uh, I figure out the sleeve. But yeah. I finished. Mostly, I finished the face. Nice. Yeah, I like it a lot. It's good look. It looks good. But yeah, it was just it was getting busy, and a lot of the sh like brush strokes are just like. It's like fifty separate strokes that just don't go from one to the other. They don't. There's no flow. It was just a bunch of islands. Yeah. So I, I just went in and just like destroyed this whole area right. just with the fan brush. Yeah. Probably do the same thing here. Just kind of boop, boop, clean it up, come back in and tackle it again. Do you want to talk about the philosophy of troubleshooting your painting while you're painting? Like trying out different things, you know, trying to visualize what you think will work and what, what won't? Fixing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, at any stage in a really big painting, I'd imagine that there is some trial and error and troubleshooting that goes along with just trying stuff out. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's, it's always wrong. Yeah. It's, it's more of a, like, when does it look good? Yeah. Right, you, you get, gotta get to a point where it, all the wrongs look r right. right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and that, there's so many ways you can make that happen um, that, you can you can yeah you can just try a bunch of stuff but a lot of times what happens with me when I'm painting and I see an error like something like this where it's a really complicated error like this this shirt doesn't look good right like yeah. that's really it's like what does that even mean right. if I try to go in and like noodle it to try to force it to look better yeah. it's usually gonna be worse um, like if I just try to add more detail so messing it up and then coming back in with cleaner strokes usually works better for me. Yeah. Um, but 
yeah i don't know it's it's a it's a tough one it depends on your style and depends on what what you want the, the look to be if you're going for ultra realism then then yeah just observe and fix every little piece of the yeah. thing but if you're going for more kind of impressionistic and like nothing in here is really realistic yeah. um then it's more about the combination of, of brush strokes that look good yeah. um, a variety variety really matters i think one thing that was really wrong with what i didn't like about this area was that it's just like a bunch of repeating strokes that were all isolated um there was not enough variety yeah. uh, so i'm gonna try to go back in and simplify things but consider the edge um of every stroke that i put in and how that leads to the next stroke okay. yeah um just kinda... do you want to talk about your influences for this painting like, like which artists did you look at before doing I this i looked at a bunch of um russian are they from the academy repin academy yeah. leon sent me a bunch and i was like jesus this looks amazing yeah. but like it, my painting doesn't look anything like those yeah. like it was inspiring but then when i started painting i just went my own way right. it was more of all my influences in the past that right. led to this now yeah it wasn't what i looked at before right yeah cool yeah any any questions from the audience um here let me see uh there are no questions right now from the audience <laughs> what M mckenna do you have any questions for anybody so much pressure. Ask a question. Was there was there anything for you guys that made you particularly interested in coming out to do this event? For anybody? Like I, I know You tell them to the other artists? Yeah. Right. Yeah, anyone in general. Yeah, right, well do you wanna Oh sure. Yeah, um so Stan, obviously like you you're a person who put the thing together yeah, with Leon. I mean, I, I, I yeah, we, we so Leon and I we ran into each other at the airport because our flight was delayed. Mm -hmm. And we you, guys, you guys are both first class people, right? No, it was just me. I was in first class, and he was sitting in the back. A, a man of a man of the people. I was flying the plane. I was flying. <laughs> That's why I was delayed. He tried to my seats out. were that cheap. I had to work. <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah, he was trying to read the handbook, <laughs> like trying to figure out how to fly it right before. That's why he was delayed. <laughs> like, how does this thing work again? Yeah. Okay, so now you, you guys, you put this this together. Yeah, we just so we were sitting there and we were just talking about what to do, and yeah, we brainstormed and yeah, yeah, and then and then it happened. Okay, that's, that's good. Crazy how things work. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> when you put forward an idea, it happens. And then you do it. And yeah. Um, yeah. Joseph, was there? How how did that process go for you? Uh, with Stan reaching out, or did someone else reach out? Uh, <laughs> was it was it i think it was stan or stan's team and uh you know i was honored and i was like of course you know like i just i i just really i'm a p i'm about peace <clears throat> i'm not about war it's just like that there's other ways to solve these problems and so forth and you know there's people really struggling right now which to me seems like a situation that is ancient i, I don't understand how p this is going on i was just like uh yeah it's a, it's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. If you guys want to help out with this one, obviously, there's a link on the screen right now. Um, you guys can donate to that. Every, people have been doing fantastically so far and making sure that there's actually like good rewards for this one and that we can actually end up helping with, through with art. Can I just thank the person who uh, supported us in, in purchase my painting? Like, genuinely, I'm, I'm honored and I really appreciate We We all really appreciate that, that help. So thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm so used to living on a microphone. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just think it's really good that it's happening. And obviously, you, everyone who's here right now, you guys don't have to support or anything, but you can still do something even if you can't put towards this any monetary thing share a link tell someone that there's basically like an art symposium going on every 15 minutes or so here thank you i'm gonna go over this way it's actually let's see so for you natalia yeah. oh i'm too close to the microphone still um so where where you where you're at right now do you think that you're in a stage that's mostly finished or do you think that you would want to 
um, basically call this good? Uh, well, the, yeah, there is no. Um, I would like. I would like it to be better. Um, oh, it's very good. So yeah, I'm. I'm still working on it, and um, there are so many things I. I see. I want to make better, but um, finishing stage is hard for me because um, it's hard to. It's easy to change things, but it's hard to for things to make it better. Hmm. So, yes, and I feel like yeah, for most of artists, finishing stage is the most struggling one, because um, and for students especially, in my experience, um, it's uh, such a temptation to. Um, Oh, I, d I don't like it. Uh, I've worked so far, but I don't like it. Or oh, I'm gonna change it completely. Mm. And uh, then, oh, I don't like how it changed. I'm gonna change it one more time. <laughs> it's very hard. It's a learning process. I remember when I was a student, I would change my paintings 10 times and never be happy with this because um, it takes amount of um, uh, uh, n n needs to have um, like to restrain yourself mm -hmm. and to, uh, because I'm such a free a free painter, to uh, focus on something and to make it better, not worse. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's a hard decision. It's, it's very hard for me. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's fair. Mm -hmm. For for you, I noticed you chose to do a little bit more red, like on top of the sleeve here. Ah, uh, you mean red? Mm -hmm. this yeah, one? above her wrist. Uh -huh. It's an interesting one. Is it, is it something that you find yourself doing with art more often? Like choos choosing to um, bring out some things add, that you want to things. Of add? course, of course. Yeah. Of course. It gives me, um, um, yeah, just a feeling of freedom that I can put whatever I want there. But uh, mm, do you like it or no? Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, I've been saying that the whole time. I like that. Uh, this very much. Yeah. No, I, I think that there's a lot to be said for adhering to something that you're seeing mm -hmm. when you're drawing from life. But mm -hmm. there's also mm -hmm. so much in you pulling out something else that you like and adding that to the reference. Mm -hmm. it, it, you have to learn to play by the rules first before you can break them confidently and create interesting compositions. Would be ideal. Yeah, it would be ideal to know everything person, but no, oh, yeah. but nobody knows it perfect. Yeah. yeah. It, it's a it's a journey, not a destination. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Ethan went by in the background. <laughs> yeah, I I'm so honored and uh, grateful and happy to be here in this place, uh, especially because um, I'm so connected to my um, my country and my people and uh, my family. And uh, uh, Ukraine is my home, yes. And uh, my parents are doing everything they can to help. And we are so united um, in Ukraine. People are so united right now because um, everybody, um, everybody is doing their best in in the place they are mm -hmm. uh, to help, to help uh, bring peace, to help finish this war, to to restore uh, the. Um, yeah, just the the justice and peace. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, I, I'm so grateful, so grateful for people who um, who have uh, who have this design in their hearts to support and uh, yeah, be, be in the uh, position here yeah, that we would like peace and mm -hmm. to end it as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes, and you could help. You can help out there. I think, um, I think, uh, Leon, were you, you were wanting to focus in on a certain new area of your painting? Would you want to go over that? I think you were talking about going to hands. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Hands is important and hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to go around here. I don't know. Right now, I don't get to be a camera operator for anything, so I think it, it'll be a moment before we get to show anything. Okay, all right. But okay, well, we can talk. So um, it's very important to go, especially when you finish, to go from details to big ideas, from details to big ideas, and constantly find 
clarity of shapes again mm -hmm. so we talked about shapes and patterns that we paint with patterns patterns right so you need to organize each pattern so it fits in its right place mm -hmm. right value right right temperature right color and and also design of that shape is important so how much of shadow how much of light how much of yellow Bless you. pink Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> how, how much of uh these pattern basically what is the what is the design shape mm -hmm. and how important each shape is. is is there any sort of structure that you typically approach something with like do you do you choose any like significant area to begin uh to begin <laughs> yeah like is it, is it more like a color blocking kind of thing for you in the beginning or in the beginning it is but this is not a beginning this yeah. is uh, finishing uh or getting close to a finish so obviously we have lots of different things happening right we have a girl sitting against background right so the girl is going to be more important in the background mm -hmm. so that's important so make sure that your background doesn't dominate over your figure number two light is more important than shadow so make sure that your patterns of light are more important than sha patterns of shadows mm -hmm. and where it happens vice versa change that number three you have skin tones hair um her sh uh, shirt her dress mm -hmm. so decide which pattern is more important right so probably skin tones most important hair number two shirt number three blouse number four so you look at each pattern and you say to yourself is this pattern too important or not important mm -hmm. enough yeah you, you had chosen it looks like for the details that are in her sleeves on the shirt you chose to kind of make those less important than the details in the face, the flowers. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course, because we, we said that the face is going to be more important mm -hmm. than the shirt. So it's a whole system of organization. And nice thing about this is if you think in this very systematical, very kind of academical way, you can be expressive wild crazy you can just like roll and paint safely <laughs> and uh and still uh have very specific results right because your 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 application is spontaneous mm -hmm. but your logic is very deliberate you want people to establish those ground rules and right then move from there. right right it would be great if all the students all the painters would recognize these rules and have enough experience uh implementing them mm -hmm. right and that's what school is for basically that's what i teach that's what i think everybody else is uh teaching in their classroom is um this these classical rules in variety of implementing them mm -hmm. right you can be painting with a small brush you can be throwing paint with a bucket you can be stumping with you know you should whatever you want to do it, that is irrelevant mm -hmm. what's relevant is what's your logic what are you trying to what are you trying to do again why why are you doing something in particular that you're doing mm -hmm. so right now it's organizing the entire canvas Keeping in mind that head is detail number one, hand number two, this is number three, the, the other hand is number three. Mm -hmm. Maybe finding interesting design, like for example, maybe I'll put another orange pattern to bring to, to this. Um, what, what do you think, in, in this hand here, do you th what do you think is the going to be the next thing that you approach with that? Right, so next thing is I need to break it. <laughs> Basically, I need to um, find more difference between top plane and front plane, mm -hmm. right? Because there, when you squint, there's not enough value difference. How do we create volume? We attribute different values to different planes, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to break the form to create more turn, mm -hmm. right? So that's what I'm going to do first. Okay. Break her wrist. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I think that there's definitely some separation right, it to looks be done. Too, too straight. Yeah. I think you've definitely got. There's. I'm uh, sorry. No, there's yeah. a fantastic start with this here and uh-huh. like the variation from the knuckle to yeah. the middle of or the top of the middle finger right, here. But but these look too straight. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I I want a much more qualified person than me to be here to continue talking to you about this. No, one. no I think no. Ethan is here. Like we oh, said. he's playing oh. drawing now. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Do you, huh? Do you want a camera on you? Yeah, yeah, because I everything else would be me just not being able to keep up with you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, um, I think are we gonna do the dog interview? Yeah, we could do a dog interview. I was, I was gonna ask Sam. You, you down fantastically. I just oh, want to make sure that someone sure, yeah. with the right questions can be here. Right. No, I think I think you you had pretty good questions. Sure. Yeah. And chat. Please ask questions. This is your, we're here for you. And uh, you guys, please ask your questions. We'd love to answer them. Uh, No matter how specific an address, maybe say like, hey, I've noticed, you know, on this painting, this works or it doesn't work. We love to uh, hear your input and we love to hear your criticism. I, I think it's important yeah, we have our own minds and we may not take advices or, or <laughs> <laughs> we may, <laughs> but, but, but I think, uh, it's interesting again, it's, for example, a lot of times I listen to critique, like for example, like whoever, somebody from the street or your grandmother may be like, oh, something isn't right Mm -hmm. and usually she will be right she just won't have the right vocabulary to express it that was one who was it that was talking about caricatures doing caricatures somewhere and they talked about i I was doing caricatures was was this you and you said a a child would give you some scathing review this looks no one okay yeah because that they have no problem saying no and that this does not look like their mom or whoever yeah right (laughs) Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> so, so I think uh, it's important to learn how to work with um, information that you receive. Mm-hmm. You know, how to work with these suggestions. Like, oh, maybe this doesn't fit, and maybe they don't have the right solution. But maybe you can bring it, break it apart, and find a better solution, right, and make it feel right. Because, again, we're all experts in painting because we're all experts in life Mm -hmm. yeah i think it's very fair right yeah um i want to see what the the angle of this one is do we do we have a decent angle on leon's painting right now i'm not sure oh from i haven't gotten to see yeah i think we probably were yeah, was, so is there anything that you, um, before, like while they're setting up, is there okay, anything so, that you want so to we, mention? you can see the painting, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's, right. It's, it's the, the larger cropping of it right now. Excellent. Right. So I, here's a couple of things that I'm thinking about. I'm thinking to include an orange pattern over here to lead to the, to the model a little bit better. Because I, I wonder if... Uh, there's not enough of flow. There's not enough of introduction into the model. I want to kind of make this, keep this less, not as suggestive, but maybe find more fluid lines. I want to organize the shirt a little bit better. I'm still just barely getting into the shirt. And the whole point was to do the embroidery. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait to get into it. Because um, you think it's something that you will end up refining more? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Why not? Yeah. And then at the same time, I'm looking at this mess and I'm trying to figure out, should it have more interest diagonals? Should it have stronger shapes over here? So maybe you guys can suggest, does this need to be stronger shapes? I wonder if this is too yellow, if this needs to be a little bit less yellow. I wonder if this yellow competes with the face. Um, do you think, actually, I, I do have a question. I don't think we've gone over this very much. Was there anything that anyone else chose to highlight in their paintings so far that you think was a fantastic choice? 
Oh, I think like I think for... she, um, so. Uh, Natalia Fabia, she she has the tassels, which I don't think anyone else has done here. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, that, that's uh, that's very interesting. I you know I think everyone should kind of speak uh, about your own. Painting. I think it's difficult to. Um, I think everyone has. What's beautiful about this is that everyone is different. Mm -hmm. But everyone is equally uh, professional, mm -hmm. and it becomes a little bit of a matter of taste and mm -hmm. choice. Um, yeah, for me personally, I it's a little bit difficult for me to uh, s answer that question because I'm so involved into my painting That's and fair. I'm just like resolving these issues. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be a better question for the audience. Okay. To uh, discuss, suggest, um, contemplate. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Get your, get your comments ready for what you like most out of them. But you've got to stick around because we're not going to go around to each of these paintings one by one for you to say good or bad things about them right now. Right now, we have a dog. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, would you uh, like to do this now, Ethan? Are we ready to check out the dog? Yeah, I think so. Thank you so much, Leon. You're welcome. I have a microphone for you here. Right. I think we'll get a camera for you in a moment. I'll... All right. We're just going to uh, chill right now. You want to interview the dog? Uh, he's, he's great. He just needs, yeah, yeah. He needs a bigger pop filter. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Let's go see if there's anything in the chat. People said they liked your background a lot. Here, um, a couple people said that um, there was one that said, "I love the yellow. Maybe just a more yellow orange." Maybe just a little more yellow orange. Or yellow, or yeah. 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 I like it. But that, that's from the crowd. With him from the crowd, if you want. Yeah, I like that. The crowd's giving <laughs> the art advice. <laughs> there, there is some good, uh, good ideas with fresh eyes for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but taking the consideration, it could be a five-year-old typing in the, the chat or not you know when she was saying we got to revert to being a child sometimes and that works hey buddy don't eat the paint am i right does this dog ever eat paint does this dog ever eat paint do you eat paint it sounds like he needs microphones yeah he could he could sit down here come on buddy good job sit Good job. That's a good boy. So this is Max. Here, get him the microphone. Right? Here, pretend that. Oh, oh no no no! He's scared. Yeah, he's scared of everything. You gotta be real gentle with it. Come here, buddy. It's okay. Place. Up here. Up here. There you go. Good job. Sit. Good job. Yeah. Oh, he likes it. Like the microphone? No no, it's okay. He's very scared. He's very scared, but he's learning. He's we're building up his confidence. Um, Do we have any snacks? For well, he's got his bone. Uh, his bone is in, there. His bone is in the other room. I'll sit with him for a second. Okay. All right. We're gonna ask you a couple questions. Hey, take this seriously. Hey, buddy. Hey. Oh no. Don't mess up the chair. This ch this is a really nice chair. Can we get a zoom in, a close up of the chair's quality? There you go. Yeah, don't mess up that chair. Very important. Hey, look. Sit. Okay, sit down for a second. He's not very good. He, this is his first time being on camera. I'm going to take a quick break from all the other painters for a second. Let them paint some stuff out so we can come up with some new questions. Actually, this is a question I want to ask later. The big paintings, big, big painting, so less detail, right? And I'm looking at the smaller paintings, and they have a lot of detail and, and tighter tighterness so we're gonna jump into that in a minute hey buddy he loves the smell of paint gasoline and paint he loves it he loves them both okay all right so where are you from and how old are you oh there's his bone look at him go I would really like to paint him actually the way uh, well you know paint, I'd like to paint a, a canvas Okay. A picture of him. I can get you an easel if you want. 
No. Um, but wouldn't you agree, though, the patterns and, like, oh, the yeah. way the light hits yeah, yeah. the guy? That'd be extremely cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's really he's, nice. He's very handsome, too. Yeah, he is. He, he gets that from a, me. a professional model. Yeah. Yeah, he could. Hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are. Hey, yeah, buddy. Yeah. Well, there he goes. Hey, hey, he's smelling something. Hey, Max. Oh, he's going to... He, he's going to... You got him? You got to walk around with him and make sure he doesn't get on the, any of the, the, the cameras. Well, there he goes. He doesn't seem to be into talking right now. <laughs> Just sniffing. Exactly. He, he smells the snacks. Yeah, oh, he smells the snacks? Yeah. Well, uh, so there there goes that. I think there's a Tiffany is here. A Tiffany? T Tiffany actually has some rewards that are up. Oh, okay. On our supplies? Our supplies? Yeah, so t Tiffany actually, she, um... She got to put a few things up for rewards for the thing right now. She she brought some snacks, so she's very nice, kind person. Oh. Um, but she did also put some stuff up for rewards for this one. Oh, okay. That, um, yeah, it, it could be an interesting one. Where could we find, uh, is that on the Progo <laughs> website? Yeah, that's on Progo.com slash Ukraine. I think Stephanie's going to join, actually. Oh, Stephanie's going to join? Yeah. Does she want to sit down? Yeah. So I'm planning on doing a little painting of myself. What I want to do is a painting of a painting. I'm going to paint Stan's painting. Okay. Yeah. Well, not on. I'm going to paint on my iPad. So digital of a traditional of a live. You know okay. what I'm saying? And uh, cue the joke of someone in the chat right now saying paintception. I beat you to it. Yeah. Paintception. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> you want to come sit down? Are you ready? <laughs> sure. All right. Let me get this <laughs> I'm gonna give this to you. Right. Yeah, Tiffany actually. Has, she she just got here. She hasn't gotten to look at anyone's paintings yet so far. So. He's gonna be asking me questions. Oh, do you want to ask her some no, questions? No, no, dude. I was gonna hand this to you if you wanted to, unless you really want to be in that one. Uh, let me get started on this for a okay. second. Okay, yeah. Is it okay if I take this chair? Yeah, for sure. Okay, thank you so much. So, Tiffany, how's Hello, it going? Steven, how are you? It's pretty good so far. The people in the chat have been really good. Um, everyone's been really nice uh, right now. What's the donation? What's that at right now, Lauren? I've been watching it, it's been growing steadily. It's chair. 22,600 something awesome. and four, she said. I remember last week. <laughs> 654. Yeah, that's the Amazing. number there, that one. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, I know um, everyone's been really good about it. But one of the things that I think was one, like one of the most interesting things to see people do was that initially it didn't seem like they were snapping up a lot of the actual rewards. It was right. more just donations happening. Right. They were all just being really nice and offering to help monetarily yeah, which is great yeah yeah but there are still things that are rewards that they can there get are that are, in the, yes. that are in there oh nice transition <laughs> <laughs> impromptu he's good at that <laughs> um but yeah so you have some of those things i do um yeah i'm really excited i'm actually offering uh three mentorship one hour mentorship sessions they're all separate so three different people can sign up uh and like i said they're all one hour long and yeah i actually run my own mentorships prior to this and so i i personally i love teaching um i have a digital and a traditional background i work in the animation industry and i also work in gouache and oils um not like these amazing figure painting i was <laughs> talking to talia i was like i can't do what you guys do uh, i haven't painted a figure in 10 plus years but um, so I really want to check out their paintings and I popped in just now um, but yeah I am offering I think there's still two more slots left so you guys have about three more days to snatch them up if you want to mm -hmm. uh, I promise I won't bite I will look at your website um, offer do a paint over um, give critique advice uh, whatever you want in your personal art journey whether you are a digital artist uh, wanting to crack into the animation industry or a, a guac artist or just a, a landscape painter um, everything I think is just intertied mm -hmm. um, and so I love exploring the versatility and the inter connectivity I just totally made no, that no, no, you nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> the two mediums um, and so yeah I think that um, before I go on a rant here <laughs> um, you know it's really important I heard Leon talking about earlier but it's really important to study from life you know mm -hmm. and mix colors traditionally and you can apply that to your digital work as well mm -hmm. so um, yeah I have that and then I I'm not sure if it's on the set yet but I also have three gouache pieces and then I think my limited edition print has already been sold mm. so 
that's what I have. Yeah, yeah. it's really good. Yeah. And it, um, it's really hard, I think, sometimes for a person who's watching like a random stream. I was shocked during the stream. There were a bunch of people that were saying that I just discovered Proko uh, because of this live stream. I, I don't know if this is a common one, but I saw at least two people say this and I haven't been looking at the chat often. Um, but yeah, so they might not know who this person is or that person that uh, has rewards on offer. Um, but I mean, I got to meet you a couple months ago yeah. when you started working here. Yeah. And I got blown away when, uh, after we had met and everything, I got to find out who you had worked for. Uh, so you worked for like Cartoon Saloon. Oh uh, yeah, most recently, yeah, it was my dream studio. I was a production designer at Cartoon Saloon uh, and that was phenomenal experience. Shout out to the whole team there. I love them, um, mm -hmm. like such a fun environment yeah. to work at where even though I was remotely, thank God I didn't move to Ireland or I don't know <laughs> if I'd be able to work for Proco. Maybe I would, I don't know, it all worked out. But I was supposed to move to Ireland, but I didn't. But um, it would have been rainy and dreary there. Uh, but I, like I lived in Seattle. Oh, so you would know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for me coming from California, San Diego, I've been like, hmm, a big rainy change. weather. I don't know if I can mm -hmm. pay. Um, but yeah, that was an awesome experience. And now I'm also working at Marvel Studios, which is really fun as well, mm -hmm. um, as so a color key artist. Yeah. yeah so so by the by the, the critique things. Like <laughs> yeah. The so I mean, I guess I have a pretty diverse background, so I can really, um, I guess, help you out or whatever you need. Um, mm -hmm. Any questions you have, I'm pretty much an open book. Um, so yeah. Okay. Ask away. Yeah. Entertainment, like. Yeah. What, so what do? You, oh. Yeah. Can you talk about? Um. Currently? I can't. Yeah. I, I. I. can. I'm working on the show What If uh, as a color key artist. So, um. They basically. I. I'm like basically the color. I don't. I mean, not to sound cocky, but like um, <laughs> <laughs> the color key artist because they realize like it's really fun. I'm trying to say it's really fun to be able to just focus mm -hmm. on color keys, which is I think my specialty which i can link to i did a hundred thumbnails for stan so it's pretty much that except in <laughs> digital form so that was really fun so um basically you know doing color keys is establishing the lighting and the color and the mood and the setting uh for each episode so you're basically doing a hundred plus little paintings Do, are you are you also are you doing this just for scenery or is this the thing where you're also establishing a color palette for a character in day versus night um, so the characters are already pretty much established, so okay. I would get a character lineup and then um, I would pull off of that, but basically you're painting over animatics, mm -hmm. uh, so you get like a black and white, um, beautiful chicken scratch drawing, you know, very <laughs> loose. Um, Ethan, you're working on this show? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Can you please take that part out? Oh my god, I'm gonna get fired now. Um, <laughs> no, I'm saying because I can't do what storyboarders do at all. But um, it's it's very loose, and now I'm sweating. It's, it's very loose, and it's 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 it captures the gesture, and then I translate that into. Um, into the light and, and establish and figure out the lighting. Mm -hmm. I work with the art director and the production designer and it's another amazing team as well. And I'm really, really enjoying this job. It's been I'm really, sure. really fun. Yeah. 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 It, it's a crazy it's a one. Yeah, right? I had to pull, pull it huh? back. It's not Chicken Scratch, it's fantastic. It's experience. fantastic. No, I said it was fantastic, James. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Um, so, is there anyone here whose work that you've seen in the past that you were a big fan of or anything besides, uh, besides obviously ethan becker yeah i actually know of all of them from the past um besides ethan but yeah. yeah um actually joseph todorovich hi uh he was my <laughs> teacher oh back in um god i can't remember i was in college yeah it was a long time ago i think it was 2000 three kicks yeah so it was three kicks, but I can't remember if it was before or after I studied from Italy, which it's, would have been 2013. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> so we have a question for Tiffany. I can't read that. Uh, do you have any tips on working with color temperatures in a painting to improve my color temps uh, and experiment? Um, but I find I stick to the reference a lot. So do, is there anything that you think, um, is, are there any tips to try to like experiment with things to pull away from the reference um yeah i think I, I well the one thing i will say is that i like how they ask about color temperatures because that is actually a really great ingredient or a secret i would say after you've established 
you know, the value structure um, and, you know, a lot of times people play with saturation and all that stuff, but subtle c temperature shifts is what I love to play with. So kudos on that for um, bringing that up. Um, I would say I have some digital tricks. I don't know if they're looking for digital tricks, yeah. but some digital tricks I will do is I like to use masks a lot. Uh -huh. So um, some... Actually, well, real quick, what, what is your digital... Um, digital painting software of choice? Uh, Adobe Photoshop. Okay. Yeah, so I work on Adobe Photoshop and um, basically I personally like to paint all in one layer because mm -hmm. coming from a traditional background, I hate dealing with, you know, little things. So after I paint certain, like I'll separate the character on one layer and then maybe the background, I should guess, a background on another layer. But then after I have solidified more or less the value structure, I'll just screw all, merge it, and then I will just lasso and then cut again when I need to. We do have a, there's an example of this uh, on the Proco channel. There is. You did this one. There's a, you there's are a, so good at this, Steven. <laughs> just just plugging in. I love that's, it. Well, yes. I edited this one, so I know it exists. <laughs> that's true. You did. Yeah, and I did do that trick. So um, that's actually a really good example. I have a on Proco dot, or on the YouTube channel and on Proco.com, I did a, a digital thumbnail demo, full demo, and you can see how I used just the marquee tool, actually the marquee tool and the U tool. So I like to play with um, ellipses and rectangles mm -hmm. to basically establish really simple shapes and construct this abstract um, layout before I start maybe, I guess, implying detail. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like Natalia said, or, you know, and, and Leon said, it's all about shapes, right? And so I like to really just play around with, with shapes, just shapes of value, shape, mm -hmm. shapes of value, right? Value of shapes, value of shapes, color of shapes. Um. Wait, Leon, at, or no, sorry, not Leon, I'm, I'm sorry. Joseph, as her teacher, how do you feel that she's doing explaining this uh, this topic? Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, said, thank you, Joseph. He said she's doing tremendous. Joseph was one of my favorite teachers, so. Yo, know, re <laughs> really, I, I came into Joseph's class not knowing how to, well, I sucked in that class, I know, because I didn't get proportions right, but I learned a, a ton about not just te the technical side of oil painting, but the, like, how do you push just those subtleties and, and value and just push edge control. And I don't think back then I really understood or knew how to apply everything. And now I think if, you know, thinking back to everything I've learned it everything makes sense a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, but I digress. Uh, so, <laughs> so, the, so the digital trick that I like to do, you don't have to merge everything, but let's say you wanted to add slightly warmer temperature tone in your background. I like to use masks, and so you can use adjustment layers, and you can put um, one one adjustment layer I really like is the color balance mm -hmm. adjustment layer. I like to push it, so I will push, let's say, the mid tones to like more purple than I want, or more red, whatever your piece you think needs, and then I work inversely. So then I will turn that adjustment layer, the mask black. Are you following? Yeah, no, absolutely. You follow, I yeah. know, you're following me. Yeah, 100%. Um, I'm not very good at explaining this stuff. Turn the mask black, so then you can't see anything you did. And then I will take a sort of brush that allows a little bit of texture to sort of lightly brush back. Something with some bite? Some bite, yeah. Yeah, yeah. not too strong, though, because then you'll just end up making harsh marks. Yeah. But something with a little bit of bite and texture to just sort of um, ease and brush that those pushed tones back in. And that's mm -hmm. how you can get some pushed. You know, a lot of people say, like, how do you get those pushed colors? you know in, in your paintings and that's that's a trick you know i'm not exactly inventing every single stroke sometimes it's digitally through adjustment layers mm -hmm. you you can do that with with color mixing like these guys are doing and with traditional like these guys are doing you really have to understand you know how your colors are working mm -hmm. together in relationships and that's why it's such a great way to understand color but um yeah and I, I don't want to harp, harp on it or anything, but no. there, there's actually a really a, a lot to be learned uh, in how you can do both the traditional and digital things approaching with the same techniques. Right. Because you did two videos for this one. I did. Where one was traditional doing the same small thumbnail size thing, and then digital came out after this one. Mm -hmm. So you get to see those two techniques get applied to it, and you get to see the strengths and weaknesses of both yeah. of those. Yeah. 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 And I think it was funny because I think Charlie was saying I was a lot more, or no, you told me that. I was a lot more tense or something in the gouache one. No, no, you, know, you, you were animated, I think, in the second one, because you were like, okay, let's do this. Was I? I yeah. seriously felt like I was more chill and like, okay, I got like, not like I got this, but like, oh, I've already done one, so I think this will. Actually, I was nervous because 
I never, I don't work on a Cintiq, so it was really mm. weird for me. So I think I was kind of like, all right, let's make this work. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, it was it was funny because after I did the digital version, then you look back, stepping back from your painting, you see things that you want to change. Mm -hmm. and Even at that thumbnail scale. Oh yeah, distance is so important. I think that's probably one of the most important things you can do is like get distance because you see so much more when when you step back and come back with fresh eyes. Absolutely. So I was able to do that with, with those two demos. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Wait, I, just, I want to check in. How, how do you think Ethan's doing on his piece right now? I can't see his painting. Oh, no, that's why. No, we're, we're theorizing right now. So e uh, Ethan is actually doing a version of Stan's painting as a drawing in Procreate. Ethan, are you a Procreate person? See, I'm How's not it going? Ooh. Yeah, all, all the gestures and stuff throw me off so yeah. hard. I can't. I Ultimate. think his painting's gonna turn out great. How do you feel it is, Ethan? Uh, it's gonna be blocky, and it's going to be. Well, first of all, we have to consider. Yeah, I'm gonna get you here. Well, first of all, we have to consider uh, whom I'm painting from, mm -hmm. and I'm painting from Stan, so it might not turn out the best. Are you blaming <laughs> your He's mistakes blaming. on me? I did not plan for this at all, <laughs> for this to happen. But any, but that is to say, if there are any mistakes in this, it is specifically because of of Stan. Yeah, a mid master study, if you will. Right. Nice. It's a mid master study. So I'm. Um, it's very very simple. Blocking oh, that's in. Awesome. It's um. So I do uh, cool. kind of similar to you, like color keying type yeah. of things too as well. And coming from animation, I try to keep it really really simple. I'm trying to stay in control. And also, I'm trying to use some of these things that I've watched people do throughout yeah. you know, this lesson. At first, I was like, okay, I see all these colors. I see the cheeks are this color, this is that color. No, I have to chill out. I have to see what's the underlying colors and, uh, and just try to keep it as simple as possible. I'm not trying to make a pretty painting right now. What I'm trying to do is understand the, the colors and um, just try to take in what everybody did. There's so many different ways you can do sessions, painting sessions, right? Oh, I'm gonna make the prettiest thing. It's gonna be so sexy. Right now, I already know it's not gonna be because, <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. His stuff is actually extremely controlled and that's why I wanted Stan because I resonate a lot with Stan's style of structure. The way that he blocked it out too is very similar to the way that I would block it out. Go watch, uh, I'm sure we can watch the other stream, right? We Which? can, uh, the yesterday's stream, mm -hmm. we can oh, watch absolutely. that. Yeah, yeah, the, well, it, all, all the streams are going, they're, they're all there. All the, the streams, updates. okay, all the streams are still up. Okay, well, uh, if, if you go back and watch the, the way that he blocked it in, I was trying to mm -hmm. learn from that as well. So I would encourage people to try to paint along and try to take a little bit from everybody's, uh, uh, like everybody said here, that's the main thing we've learned that so far is the beginning phases are the most important mm -hmm. so i'm just trying to do that right now i do have a question for you of how entertainment uh like this versus entertainment how people can p potentially move from traditional painting right into entertainment so like what you were talking about can you talk a little bit more about what you do as and, and how that relates to maybe traditional art or fine I art yeah, how people, I actually kind of did the opposite. I I moved, I studied animation mm -hmm. in college and then I, um, I had been, I mean, I took art classes as a kid since six years old, but then I, I more seriously pursued like the whole fine art route. Do I stand here? No, you can come closer this way. Oh, okay. Um, the fine art route uh, mm -hmm. around 2016 after loving Vincent, so I think that was when like I was really like, okay, like there's so many other artists around me who are painting and I wanted to do that. So I kind of have the opposite. And then I would say um, for traditional artists who who want to go into um, entertainment, you're gonna have to know the software. I don't know if that's the best way to start, but you're definitely going to have to know the software. But I would say an upper hand that you would have is that because because you, you you probably understand color well and you have color mixed um, physically in front of you, you know, it's, it's really just a matter of learning the technical side of Photoshop or Procreate or whatever program you're using. Mm. And once you master that, like, I feel like you're gonna skyrocket. I've taught mentorship students. One student I, I taught, she was an oil painter. 
really great oil painter and she wanted to exactly do what um, Ethan suggested, you know, like switch over to digital, not switch over, but use digital painting as a means to help her with the oil paintings, but also be able to go out and do plein air digitally because it is ultimately faster. You don't have to get out your oil paintings or get out your gouaches and, you know, you could just whip out your iPad and do a three minute sketch. Um, and so it is arguably faster and she, like she, it was amazing she picked it up probably in two weeks and three weeks and she was creating amazing paintings even I was like wow Diane like I don't this is crazy like you're going out and doing these paintings I didn't have to coach her much what I was coaching her more on was just the technical side of it and she picked it up really fast so I would almost say you know, if you're going from that route, you have an upper hand, just take the time, the patience to learn a software because it can be really frustrating. I know I I taught myself, I started painting with a mouse when I first started learning Adobe Photoshop. And then when I switched to a tablet, it's like, what the heck is a tablet? I don't need a tablet. And then now, of course, you know, I can't live without a tablet, but I haven't, um, I don't have a Cintiq or anything and I'm fine with my Wacom tablet. Um, and then the other route, route, is it route or route? It's, it's up to you. Okay. Depends. I, I say a lot of words wrong, by the way. Just correct me. Like, <laughs> you could take either <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, the other, the other way, you know, if you're going from digital to traditional, um, I have, I have a lot of friends as well, you know, like, oh, I want to do traditional plein air, mm -hmm. but I'm scared. And that's always the way, like, I don't, I'm, I just, I'm scared. I don't have the patience to take out my pains. And I urge them, I just, it's like once you catch that plein air love bug where you go out and you're actually mixing, I almost guarantee, unless you really don't like the setup or the messiness, which, you know, it can be a reason, you will fall in love with it and, and you will just start painting, um, you know, incorporating traditional painting. Right, Christian? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're supposed to go painting. Um, and uh, you know into your workflow and I think once you start doing that you will find that everything you're learning in traditional planar painting or doesn't have to planar painting just still life studies whatever it is as long as you're mixing traditionally that will feed back into your digital workflow and you'll be able to find uh, all these uh, connections between like oh so because I mix complementary colors this way if I shift the color picker and the color cube this way that's why it's giving me this and it's really really cool i'm actually teaching a uh i'm doing a workshop at vision x live for that uh, through proco so um that's actually going to be my topic you know how how to get a deeper understanding of color through both mediums um so yeah that would be my not short answer to no, <laughs> that's, that's what we like we like the the not short answers we like that oh, great. um I so i am wondering though um that was a very almost like a technical side of you know you're mentioning programs and all that but now i'm thinking like ah, so i see I, I meet a lot of students in film and animation and they they go straight digital and they almost don't even look at this type of stuff and the the things yeah. that uh, that traditional artists do yeah i'm talking about like you know plein air painting or even this type of painting you know daisasumi robert mm -hmm. kundo those type of painters yeah very traditional yeah um, was this study they, from life right there you go yeah. can you talk a little bit about that um, and yeah just like how you how this can translate into that because what you're doing essentially is using real life and real lighting all the traditional forms of that and then you're using that and creating a whole new world yeah that you're you're capable of creating a whole new you know cinematically a whole new world uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did talk about the t um, the technical side. Am, am I talking? Yeah. Oh, no, okay, um, but no, you're certainly right. I mean, um, you're talking about like studying from life, right? Like what Dice and like they did the still life studies. Um, it's a huge deal. I, I think one of the things that I will see, like Ethan said, digital artists will do is they'll go kind of straight from copying from photo reference. Um, in my opinion, photo references take out about like 80% of your color, unless you're a pro and you can start, you know, creating colors and f creating color relationships in your head. It's really hard. And I would not suggest studying from photo references and trying to do a really, really detailed digital painting. Um, you're going to cut yourself short from seeing the big picture, seeing, you know, the, the relationships and value and color when you go straight to detail and, you know, that and studying from life helps with that because when you're out in the field painting in plein air, you don't have all the time in the world to create a beautiful painting. So you're forced to really just capture the big shapes. And that's what a huge benefit of it is. It's, 
it's 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 going out there capturing those color notes maybe trying to refine it later um but it's not about creating a beautiful painting it's about going out there and 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 just capturing something with your soul that sounds too poetic um oh that's uh, yeah it's a big difference i think um yeah like you know when you're painting from a photo it's you you can take your time but you're you're, you're you you will be uh robbing yourself of obser of being able to really observe color truly with your eyes so like ethan said i really highly recommend if you're a beginning beginner digital painter um try to do a digital still life from life you know don't do it from a photo set up a simple still life in front of you uh, i did that on infinite painter a ton so when i was first you know learning that app uh i was setting up a teacup or something or you know fruit and I was doing still lifes of fruits and all this stuff and even that you know practicing to paint it from different kinds of lighting whether it be through window lighting or going outside and setting up in a sunny lighting scenario uh, with direct sunlight you know observe how the shadows change observe how the bounce light changes observe how you know um, uh, you know the cast shadows change and all that stuff and once you do enough of that uh, the reason why, for example, I can do my color keys fast for my job, uh, or I hope I'm fast, I don't know, I think I'm okay, um, is because I've done so much plein air, and I could probably still do more, that I've sort of, am, I think, I've built up like a mental library of all these lighting scenarios so I can sort of pull from my bank. I don't necessarily need to pull a lot from reference. And when I do, it'll be kind of film references because film references, they push the lighting a lot. And, you know, it's it's really cool to like, how how is this director, you know, I don't know. It's, it's I just, I film is another, you should also do film studies. There's so many things you could do. You should do film studies and still life studies. Um, Can you talk a little bit about film studies? Yeah, studies? yeah. 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 Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, with film studies, so planar studies is great. I think it's really important to do planar studies when you're, um, you know, beginner, intermediate. Actually, it's really important to do planar studies throughout the rest of your life, I think. But, um, but because you're constantly sharpening your skills, it's kind of that thing where you can go out and sharpen your skills. And then uh, what was the next thing? Uh, planar studies. No, there's one more thing. Film studies? Yeah, okay. We'll just go to film studies. And then with film studies, it's... Wait, what was the other thing? Okay, I forgot. With, <laughs> I've like lost my train of thought. With film studies, it's great because your study... Oh, master studies. Master studies are also really important. Um, I think master studies, you... Master studies are great because you essentially don't have to stress your brain out sometimes by figuring out the composition but you're studying the composition of another master and how they've used color you know and everything to to create their masterpiece and you know one thing i like to tell students is when they're doing master studies don't be so focused again on copying every single stroke i used to do that when i first started off with master studies it took me like 10 hours because I'd, I'd be anal about like oh my god like that stroke wasn't the same or like that brush digital brush texture didn't match the oil painting texture that that stuff becomes irrelevant after a certain point focus more on if you've captured the shape language the value structure all the relationships of of that you know over those things like brush detail um i think i personally think that is mo more important and then film studies is also wonderful because you're studying how a director has pushed lighting you know to 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 tell a story and in the end when you're doing a painting you're telling a story right whether it be a figure or a landscape you know you're trying to tell us uh your story a story with emotion with color and, and with light and i know that gets says a lot but people are are they they are drawn to a painting because it speaks to them in some way it has it has storytelling and you know that's what we do as artists one level and so I think when you're doing film studies, you are studying and observing how that director has. Oh gosh, Ethan, did you? Um, I don't. Did you watch Dune, the latest one? Yeah, I don't know. There's this YouTube video on how they're they're talking about how the director. Because I listen to this podcast uh, called Go Creative, and the guy interviews cinematographers. Do you know that one? Okay. Yeah, he specifically uh, interviews production designers and 
and um, and 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 cinematographers, and hearing the cinematographer, the guy, he also did um, Lion, which is one of my favorite films, amazing film, um, and yeah, he did a lot of great films. And for Dune, it was just figuring out how to get that natural, like that naturalistic lighting, how it looks versus how they actually set it up. You know, it's the lighting in that film is so beautiful. Like I took so many screenshots. And then when you, you know, when you study the, f the, the film studies, you know, one level could be like, okay, it's, you know, to study value structure, atmosphere, but then you could push yourself and color, you know, how is it supporting the story? Like everything, how is it supporting the narrative? And because you know the narrative and hopefully you've watched the movie, you know, you can do those film studies with even more integrity. Uh, and, and, and then you're also adding into your mental brain, right? Your mental brain. <laughs> you're also adding into your mental library yeah your repertoire of oh i can draw from oh that like graphic you know how they cut that and how it made you feel like for example you're watching me like oh i remember how that that face was lit it just this the bottom part was lit in light and the rest was in shadow how did that make you feel then you can apply that to your your painting yeah yeah let's go take a seat real quick yeah, yeah you, my mental brain is my favorite type of brain <laughs> <laughs> what are you Oh, okay. Uh, Rocktober says, can Tiffany be my art mom? I love her. Oh, and <laughs> yeah, take, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty active on, not really, but I haven't been active on Instagram, but I mean, email me if you have questions. I usually, I really try to respond to people. I, I really care about, it really it makes me happy when people tag me in Instagram stories and say they've watched a YouTube video either on Proco or my personal channel and they're like, what Oh, I tried YouTube? this technique. Huh? What's your, what's your personal channel? Oh, it's just it's just Tiffany Mang art. Yeah. So what's Tiffany Mang. And then my yeah, and then my Instagram is Tiffany Mang Art. So it's pretty simple. Oh, but it's T I F F A N I E. So that will probably where mm -hmm. it gets most people. Um, but yeah, I, I I really it really makes me happy, I think. Um, like I said, I love teaching, and when I see like someone figure something out, it, I think that's one of the best things, like the best feeling. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, reach out to me. I can be anyone's online. Well, I don't want to like overextend myself, but I yeah, just just ask questions. <laughs> we're, we're, we're slowly <laughs> okay, just Fancy, there fancy. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Thank you, sir. I believe in you. Well, <laughs> so, yeah, this is just the start. Let's see if we can get a close-up on this. And I'm going to show you the worst de design in history real quick. This, perhaps, this is not the worst design in history necessarily, but I'll show it to you in a minute. So this is just the rough, like, That's little really cool. block that I did. I was just starting to move into color, like, in the cheeks and stuff. But, uh... But just like the basis of it is there, and you know, might throw in a highlight or two. Anyway, so here's the worst design in history. We were praising Apple earlier. Look at this. Look at that. So Wait, now, that, oh, that's interesting. That's how you charge it. Now you can't draw. That is you can't really charge weird. Your iPad, and if you have kids or a dog, they just come and break that right. I've off. never seen that. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's bad. Do you really know bad. you can get a case where you can um, charge the pen? Uh, like I have, oh, I, I have like to, my... I'm an artist. I like to put myself through a lot of suffering yeah. for no reason. <laughs> that just seems like you could knock the pen off and then break the pen or yeah. hurt someone. <laughs> so what I wanted to talk about a little bit is like film studies and lighting is mm -hmm. they're taking real life and they're just taking it to the max, right? Yeah. The most beautiful designs that you can. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in this painting scenario, you're almost doing the same thing, which mm -hmm. can also relate to entertainment, design, and painting. Oh yeah. A lot of it. Uh, a lot of people don't know about that route. You know. Mm -hmm. What are you? What are you doing at Marvel? You said you're doing a key. I'm just focusing on keys. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's other amazing designers um they yeah. figure out certain um concept pieces like the layout um and then so it's really it's really symbiotic because they'll work off of my color keys create bigger beautiful paintings and then and then some i'll work off of their paintings and then oh, yeah. go back to the color keys so it feeds off 
Oh, okay. <laughs> what was the most difficult thing that you had to deal with during uh, like color keys or in the entertainment industry in general? Um, I'm gonna try to fix this mic. I, th um, that's a good question. I don't know. I think, I think in terms of you know this newest job with Marvel, I I I've never actually like I had to paint a lot of you know like lower. Sorry. Okay. Um, different different landscapes like explosions. I like not say too much, but like just different things that I'm used to because I'm I'm a landscape painter. So I think figuring uh, that out and um and you know how how to find reference that was definitely a challenge. Uh, and then with with my last job with Cartoon Saloon, it was I was also doing a lot of color keys and uh, just. I think taking kind of I think a, a difficult part can be like taking all the notes your director gives you and then like okay these changes and these things and then and then funneling it back in and then translating it so that you give them what you think they want I think yeah. that can be challenging yeah that is challenging the client is always uh, it's always a challenging thing the thing that I think is interesting and correct me if I'm wrong here but in my experience in color key is the same the, what you want to do in color key is the same thing that everybody here has been talking about this whole time i think which is the most important part is the beginning you're blocking it yeah. in all the details yeah. don't be matter nobody mm. cares about no that. one cares that's one thing that i've actually been learning mm. um and you're absolutely right it's which is why i really like doing color keys is i actually i don't sometimes i don't enjoy doing the detail as much although I can get into it. I like doing color keys. I'm sure, you know, you've mm -hmm. had the experience. It's like you can just put in those big color note shapes oh, yeah. and it's like, oh, that reads from a thumbnail. Yeah. And you're like, let's see how this works as a progression. And you can quickly see how everything is coming together, um, you know, versus uh, a more detailed concept painting. You marinate in it a little bit more. And that's also fun, but stressful. <laughs> yeah, it is very stressful. Um, and color keys, you can just kind of go move through them pretty quickly. Yeah. What? the thing that so you I, i'm sure you have an example that you're thinking of in your head of like a color key that you either like raised yourself as you're always looking at that one as you're you're studying doing your own for me it was always dice Sumi's, i believe or robert kunda I, I don't know who whom's whom's paintings what or whatever but it was the sto uh, toy story i think toy story yeah, one yeah. just woody's face you know just a big block head and you can you oh can, i think i know what you're talking, you know what I'm talking about, about? Yeah. like you can really see like the the paint strokes and the brushes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you just put it far away you blur your vision and you you don't know you have no clue whether or not there is detail in there or whatever uh yeah those it's beautiful it's beautiful you can see the the the, the balance light and, and it's very simple look at that and it's just like if that's what you if you can do that then that's all you got exactly do. i totally yeah. agree actually yesterday in the live stream you're looking at joseph's painting mm. and i remember you said oh i really like this stage right now where it's just like the 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 like not the beginning but like kind of when you start to see things emerging and that's i was i was at home i was like that's my favorite stage too and i was like i, I love that him to finish it. i know no that's a lot of times i was like you know sometimes it's that beautiful emergence yeah. and i'm like oh perfect just don't just don't work on it even more it's it's so i think it's almost like what do you think is it like the what it could be and you're almost putting yourself in or yeah. it's like you can imagine it yourself and it's so it's almost um. selfish. You're letting the viewer <laughs> kind of be like, kind of imagining the rest of it, potentially, maybe. Yeah, I guess There's so. There's so many artsy ways to look at it. Yeah. So for one second, I want to talk about how much we hate uh, other artists. <laughs> okay. Um, and by that, I mean those students that are like, oh, I like all the, the big detail and like all the concept art. Look at all of the detail, you know? There's a lot of people that are like that. Yeah. They, they immediately think, they look at a painting, they go, lot of detail that's good that's my parents yeah oh that's good yeah well <laughs> that's the way most people are right and that's the way i look at a lot of the marvel films you know it's like a lot of detail really good it's like action big strong man yeah you know but yeah us so like nerdy artists or whatever we see that half finished stage we're like right that's good right we know the simplicity i, I don't know why we like that stage i guess I is it an artist thing I, I mean i think so i think it's almost i think as because i mean I, I guess when i was smaller younger i i sorry i told you no i my get English that too was my second language um i did the same thing yeah. when i was smaller yeah um, when, when i was size. two inches yeah. tall um <laughs> um i mean i i think it's almost 
like like for example you see that like my dad shows me this where it's like someone on youtube it's like they do this super like realistic drawing yeah. and my and my dad he'll do this but can you do that and i'm like yeah, I guess if I put like 200 hours in mm. it, but I don't want why to. Why would like, I do that? Yeah, and I, he's like, well, well, but I'm like, I don't want to. He's like, why? And I'm like, because that's just it's it's a, it's cool, but it doesn't it doesn't draw me in in any way. Yeah. For example, um, not to say that I don't like super super detail. Like there's some people. It has it has its place. It has its place. Yeah, but there's something about just the the rawness of something. I think there there is a movement. And gesture and spontaneity to it. I think that's what draws people in. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe we're just super nerdy and we've been through the process. Maybe. So we, know. we just, we, yeah, we, we know. Yeah. We, yeah. I mean, I think that's part of it too. And colors too, right? Like, I really like the refined, uh, sometimes really uh, simple color palette. And then other people, you know, they like the big color. And What do you mean by big color? Big color, big color, big man uh like bright maybe, flashy uh, what's his name the the guy with the big i don't remember his name he's got some kind of big hair and he's always painting he's an old school oh big ross uh, big ross big ross <laughs> no that's not it big ross Bob Ross. sure that yeah that guy big, big ross not that good i don't really i never really liked his, his i never did either actually i never actually i never watched this stuff yeah Whoa. but confession on live stream Wow, I've never that's kind of rude. <laughs> wow. Why don't you like him? No, I said I've never watched this stuff. Oh, you never watched yeah. it, period? Yeah, not really. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, I just made a major confession. I'm going to lose, like, so many followers. <laughs> Wait, is, this, is this about, about Sam? No, Bob, Bob Ross. Ross. Oh, okay. yeah. you watched... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've never watched Stan, though, either, right? No, I have, definitely. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, wow. Stan's amazing. Question. <laughs> <laughs> stupid, stupid. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, so that's like, I think we went over the film industry pretty much. There's a lot of things that I could go into about film and setting up composition. I would love to hear more about that. Well, I mean, I think it has a lot to, well, it, I have, there's so many things that I could talk about, but one of the main things that I like, and I try to point out to my students as well, is just look at all the lights in the the backgrounds of the film studies there's always whether or not it's a it's, there's like practical lighting and then there's prop lighting mm -hmm. and one of the one of the things that i always try to show my students is go watch game of thrones uh, and yeah. look because they don't have electricity you know oh that's i don't true. think right they don't well, have electricity back then, yeah. yeah back yeah. way back then yeah. back in the day they didn't have electricity back in yeah. back in the game of thrones times um but that's so was so that was so was so dark we're not going to talk about that last season <laughs> The, but if you look at the, the lighting, they don't have electricity, so how are they going to light those scenes? And we like sparkly things, you know, mm -hmm. so. And it's a nice way to silhouette people. So if you, uh, mm. even in some of these scenarios, I could see that being really nice. Typically, you have lights going down, hitting a, uh, the, 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 the subject. Mm -hmm. But I would really like to see like a, a light right behind the subject like a rim lighter back yeah light, because yeah. it's it's very cinematic mm -hmm. and they do that it's just like all of the professional shots in hollywood or whatever most of the time they've got a light like this there'd yeah. be a light behind us and like i was saying in game of thrones keep an eye out you yeah. got candles you've always got a little something something and yeah. it's typically in threes mm -hmm. i do want to talk about threes in a minute because three i, I love the i love three three is my favorite but I do want to ask everybody about their opinion on three and big, medium, and small and design-wise. Are you talking about the rule of thirds? Rule of theory? thirds and also three and everything. Mm -hmm. Three is in everything. Three is a very big deal. Uh, That's interesting. And lighting, too. Yeah. You, got your, you got your three little lights in the background. Anyway, check out the lights in Game of Thrones. Okay. What, do you th what do you feel about the number three? I think three is a good number because it's not too much and it's also an odd number so you mm. can have more instead of splitting things like two two you know you can you can group things and have one alone yeah <laughs> well Leon was talking earlier about um, you have three forms of shadow three forms of light mm. right you got like highlight and then I don't know the other names and I don't Half, care um, to know the names core shadow big light medium light smaller light something like that yeah but can you explain yeah what those the three terminologies are in those 
three darks and three lights. Me? Yeah, or shadows, three shadow, three light. I've never heard light and, and split in three, but I guess it would be the highlight, the core shadow, and the bounce light, um, and maybe the cash shadow. I mean, I think cash shadow is important because then it grounds the th thing to the floor. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So um, contact shadow, or was it contact? Yeah. Something? Yeah. But I will say, a, a lot of people will forget. Like they will forget one of those things, mm -hmm. and then it just it breaks the believability of form. Yeah. You know, so like for example, like, well, in animation we like to push bounce light a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And so bounce light will be really push that warmish, happy tone, um, and you know sometimes maybe too much, but you know that subtlety is also really important in my opinion. And then um, you know what kind of shadow, hard, softer, yes. hard cast shadow. The penumbra, I think that's the technical Pen term. I, I just know, learned that recently. Penumbra? Yeah, penumbra. I might be penumbra. wrong. Penumbra. That sounds kind of like some kind of bone. Yeah. <laughs> pen pen something like that. Pen penum something. Yeah. Um, but it's typically in threes, right? Yeah. The way that you do those things. Right. Or uh, light shadow and core shadow, perhaps. And definitely yeah, big, medium, and small shape. Yeah, so. big, medium, and small, yeah. I would like to... Uh, oh, yeah, what is that? That's the penumbra. Yes, yes. Oh, wait. Exactly. The what? softness of the shadow. So Stan has a pretty soft... Oh, nice. A penumbra? Oh, so you have... So you have a pretty soft penumbra, right? Is that what it would be, the technical term? Is, or, or does penumbra already mean soft? I don't even know. Okay, okay. Joseph has enlightened us all. <laughs> that just sounded really interesting. I like your penumbra too. <laughs> yeah, they're asking about the model. The model does take breaks. Uh, every now and then you can see the model walking around. Yeah, of course. Taking a, taking a look at the, at the paintings. Being a model is really hard. You're a model? No, I'm not. But I, I actually just on um, on this weekend I was posing because my friend's doing a huge oil painting, and so he used me as a reference. Mm. You said you're a model, so you mm. know this. Like yeah. even holding up an arm for 15 minutes, like yeah. just like this, and I was like, I'm dying. I need a break. Yeah. Like it's and even sitting is really hard. I was doing a handstand for like 20 minutes. It's crazy. I can't imagine that. Yeah. That's amazing. Kudos yeah. to it. It's it so crazy. much core work and. Yoga. It's rough. And yeah, it's rough. <laughs> so I have great admiration, admiration for all you guys. Who, sorry, I don't think yeah, I said that. Yeah, they're starting to tighten up their paintings. Actually, this is really cool. So, uh, do you paint? You painted traditionally and digitally. Yes. Is that right? Yes. So, um, do you have any opinion over like the? Um, so like, Leon's painting is massive, right? It's so big, and then we go down to the smaller paintings. And they're much they're much tighter as opposed to like uh, Leon's, which mm -hmm. is you know broader strokes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, have you had to deal with that? Do you paint like really big versus really small? And uh, like, can he go more detailed, or is it just like a matter of time? That's a great question. Um, I uh, to answer the first part, I I don't do big, big as much. Although I think I just it might not be as big as his, but my latest oil painting is about that size. That was hell. Uh, it was, it was, it was such an incredible learning experience. Partially because of the size, it was mind blowing to me. Like, mm. um, and I went through hell and back with that painting. I almost actually t wanted to take a razor and cut up that painting. Uh, Have you ever done that before? No, but I really was. And then what happened was, um, so it's it's going to be in a, a gallery show coming up in July. Um, so I'm really happy it got accepted. But basically, similar to probably what they have done. I start off with the block in like we talked about. Yeah. And then I started going into detail, I guess pretty early in the beginning because I got excited. And then I woke up one morning, fresh eye. Mm -hmm. I looked at the painting. Oh. I thought, this is complete shit. So, so much time went into so it. So much time. And I literally took a palette knife and I scraped off everything. I kid you not. I, I scraped off everything. Were you crying? No, I was really happy. Oh. Yeah, oh. and I was like, this is the answer because I was like, nothing was, I realized nothing was working in my painting. Then, right after I scraped off. I just am trying to make sure, was it strategic scraping or were you just no, like in a frenzy? It was kind of a frenzy. Like, I didn't have any, really any order to it. And so I was like, I just need to get this, all this stuff off. And then I thought I was doing the right thing. Then, about two hours later, I looked at it again. And I thought, 
that looks terrible. Now I really don't know what to do. So now I probably should just take a razor and just, you know, slash it up. And so what I did was I took the painting outside and I put it in the backyard and I didn't look at it. For two weeks, I didn't look at it. And then, long story short, I had a friend come over and he critiqued it and that helped boost me back out of my rut. And then I figured compositional things. It was a lot of compositional problems and value problems. That was the crux of it. So that part was the, a really big learning experience because wow. it wasn't about color. It was a little bit about color temperature. Everything was too warm. But the crux of it was that I showed a few friends and they're like, Tiffany, where's your big sense of shape that you're good at? You know, mm. you're known for, you know, big shapes. Like there's so many strokes right now that are disrupting the overall big shapes because it was such a big painting but, yes because it that was partly i didn't know how to translate something smaller because i do um so i paint smaller in gouache i usually do like six by six gouache mm -hmm. studies so to transfer it to a 30 by 40 inch painting was a big much bigger feat than i thought oh, it would that's be a really um so i have almost something similar in digital sometimes yeah like when i was first starting out i didn't know what was a big canvas 3k by right. 3K. 5k 6k right. versus you know like a couple of pixels wide yeah i didn't know the difference and sometimes i would just make random canvas sizes and i just wouldn't have the same flow as before mm -hmm. because the brushes were naturally so much more detailed right i had to realize like oh i can start in a really small like 500 by 500 really pixely small little crappy little canvas as yeah. small as almost super small and that helped me gain that confidence of blocking out mm -hmm. in the smallest, simplest way possible, as opposed to 20K pixels wide, just like extremely huge or 50K or whatever. Um, and. Uh, but you can also shrink it in Photoshop and paint small. Yeah, 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 you can, yeah. Which you can't really do in traditional painting. Right, yeah. So I, almost, I, I can kind of understand that a little bit where you get too into the details right so take, right. take in consideration your canvas size exactly right? yeah and yeah. I'm, I'm curious with you if you've ever you know on, on photoshop you've done you know a small small painting and color study and then you're like okay now it's time to do the more refined paint kind of like what they did with smaller studies yeah. and then blow it up and then there's something that you simplified in that smaller study that you can't figure out in your bigger painting mm. that happens to me all the time um, the study for me is often the better piece. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're more loose, and also it's a big mental thing, right? Where you're just like, you know what? I, I can make it, it, mistakes. That's a really good point. And instead yeah. of being like, I can't make mistakes, your hand's doing this, you're no noodling a noodle. That's what professionals call it. As opposed <laughs> to just be like, you know what? I don't really care. And if you have that mentality, bam, you're just knocking them out super, super fast. That's a really good point that Ethan yeah. brought up. It's almost like your mindset because... Not that you don't care, but you're more, Confidence. you're just more willing to just make mistakes and put down things because you're not so emotionally, I don't know, like, or stressed about making something For sure. that you experiment more. And then in turn, you take more risks. Sometimes you make mistakes, but then you can learn from them. So we're, we're, I'm going to finish this up and we're going to get the question. Uh, get, there's a question that we have, but um, another way to do this is put a put a new layer on a hotkey and that's the way i do this all the time i do Control shift alt z go click click and now i just do it super fast make a new layer now you have that new confidence i don't care I, i'll make a new layer and just scribble all over it just to warm myself up get up do a couple jumping jacks do a front flip <laughs> then get back to it my body's you know like, your I heart rate flowing yeah like i don't care i don't care anymore and i can make those confident strokes and i can guarantee you if you're painting on a layer that has a bunch of stuff and you're scared of messing it up yeah uh, even in storyboarding, as soon as I make that new layer, I'm like, oh, I can relax. Boom, knock yeah. out the first try. And I'm like, whoa, it was so easy. I was so mm -hmm. scared before. Yeah. Anyway, do you have that similar issue where oh, you're like, yeah. 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 You just need the confidence sometimes because it's in you. But uh, yeah. sometimes you're just a little bit too scared. Don't be so scared. Quit Don't be so too, scared. Yeah. It's just a freaking digital canvas. You yeah. just mess it up. It doesn't matter. Yeah. All right, we're going to do a smooth transition here, <laughs> and that's why I like to keep them real smooth. We're going to do a question. Question for Ethan, is there anything that you have learned in the past two days watching these painters that will let you influence your question. own work? I was going to ask you that. Oh, I, this is really making me want to paint. Um, overall, the big answer is no. I pretty much already know how to do all of this 100%. It's easy. Painting is easy. 
but uh, what we talked about yesterday is that community is a big deal, and getting, being passionate about making your own art. You know, it, it's e it, it's so easy for me to be like, I can do all this all on my own. I don't need anybody else. I, I just, you know, get stuck in my own little world, especially these days, chilling at your computer. But this type of stuff really helps motivate me. Mm. So right. if I've learned anything, it's uh, actually, we were talking about abstract paintings earlier, and that really gave me, uh, that's that was beautiful the abstract and how much more respect I have for abstract painting mm -hmm. now and yeah. um, the sometimes the technical skills that go into it that we don't even know about uh, in design and composition that's what I've learned uh, and also it's very different if you're watching a professional in person because you can see them you can see them just being like Ugh, squirming and not really not sure about their own paintings and oh, being yeah. insecure and then they make a breakthrough and they're like oh, okay they're in a stride they're doing their thing and then they get back to their like i don't like it they're sitting back and they're just kind of chilling so that helps me realize there's a flow to all of this there it, you, what we see is a finished product and we're like oh that was easy they just knocked that out like it was no problem as an artist you're always in pain <laughs> you're always, always struggling in pain. And that's the thing. You're always problem solving. And yes. It's very taxing. I love that line. Yeah. You're always in pain. Always Have you learned problems. anything from, from, from this at all? I think definitely. I think it's really interesting to see. I think yesterday when I was seeing how everyone started off differently, that was really cool. Um, like Natalia was starting off with really broad abstract shapes and both Natalia's and um, really just to see them come together slowly that's been really cool leon as well like oh i love leon's underpainting that was really mm -hmm. so i like learning things like that and then stan was very careful and and to see those really simple shapes blocked in and and then now he's adding the detail and those little subtleties of um like the smaller strokes that really just start to form the face it's really cool to see yeah. and um yeah joseph painting it when, when he put that eye in i was like oh my gosh <laughs> i remember yesterday <laughs> here's your tongue yeah it was like the eye gleam or something but no i was like that just just one thing can just bring so much life um that's a really good point. I'm going to go over there and ask him about yeah. how, he, how do you, in traditional painting, how do you then go about moving an eye or something like that if you realize, uh-oh, the structure is a, a bit off. So I'm going to go ask him about that. Go for it. Um, as for Stan's, uh, like you were saying, you, you called his painting simple. I more like the look no, of not it simple. Special. It's, not it's special. No, I didn't say simple. Right. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you so much thank for talking. Thank you. No, thank you, and, Ethan. Uh, You'll stick around, right? Yeah, yeah. I want right. to check out the paintings. I'm awesome. Thank around. you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right. Let's see what's going on over here. Okie dokie. All right. Let me make sure my framing is okay. And my levels are good on my mic, right? All right. There we go. Okay. All right. So, how... What was the... I'm I'm curious, what was the eye situation going on? So the the uh, her right eye is been deemed high. This is our left and our her left, right. Our left and her right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went in there and I've kind of made some minor adjustments. And at this point, it's it's on the back burner, simmering to, before I do anything more to it, if at all. Uh, it was deemed high by whomst? Uh, some, some person out there. Was uh, it Stan? I prob well, no. Unless he went <laughs> he over. Did the it. You said it yourself. I did. I'm <laughs> kidding. But someone, someone actually did uh, respond to my um, uh, solicitation for advice, mm -hmm. and so it's your fault. Yes, exactly. Uh, so. It's on the back burner, but um, you had to do this before, right? Where you, you're moving into the final stages, and you're like, uh-oh, i got to move this body part, yada, yada, uh, the eye. Actually, it happens quite a bit with the eyes, right? Yeah. And uh, you've been in this situation before, so how do you go about doing that, moving the eye around? You're not in Photoshop. Yeah, so essentially what I try to do is just mitigate 
mitigate the uh, the situation. And so, you know, it's like eyes, you know, heads can tilt and things can happen. It's just things have to be in alignment. So I was just trying to re evaluate the alignment of the mouth nose and eyes for example and make sure that it's within a realm of acceptability that's my goal uh, and you know I mean um, without changing the entire read now you probably I don't know if you can tell I me mean, my likeness is like you know not really there it was kind of there in the beginning and it slowly started to change and everything so but I mean like uh, I don't want it to change anymore so I've kind of like I've I pulled things down. I I like pulled this bottom down. I kind of came in on the top of the the lid a little bit and just gently try to nudge that that edge down. I also have the op the option to kind of pull this out, which will kind of swing the the lower portion of the head over and hopefully align those horizontals a little bit more. Oh, you're talking about changing the bottom of the face this to here. now realign the top yeah, to, to this, this is a little bit of a rough edge and and so if i if i just if i just kind of articulate that edge actually paint it, it you know and just let it air on the side of the left it it might it might kind of allow for the reed to be be a little bit more straight up and down and thus the horizontal nature of the features be more acceptable if that makes sense we're talking about really minor yeah. shifts in perception here. So, you know, a shift, uh, a minor shift in perception. So I'm used to, you know, in Photoshop, you just grab that sucker and cut it out and, totally. and move it around. Yeah. What you're talking about is manipulating a whole nother part of the face to make the eyes appear uh, aligned. That's I've right. never heard of that. It makes so much more sense. Like yeah. when you put it like, the way you put it. Yeah, in painting, you it, it's usually a minor adjustment of a handful of things instead of a major adjustment of one. Now, that's typically how I do things or try to do things so that, like I said, it doesn't really change anything too dramatically at this point. At this point. I mean, I'm at the finish line here. I'm just trying to get, you know, trying to get it to a place where, you know, it's, I feel like it's a good, a good stopping point. So I don't want to open any new, new cans of worms and start any new trouble with the painting that's gonna kind of like sap all the rest of the time that's available. So yeah, I'm just trying to stay in my lane here and solve this thing and not cause any trouble. <laughs> not causing any trouble. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, we. I will let you get back to it then because we, we got a limited time here. Right. But like you said, we're, that helps. it helps. It, I, I definitely just learned something new. I never considered that moving a, a different part of the face to uh, trick the viewer into thinking you know that it's okay that it's okay that yeah it's okay where right where it's at yeah that's cool that's really cool it's all witchcraft it's all witchcraft it's all manipulation that's all we do as artists is just force people to like us all right wow all right we are moving to the finish line we're gonna see everybody the finished product here coming soon I'm excited to see all like the highlights coming out. That's gonna be, ooh, that's a little <laughs> sprinkle on the top, you know? Are you gonna add any highlights? Uh, I think all my highlights are in there already. Oh, are they? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> where would you add a highlight? I, everywhere, man. I put a little where, where, white where, dot where all over. Hair. On the <laughs> cheek, on the nose, on the eye, and the hair. I'd put a bunch of them in the hair. Yeah, yeah just a bunch of highlights, cause that's what that's what people do these days, right? You just put highlights everywhere. It looks looks like candy. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, I, I put in a few, like, you know, like in here. I put some around the head recently. Like, there's this really, or are we seeing mine? Yeah. Like, I put some of these real bright lights around her. Um, and then obviously all of the, all of this is like a highlight around her head. Um, but you, you're talking about like on the face. Oh yeah. Just, you know what I'm noticing too? That pattern, the white pattern going through there. Mm -hmm. That's almost what I was talking about with the windows and the background lighting and, and cinematography, right? The way they add these bright lights. It's mainly for contrast and for silhouette. Yeah. Just to create that contrast. Yeah, the whole reason I, I, I mean, I put it there because it's back there, but I shifted it to the right to, to be able to add some more lights right next to her instead of just above her, oh. right? Like, from my point of view, I don't see any of this. Like, this is all shifted right into the middle of her face. And you've seen students do that, where they will just yeah, make we'll just bad design. There, yeah. 
Yeah, um, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll copy it. Yes. I mean, I might have even, oh no, in my study, I, I also moved it a little bit. See, I even just put like, okay, I remember to put that light right there. Huh. Can they see that? Oh yeah, we can see it. Um, it's nice. But I'll, maybe I'll put a little highlight in the eye. Could maybe use it. We'll see. If I ruined it, if I ruin it, it's your fault. All right, I'll take the blame. Okay. Good. No, I don't know anything about painting. Just don't. They just ignore me. Okay. I will put a highlight. All right. Okay. Wow, looking really good. Okay, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna observe here for a second. Let's see. Hmm. I'm going to move to Leon's in a second because we have a camera on this one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna slink over here. Wow, this is beautiful. All right, what is? Uh, do you have a game plan for finishing this? Uh, um, hmm. Just fix any like major drawing issues. Glare. Glare? Yeah, go back and simplify. Yeah, sometimes if you make a lot of, depending on which direction your brush stroke is in, the light will, you know, catch on it and it'll have more glare than usual. So if you, you can kind of knock it down with some vertical brush strokes. Oh, that's kind of terrifying. Like if you have the perfect stroke that you that you love, you have to really be careful to, to if you're trying to fix that glare. Yeah, <laughs> or just leave it. <laughs> yeah, you don't if it's if it's a stroke you're in love with. Yeah. Uh, something I've been wondering this whole time, and that as we're kind of moving to the end of these paintings, I think this is important, um, especially if you're trying to sell these paintings too in galleries, is the framing. Right, mm -hmm. framing is a pretty big part of it. The painting is beautiful, but do you ever focus on framing, or do you care about the the frames that they go in? Um, I mean, there's a particular frame that I like, where I try to paint, frame my paintings for a specific show. Like, can I keep it cohesive? But once it sells, like you know, the the collector will sometimes buy a new frame that'll match their home. Mm -hmm. So cool. it's okay. not always going to stick, depending unless you're like really you know, demanding that your painting stays in a certain frame. Um, like I know painters like Mark, or like Mark Ryden will have his uh, frames hand carved with his imagery in them. So it's like oh. part of the art. That's really cool. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, uh, as you're finishing this up, like what's the, what was the most challenging part of this? Hmm. Um, I think like molding some of the face since there wasn't like, you know, it's kind of looks like really natural light. So you want everything to be kind of soft, but I still wanted to show like shadow and light, <clears throat> but it's all super subtle. Mm -hmm. um, and I see a lot of like cools near her face, but that's, I want to be careful with that because it can look like, you know, a mustache or a <laughs> five o'clock shadow. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, do you do your own custom eyelash shapes? Eyelash shapes on myself? Well, uh, 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 in your paintings. Like as opposed to having somebody else do them for me? In your paintings, do you have a specific shape that you go for, uh, for eyelashes? Oh, uh, I see. Like, um, I try to do what's up there, but um, who was it? A fr either a friend of mine or an instructor early on said like, you have, you can buy, you know, if they have like long lashes or mascara, you can do like, you can buy yourself like two strokes, but any more than that, it's like spiders. Oh, no more than two? Or something like that. Yeah, if it's a female with like longer lashes, but otherwise it should just be really simple. Oh, that's a really good lesson. Quite lots of uh, students or kind of amateur paintings, you, you, you want to put in like each little yeah. lash. <laughs> So. That's really that's a really good uh, lesson, and for me as a designer as well, especially in animation when you're trying to simplify shapes. You design your own lashes as well. Uh, yeah, I design my own lashes, uh, but I'm actually going to use what you just said is keep it simple to. Um, How many do you put? Oh, I do the spider lashes. <laughs> you do you know, lashes. I do all every single lash there is. 
that's yeah I see a lot of uh, students doing that as well that just better with less, but yeah maybe simplify it close up you can buy yourself a few more don't go overboard though apparently it's it, it looks really nice I love the the lashes that you have going in here the shadow shapes in there it's beautiful yeah all right let's see who else I can stalk I'm gonna slide around over here all right, at some point, we're going to get a, a camera on Leon. No rush, though. We're going to read some from this. Uh, we're going to read some from the comments section. Huh. The blending of this drawing is so smooth. Oh, yeah. Who's drawing in here? Oh, let's go. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting, uh, interesting comment. Try this. When you think that, when you think the drawing that you're doing sucks, uh, put that again, put that aside and try again. Simple as that. It might turn out way better. Yeah, I'd like keeping a, taking a break from it. Yeah, Natalia's right sleeve lighting is very beautiful, for sure. Yeah, it is. That's nice. Nice, nice shape on that sleeve. Anime lashes. Absolutely. All right, we're getting a camera set up right now on Leon's painting. Oh, he's moving into some hand. He's sculpting out the hands. We're going to have this sucker set up real soon. Uh, Stan, do you have any advice for students who are too critical of their work that is uh, that it starts to stall? Any improvements? Mm. It's interesting trying to decipher some of these comments. I mean, I understand the problem. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's clearly, like, if you're, if you're too hard on yourself, it'll you'll lose confidence and then that loss of confidence will hurt every decision after that. Um, yeah, like you gotta believe in yourself if you're gonna execute something well, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like if you like you look at athletes, like that's a really good, as far as performance, like mm -hmm. it's really obvious with athletes if they're, comp if they're playing against other people who are the best in the world the ones that are don't believe in themselves are not gonna win right like yeah. you really have to believe that you're gonna do it in order to execute at 100 percent. so if you're lacking confidence it's definitely gonna hurt you i, I don't know how to bring like just get it mm. i don't know if i have an answer for it as um, an artist that is kind of tough yeah it's really tough i mean the the, the book uh, that is really helpful on this is um oh shoot Josh Waitskin, what is it? Anybody know? Yeah, Josh is, uh, talks a lot about being, for me to build up confidence as an artist, it's tough. It's like, what I like to do is set small goals, right? Start to set really small goals and you build up from there. Yeah, Josh Waitskin's book, The Art of Learning, mm. is really good at this. He, he was the guy who, um, the chess prodigy who that, Searching for Bobby Fisher movie was based on. Oh, okay. He's the actual kid, oh. and so he, his whole life he's been learning about how to learn, oh. and he wrote a book on it. And it's really good, and but in there it's not just about how to learn, but it's also how to perform at your best. Mm. Um, there's a lot of advice on there, like that. If you just you know read his book, he's gonna he he'll do a much better job explaining this than I can right now. Well, what's the name again? One more time. Uh, Josh Wadeskin's the author, and it's the art of learning. Okay. Yeah. So it seems like uh, learning anything. It, it sounds like it's like all about different pat or the same pattern roughly of learning. Of, I think so. It's a, a lot of mental stuff. Yeah, learning anything that um, has a performance side to it. It will apply this book will apply to it any kind of art form he, he talks about martial arts chess is an art form mm. um, 
it obviously applies to painting and any kind of performance sport and all that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you applied a lot of this in your life? Uh, his book? Yeah, you've applied uh, a lot of that. Not, hmm. I read it like two years ago. I don't, I don't know if I've applied anything intentionally. I definitely thought about a lot of the concepts in there and I took a lot of notes and it's probably affected some of my decisions just like subconsciously. Yeah. But I definitely need to go review it several more times in my life to really have it affect me more. Yeah. Hmm. For me, if I'm stuck in my head, I don't know about for you, but if I'm stuck in my head and I can't problem solve that way, I have to start out doing really, really small goals and accomplishing those, even if it's something as small as doing the dishes. Um, for me, I grew up very much like doing physical things, you know, like mowing a lawn, doing something like that. Easy tasks that you can say, I started it, there's a, mi a beginning, middle, and end, and I finished it, mm -hmm. and it's done. Yeah. And it, that actually goes a long way, it's like crafting something, especially doing something with your hands. Even something as simple as doing a set of push-ups, completing it, you know, or going for a jog, that helps me build a, a lot of confidence, I guess, physically doing something. I'm not, I'm not even talking about painting, you know, because you can still apply that to painting. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, you've done anything like that? Small, sm yeah, smaller uh, goals to then build up in painting. Oh, in paint. Um, oh, interesting. Smaller goals. Yeah, like maybe perhaps finishing a certain uh, part of the painting. Uh, to, to then help you gain that confidence to move into the next part. I yeah. do that a lot. I, I actually, I did that in this painting, um, like this morning, or was it yesterday? Mm -hmm. Oh, it was yesterday. So I felt like the whole thing was like wishy-washy. Nothing felt solid. And you didn't feel confident. Yeah, You're feeling like a really confidence. small, like, you felt insecure. Yeah, I was like, oh man, is this gonna- Does the rock even love me at this point? Is the rock, yeah. <laughs> is the rock watching? Not the rock. I'm Not the rock. A rock. rock. Is a rock watching? <laughs> but Is no. It, so I had my lay in right, and it was it was it was like in the right spots. But then I started laying in all the colors all over the place, and it's, it was patchy and like as it's supposed to be at that stage. But it started to lose a lot of the structure, mm -hmm. and some of my shapes were drifting a little bit because you know I'm just trying to fill in the whole canvas. And I got to the point where I was like, I need some structure here. So I went back into the face and I've just spent a while just like cutting into the jaw, like making sure it's symmetrical, checking the, you know, the height versus the width, where are the ears and just like getting all these like loose strokes that I just like laid in quickly, getting them to be like very precise and making sure that the face feels like it's there, it's my foundation. And then that got my confidence up that like, okay, this feels good, I could now bring everything up to that level. What I'm hearing is you set a small goal for yourself and you accomplish that and you're like, now I even have something to reference yeah. to and then then you can build off of that. Yeah. yeah. There you go, baby. Boom. Make those small goals for yourself in painting. We're gonna check out your painting again in a minute because I love the movement, especially right here. And I, I haven't, you don't see this too much in, in my line of work, but we'll, we'll bring a camera over here in a minute but the way that you have all of these strokes kind of pulling down this way. You know what I'm saying? Oh, there's a camera. Oh my goodness, a camera popped up out of nowhere. Did oh, nice. But yeah, uh, you see what I'm saying here? The, the movement, I'm just gonna like smear this whole thing. The movement, the downward movement and uh, these strokes kind of coming this way, the hand being carved out of, out of these. The f it's just like the movement and the energy in that is really, really nice. What we want to do right at the end of this is take the cameras and kind of go in closer to the painting so you can actually see the brush strokes, which maybe you can do right now, a little bit right now. I'm trying to do it in the hand? Yeah, just to see the details within these strokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep on zooming that sucker in. All right, the smears. All right, and even like these pinching, all right, there's like types of pinching movement in this direction down this way um, even down to this corner uh, I don't know I love that movement because again if you're doing this you don't you don't always have to make every single stroke go down in there you have these 
counterbalancing strokes, maybe horizontal, that are chilling, chilling out a little bit more. You got these other ones that are just sliding down really nice. And and here as well. Um, can you point out a little, oh, this one too? It is so different seeing it in person because you can see if you get close enough, it's just a blob of paint. But it, so you can really see like the manipulation that you're doing. Yeah, I can't get any closer. That's cool. Do you want to come and point out what I'm talking? Do you, I mean, like, yeah, I know exactly the way you're that about. you're like repeating this, the same like, shape. This, yeah. Yeah, I do that a lot if like, I don't like some shape. I'll come in with the background, just like create like a, a big, it's like a confident yeah, cut into it. With a, it's like a design. Like, You've made yeah. a confident like shape design. Yeah, and it's funny because it, it's like a big confident stroke, but it'll make the shape next to it actually pop out more. Like, so what you were saying in the beginning, you created almost like a, a mush, like you were talking about. It's it's nothing has is super carved out or anything. Mm -hmm. And then at that point after that, can you go in and do this? Like maybe the hand was kind of mushy or blobby, and then you go in and just start making these big shapes. Yeah, like it's that. still mushy and blobby. It's just that I, I I don't I know that I'm not gonna finish it to a like really high level of detail like the face, and so. Instead, the approach is just get a nice design in there with like some shapes that look okay. Yeah, can we switch over to the hand cam and let's see if we can see the detail in the face. Uh, the what? This, this little handheld cam right here. Uh, oh, there's a lot of glare, okay. <laughs> look at Stan's beautiful painting. Yeah, it's okay. We can also do it at the end whenever we go and look at everybody's finished paintings. Oh, there you go. It's, it's, it's the last hour. Yes. We don't right. need to be picky about this. All right, let's check it out. We can see all the. We can see all the details in here. Stan's looking at the image on the monitor. It looks it's bigger on the monitor, so I can see stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you want to point out that you're seeing in there? No. I put those highlights in that you. I put the highlights in that you made me do in the eyes. Oh, in the eyes? Oh, yeah, yeah that is making it pop, huh? Yeah. Man, like I'm a it. genius, huh? You're, you're a genius. Wow, oh, that's crazy. Those highlights. Yeah. I like that. It, I'm most you're... proud of this ear. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually really nice. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, though. <laughs> I, it's like, it's really rare that I could paint an ear with one stroke, and when it happens, it's like, oh, that's, awesome. That's all you need, yeah. Honestly, looking at this one, I think the thing that that gets me the most is that there's the petal that's the closest to her hair in the top right corner that's catching light the brightest. Mm -hmm. And the that's flower. That's my favorite part of this whole damn painting. This one right here? Yep. That, that's the brightest Wait, brush was that, stroke in the Was that painting. my so yellow? That's my favorite thing in the whole painting. <laughs> was that my yellow that I put down earlier? Uh, <laughs> no, it's not yours. Uh -oh. Yours has been covered up. Oh, okay. Yeah, but the yellow in there with that hard uh, cut of that red next to it and the little bit, the baby blue next to that, the little baby, baby blue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. I put in a lot of really bright blues around this to pop the yellow. Like, none of this is It's vibrating is there. in the, in the uh, kind of yeah, even it, a blue in there. It feels like subsurface scattering mm. on, the, on the flower. Yeah. That's nice. That's really nice. And that other uh, image there is not, that's not a painting. That's the that's actual person. Yes. Yeah. Wait, Red, can you smile for us? No. Nope. Yeah. See. <laughs> yeah, she moves. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, Stan. Um, I'll let you get back to it for the last hour or so. Yeah. Maybe we can hop around with the camera, and um, maybe if move over. Anybody wants this bad boy? It's up. Sale. It's for sale. Progo.com slash Ukraine, and all the money goes to to humanitarian efforts in Ukraine. Doesn't go to me. This is. For charity mm -hmm. it's a beautiful painting especially when you get to see it in person the the energy and movement in there even at the base of the the skirt there or the the dress here you just yeah i love yeah, that piece you can't right there. overdo it in these areas oh yeah towards the bottom of the painting you just gotta unless you have time unless you have time to really finish it but it's like i don't even have time to like get into detail on the hands so if i put any kind of detail down here i'm screwed yeah I love that. Do you want to move the camera to Leon's painting, uh, or do we? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Do you want to move over here so we can we can we can go here and get a little close up of this one? You want to go to, to uh, Joseph's? Yeah, or is there already a camera there? there? There's a camera here. Oh, okay. 
All right, let's ask a question. Oh, a, a Joseph question? Yeah. All right. I asked Joseph about the abstract, uh, abstract shapes that he had added in the background. The thought process, what's your thought about process behind the, uh, you know, the abstract shapes in the background? Did you know that you had to, oh, how did you know you had to do that? I I'm, suppose. I'm assuming we're talking about this stuff. Is that fair? This it's stuff? From, it's, they said it's from Pavel Sokov. Oh, um, yeah. Hi, Pavel. Oh, Pavel. What's up? Yeah. Um, so it's it, essentially what I'm trying to do is like fill in this with interest and also a, a gentle gradation. But it's all kind of an impression of both. So the interest hopefully comes a little bit in just the... The, the variation of mark making so that it's just not a flat block in that's really boring or whatever because uh, that can just kill the painting so I'm trying to kind of have some vigorous paint application in there and then I'm trying to gradate off as I go this way so the darker strokes are to the left and like if you look in some of the old Edgar Payne landscapes with the big blue sky sometimes like there's like this really even dispersion of like warmth from the underpainting coming through that looks really cool so that's kind of my idea. My underpainting wasn't really dark enough to hold the correct value, so I'm going back in there and kind of filling in those shapes uh, uh, with like a complementary color to this cool blue. And I'm hoping that that creates a little bit of balance and, and a little bit of a interplay of color, right? So there's just not flat blue. And uh, that's basically it. I mean, my intention wasn't necessary to leave them just like that. Um, I might go and manipulate them a little bit more so it's a little bit less like obvious but I might not I'm not really sure I don't mind it so much at this point and uh, I think it's serving the purpose to help that edge of the canvas solve itself and fall off in uh, in uh, value if that makes sense it's looking good it is looking really good thank you man I appreciate that it's absolutely. Can, it, is it a pain? Is it a hassle to move the cameras closer right now? Should we wait a little bit? No, I, I've got a little bit of zoom here. Okay. Is there anything, any particular detail that you want to talk about? Hmm. I'm just, I'm just interested in the strokes in the in the face yeah, to right? see all. Every painter has a different, uh, you know, like detail level. Yeah, right now, I'm actually putting blending. some final, like some finishing strokes. Like I'm, I'm bumping, I put a little bit more here. I'm also trying to kind of increase the, the texture like the, the, to the brush stroke. And I think of it like as like all of this is just like set up to let that light blossom, kind of bloom and blossom up. And like you can, s this is the where it's blossoming the most, but it's really hard. You can't do too much too fast because then all the rest will look really like kind of dead. But you just want to gently go from this point and, and hopefully gently brighten up those, get those lights to kind of blossom and sing a little bit more and then stop, you know, if that makes sense is what I'm trying to do. And at the same time, trying to like place the highlight a little bit more correctly, maybe maybe adjust shapes if necessary. And, you know, if, if I can get a closer likeness or a closer drawing as I'm working on that gentle modeling, I'm going to alter the shape as effectively as possible, but it's not the primary concern. I'm just trying to do what what seems like will nudge it in one more degree of accuracy, if possible. There's a, there's a highlight in the middle of the brow on that right side that's just doing so much heavy lifting. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, popping just put that, that in right there. Right, just it's doing a ton for this right now. Yeah, yeah. it's making it pop. I, I'm trying to kind of connect the dots between this value and this value because the light, well, even this value, like this, this, and that are all receiving that same punch. And technically, even the background should have that similar note being played because then you're trying to create this continuity of that value stream of light hitting all those things at a similar intensity. Mm -hmm. And so the connection of all, and in fact, maybe even on the hair right here, I should bump that up. You can see, if you take those little things into consideration, start bumping up the hair, you can see how you're playing all these planes that are facing the light at that angle of incidence just right and at the same intensity, then you're creating this, hopefully this continuity, this truth about the light source and how it's illuminating this scene. So it adds so much to the believability and immediate readability of it. Awesome. That's that's the goal. Yeah. That's the goal. I would uh, I'd go so far to call that Gucci. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're gonna go to Leon's painting now. Let's see if we can get a close up of 
the strokes in this and all the painting painting Liam, patterns. What would you like to talk about in this one? Are oh, there where? any particular areas of interest? Probably for you? let's just the whole thing and then maybe we could talk deal detail by detail. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? Uh, yeah. So tell me when you're... Oh, yeah, you're on now. Okay. I would like to talk about the hand at some point, after, if we can zoom in on the hand later, because the strokes uh, on the hand are just so, I feel like, so simple and mm -hmm. chiseled out. Mm -hmm. But what's your what's your favorite part so far? Um, well, so it's coming... I'm trying to put it together. I'm trying to, um, again, relate the masses, make sure that patterns of the background don't overwhelm the figure trying to get rid of hard edges because i'm i start with accents which kind of read as strong shapes um maybe for the viewers maybe you can kind of by yourself kind of go yeah. around just like just travel just travel to the whole I'm thing gonna, journey. yeah journey journey yeah during this so they could see it in, yeah. in detail. And so, like, uh, whenever I'm scoot you over here. guide to a certain area, I'll meet you there. Okay, yeah. Um, All right. So, yeah, I am I want to kind of finesse this arm and maybe, like, leave. this one is very crude, but maybe just it could almost work. Like, it could be a little bit better, but, but it could almost work. Thing is, uh, it's not about rendering everything it's it's how much you can get away with creating a difference between this this and that right and if uh, if everything is kind of equally rendered it's not as interesting but if there's big difference it, it's kind of more exciting um it, it, even, even like the your everyday person out there understands this one because when iphones were suddenly able to do like a portrait mode where depth of field fell off uh -huh. everyone knew that their pictures got more interesting and focused because right. of the certain areas that are in focus exactly mm. yeah so that and and it, it, it was interesting somebody said in a comment like a couple hours ago like oh put some orange in the yellow drapery and I felt like, well, maybe not in yellow drapery, but I needed to put some orange in the blues. And it actually was such a good suggestion because my there wasn't enough interplay between the blue patterns and the ochres. So the blue patterns needed some browns and oranges and yellows to not be so blue. They were a little bit too stale. And I put these yellow notes uh, in the blues, down here, down here, down here, and that made it feel more harmonious and more um, kind of made it feel belong to the same lighting situation. Um, so now, now probably like I when I look at this hand, light comes from the right, shadows from the left. So I'm going to soften shadow side so that the um light side is a little bit more chiseled shadow side is a little bit more soft i'm going to <sighs> kind of wipe off some hard edges and probably i won't get to the shirt but i really want to i took i took some nice photographs and i probably will have to just finish the beautiful blouse on a different day uh, and just concentrate on the blouse because I really I think the the whole point was just to do this um, historic blouse and I wanted to give it a little bit more time when, when you say wipe off some of the edges yeah. exactly how would you approach this one soften. well you have a fan brush you have a finger you have a rag and you just kind of uh, make turn hard edge into soft edge because of the medium that you're working with well, because it's everything is still wet because it's only been, you know, two days. So you can um, everything could be softened. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and um, yeah, and again, you guys uh, out there in the world, please uh, let us know what you think about this work and if you have any suggestions.
Uh, yeah, let us know what part of the painting you want, uh, like a close-up shot of. If you want a personal like note someplace, I, I <laughs> for <laughs> what's the price? Did, did, did you sell yet? Sorry. Did you sell? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, not know. yet. I think I we could. Can can we zoom in on the the hand down here? Uh, can you talk a little bit about the the paint strokes? And like, cause you, yeah, you've chiseled it out uh, in a very simple way, a very beautiful way, mm -hmm. uh, and very little strokes. It feels like. Uh, let me take a look at the monitor so we can see. Yeah. Uh, in the end, we're towards the end of the stream. I think I want to do some extreme close-ups so we can actually see really close the uh, the actual, just how simple some of these strokes are. Cause a lot of students think, you know, you need to get in there and, you know, do a bunch of little strokes but you knocked these out in some pretty big strokes, right? Yeah, well, simplification is not necessarily dumbing down the information. In fact, it's harder to simplify than to like render something. Um, and we've talked about this, that it has to feel finesse but it has to feel less important than the face. So reaching this kind of uh, place where it will feel finished, it will feel soft, feminine, graceful, colorful, graphic, volumetric, but it won't be more important than the head, right? So that's, that's the balance that I'm reaching for here. And I would soften, I would take a fan brush and I would soften kind of these edges. I would soften all the shadows. Um, I would kind of maybe soften um, the planes within the hand a little bit so that just it feels colorful. In the beginning, you need to be a little bit more bold and decisive. This is still kind of laid in not not taken to a full finish. I, I start with bold color decisions and then soften them rather than kind of do volume with the yeah. same color and then try to put color in. So if we look at the volume in this hand and these big confident strokes there like you're talking about and then we if we can pan up to the face, it feels like you're using the same thing but a, a bit more blended in. Yeah, Is yeah, right? yeah. So much more refined in the face. Uh, but like I you almost can't see the difference uh, like in the hand is very blocky and you can see the difference of the different colors that you're picking but mm -hmm. in the face some of it is uh, like we saw in other paintings blossoming mm -hmm. and very uh, very blended for mm -hmm. softness is that mm -hmm. just to be soft yeah I, I think uh, when you don't blend planes like when, when you keep them as separate shapes, I think it's it's uh, good for painting because there's more volume, there's more color, there's more choices. I don't like over blending. You know, there's this term of licking the surface. I don't like my painting to be kind of uh, over rendered, um, but I want it to be soft and feminine and, you know, um, and represent the form that I'm painting, you know, which is beautiful. Um, we have a question from Chad is just how do you even begin to learn to simplify? Because you said it's a little bit more complex than just dumbing down. It's not dumbing down, like you said. It's um, there's a lot of training that goes into simplifying. Um, well, you think about composition and how important each shape has to be. Again, head is detail number one, so there's gonna be a lot of smaller shapes. Uh, shirt is much less important, right? So you can group together the shapes and you can make them um, bigger and uh, looser so that the viewer kind of slides on that surface. It doesn't get stuck on details, right? If, if, if you just kind of look at everything and you have difficulty getting to the face, that's, um, 
I mean, there are different styles. There's there's Leonardo da Vinci who rendered. Everything. Actually, this this has a lot to do with the question we have right now. How did you find your personal voice in this? Because we know we take inspiration from so many other artists, right? How did you go about finding your own voice in painting? It's a good question. I don't know. You're kind of born with it, and and it's up to you to discover it. Mm. And you can only discover by doing. You know, the more you do, the more you gravitate towards certain things. And you don't know where it comes from, and you don't know what it is until you start doing it. Or to not start until you do a lot of it. And the more, the more you do, the more clear you see what is stored inside of you and what you're all about. Does that mean always, always doing master studies and studying from other professional artists or life or just like a mixed match of both? I paint life as much as possible. I paint from life, even, com even um, uh, com well, commercial work, e even, even commissioned portraits. I have my sitters pose for me at least for a color study. So painting from life is a big deal for me. And, and you can see how much variety there is from life, how much more you have to play with. With photograph, it's just an image and you're copying a photograph. With this, it's different every time. The angles are different every time. The tilts are different and the complexity of light. And we have, we're working with artificial light. If we would be working with natural light, it would be even prettier. It would be even more exciting. So it's just this endless complexity that you experience uh, looking at your subject from life. So you guys, there's nothing like painting from life and it's the best way to learn how to paint. Especially if you want to paint abstract uh, or if, if, you, if you're not sure if you want to be a realist or abstract artist, you could see how there's so much uh, abstract elements into this. I could paint abstract painting just as easy as uh, realism painting because it's all the same. Same rules, same ideas. It's just, uh, it depends, what, what are you trying to say? Again, that question, why? Why, what, what, are, you, what are you trying to do? Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna ask some other artists why, how they got their voice um, and their, for, for me, it was a very big mix, ma mix and match, you know, of uh, painting outside, painting in person and then grabbing a handful of really good artists that are vastly different from one another and just copying those guys over and over and over again. But that's, that's just me. All right, so maybe we can ask you the same question. How, how did you get your voice in this? And you kind of already talked about this, right? But is there any other new angle to that? Um, I think, well, I mean, I'm still also working mine out and inspired by new things. But I think, like, you figure out what you like, what you don't like. You try to mimic or incorporate that into your work, and then it's just doing it. And then you, it should just, you know, you, a, a, some sort of a style usually just happens. You can't really plan it. I mean, you can start trying to incorporate something into your work a lot. But I think, I mean, unless you, I mean, if you do plan, it looks, it looks forced that way. You know what I mean? But there, we do have like a natural style, but it's of course inspired by all the, the people we like and all the work that we like. Um. It, for me, and this might be the same for you, I looked at some of my old, somebody just recently sent me one of the oldest paintings I ever did as a child. And even today, I can look at it and be like, you know what, I could almost tell that is some of me in there. Really, really, really old stuff, like the composition, the stuff that I liked, it's like, I just had a small, away, small yeah. flavor. And I feel like a lot of artists, beginning artists, they don't feel like they have a style, you know, but it is in there. Mm -hmm. uh, do, you, do you still, do you feel like you went through, through the same thing? Yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, I think when you're searching for a style, it's not really gonna happen, because it's not, it's something that has to emerge, and you have to put in the time for, for that to happen. Um, you can't force it. Uh, what you just said earlier, really resonated with me 
finding out what you like is a big deal. But finding out what you don't like, yes. that's a yes. really big we, deal. We forget about that one. We forget about that what we don't like is just as important as what we like. And we're always looking at what we like. But if you stare at your painting, that's the other thing. A lot of people I find don't look, look at their work enough. Um, look at what you love about it. Do it more. <laughs> what you don't like. And remember to how to fix that. How to adjust that. How to not do that. So, uh, In storytelling and... Um, for me as well and writing very similar um, and I see projects or I see films and I say oh I don't like that and then just shut it off I see a lot of students do that I don't like it I'm not gonna see any more of it but, you know I don't want yada yada but and and it's very similar um, to like perspectives in life too if you don't like somebody else's perspective that doesn't mean you should just straight up say I don't like that and you just walk away and say I'm not gonna pay attention to that anymore it's a really big deal to try to break down why you don't like it right. and maybe understand it too understand it, yeah. yeah and then you say you know what I do respect this part of it and maybe I shouldn't ignore that part of it and this is what I'm gonna take this is what I'm gonna leave um, do you does anything come to your mind come to mind about stuff that you really didn't like that you took into consideration or even in my old work like it would be overly saturated everywhere you know and I was loving all these very um, neutral paintings well neutral but with pops of of harmonious like pastels or something like that you know so what like how do I stop that um, yeah so paying attention to what I liked in other paintings and what I didn't like in mine um, yeah yeah which yeah, that's a good example. Like oversaturation, overly rendered everywhere, um, things like that. Yeah. yeah. And if you love something, like you love about another person's paintings, like, and you do the opposite, it's like, why? <laughs> Maybe you should try <laughs> to do something similar. So. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a really good lesson. Thank you for that. All right. We got our camera on this art. Uh, the one on this one? Yeah. I'm go to that one real fast, and then I'll come back here. Okay, let's watch her paint for a second. All right. Oh, yeah. All right, we're getting situated here with the cameras, letting everybody finish up. All right. Alright, we're going to take a look at this painting. Alright, let me see the monitor, see what we got going on. Can we switch to this one? So in the middle right now. It's just in the middle? Yeah, that's beautiful. That is so cool. I love the, the strokes coming away from the, the face, the, the movement in that. It feels very sunflowery. Every time I look at this, it feels like the center of a sunflower for some reason. Um, this is beautiful. I really like this. So, how did you come about? We, we again, we already talked about this a little bit, but I is there another angle that you can attack this from uh, of how you came across your your voice and you know, style? Was there a selective artist that you were looking at, or is it all just you know, from inside? It's both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it, what, what's some of the uh, famous artists that you like, or not famous ones? Um, then you know, there is so many, and uh, the more I explore different artists, you know, because of my background, I'm more, have more, much more knowledge of um, European artists. And uh, until I came here, I didn't know very much of American art history and American art, and I'm exploring this right now, and, it, and it's fascinating for me. Mm. And uh, yeah, like being here and embracing this uh, culture and this place, again, yeah, it influences me very much. Oh, really? The the psychology of American art? Um. Well, everything. Yeah. 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 Uh, how is that different? How has that influenced you? Well, 
I it gives it, like being here gave me much gave me much more freedom of um, trying not to um, look for perfection but look for my own voice, which um, which is um, very valuable for me because I struggle <laughs> with trying to fit some borders or fit in yeah, like what's right what's wrong but there is no right and wrong there is um, yeah there is like true true you or not true you mm, so i'm trying my best to be true who i am and true uh, what i do that's amazing and you, you've seen a lot of that in in america or american art i think so yeah okay i think so because um um people are more mm, it's not about the rules it's about people yeah mm. mm -hmm. yeah that's beautiful i can definitely mm -hmm. see this uh, in the painting that you have a lot of you have a lot of training and you've got a lot of skills and you're choosing to you know use those in very specific ways and then other ways just kind of go with like your gut on a lot of this I love all the contrast um, I don't think we have a camera on this one right now but I love all the contrast on the our right side of the painting and then like you said before the left side you're gonna keep almost blending in with the shirt right yeah. the blue mm -hmm. that's very beautiful the the very uh, simple uh, would yeah, you call it simple I like side? This side very much too mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah, this is something new to me. I don't think I usually do something like this. I don't know why. Sometimes it's unexplainable, and yeah. I try to try to experiment and uh, yes, yeah, yes, very much. Please, or share also your thoughts. Oh, um, <laughs> wow. Um, I do like how uh, busy a lot of these areas are, and then you go up to the face, and it's so soft. And that's where you have that calm in the face. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, and you said you painted that with your, your, uh, with, the with the fingers, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Can you go over one more time of the different, uh, s since we might have uh, new people watching, the different tools that you used in the different sections of the painting? Well, I mean, I don't have s uh, fancy tools or anything. It's just that, yeah, I preferably paint with the flat brushes. I, mm, only like round brushes for like watercolor and different medium. So yeah, mostly it's flat. That's why I have such um, such texture here. And then when I don't need the texture, I use my finger. And when I need some wash, like like light color and no. So <coughs> my painting is a combination of really thick paint and really thin layers, uh, which gives me yeah, it's just. Um, just what I like to do and what I like to. Um, you to have. Uh -huh. you carved it out right too with the uh, with the carving knife or with the knife. <laughs> sure, yeah, sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. For example, this area right mm -hmm. next to the to the face, and all of this also with the knife and some with the um, just just a plain uh, cloth. Painting with a cloth. That's really yeah. cool. I love that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I, anybody here was painting with cloth. I'm gonna have to ask around. I know some some were painting with their fingers, you know, to make adjustments. Yes, yes, it's very helpful for me. Like the touch is very important, and how it yeah. like I need to in order to create a form, I need to actually like feel it and, and like touch it. And uh, yeah, I can't do it with the tool. I need to do it. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. That's beautiful. I yes. love it. Thank you. Good, great job. I love that. We're here in the last couple minutes of this. All right. If people want to donate, where should they be doing this? All right, Stan. All right. Let me grab you. Everybody ya. in the middle. We're going to end it. Oh, we're done. We're end it. Here we go, yeah. baby. What a beautiful experience. I got to say. Oh, yeah. Here we go. We're gathering all the artists. So there's a surprise thing, nobody knows about it, but we're gonna start carving up everybody's paintings at the very end. Yeah. <laughs> All right, 
Here you go, Stan. Thank you. Everyone in? Hold on, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, well, thank you guys so much for joining in. Um, and really, thank you to all the artists that came down. Most of them drove down here from like LA and where? San, 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 San Diego. Francisco. <laughs> San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, and you know, they weren't paid to do this. They just came here, donated like three days of their time. They're all really busy, of course. So yeah, seriously, thank you guys so much for donating your time to, to do this. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, well. Thank you for organizing. This guy. <laughs> he loves the attention, though. What's happening these other days? What's up? What's the, oh, the other days. Yeah, there's a there's a full schedule. We're not done. We're just, we're done. Oh, no. My phone died. <laughs> My phone died. Wait, did it? Oh, no, it didn't die. It was just not working. Yeah, she's streaming tomorrow. I'm so yes. Excited. She'll be so streaming excited. on her own doing a painting. What are you, are you painting a landscape or a yes. seascape? Yes, seascape. Seascape? seascape. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, My favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also going to have Lane Brown, ZHC, and I'll be joining on, to, on ZHC's channel Modern tomorrow. James. Modern Day James, Alex Sinclair, Natalia at 4 p.m. Pacific. And then Thursday, we have Steven Zapata, Jens Clausen's. Clausen's? 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 Sorry, Jens. Patrick Jones. Wait, Ryan is on okay, Thursday? Yeah, we're, we're going to add him. Later. Oh, Ryan hasn't been at. Ryan Benjamin's going to be added on Thursday. And then Friday, we got Aaron Blaze, Nicholas Uribe, Jama Jurabayev, Scott Flanders, and Steven's favorite, Daniel Warren Johnson, to end the whole thing. So, and there's a bunch of rewards you guys can. You guys could. Get, yeah, show it on screen. Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there it is. Wait, that's not it. It, it moves too slow, though. But Yeah, there's, there's a lot. So go to proga.com slash Ukraine. Check it all out. And thank you for sticking around for 12 hours. I know you all were here for 12 hours. Um, I think that's it. That's it. We that's need to it. A, a, pro, a pro. A pro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.